When Supreme Court went live, everyone can watch Supreme Court proceeding live. But you know what is happening behind courtroom. Here we are at Supreme Court Judges Corridor from where Supreme Court judge works through their chambers. We are here at Chief Justice of India, Justice Divai Chandrachur Chamber. First time in the history will show how Chief Justice of India, Justice Divai Chandrachur, works in his chamber and how it looked like. She is a Minister of Tourism in the St. Vincent and the Grenadines. So you have to do all kinds of things. You have to also meet <laughs> some social... <laughs> and then some serious work starts in the evening. CDI D.Y. Chandrachur, who advocates paperless and digital courts, set an example for his chamber. And the laptop is, uh, is there, actually. You want to get it here? Tell uh, Rajinder to get it. Soon after, CGI asked for his laptop for work. Mira laptop, they don't just... CGI Chandrachud tells us that his chamber, like the court, has gone digital. All our files are in the office. So, see, I'll show you. I'll show you. She all the office. I mean, now... Uh... Nice, of course, the CGI replies to emails himself. He examines case files and gives necessary instructions on his laptop. But he now uses this computer and laptop and iPad. You know, also they now know that it's so simple. This is the law clerk. The constitutional yeah, constitution of the our internal complaints committee. The CGI's work carries on even beyond the courtroom. The court's work timing are 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. Administrative work continues till late evening. In Supreme Court, Chief Justice of India Chamber, Ashish Bhargav for NDTV. Well, after that exclusive report, let's now shift our focus to some more news that we're tracking. Are you team DSLR or mirrorless? Get ready for the camera clash of the century as our in-house experts from NDTV tech programming team break down the ultimate photography showdown. Take a look at this report. This one is for all you photography and videography enthusiasts and professionals out there. Should you upgrade your photography game with a new camera? Hi, this is Vishesh Raj from the NDTV Tech Programming Team and I am here to make that decision of yours a little easier. If you're stuck between a DSLR and a mirrorless, here's a quick guide to help you decide. Before we get to pitching the two cameras together, let's understand why mirrorless cameras are called mirrorless. Mirrorless cameras ko mirrorless is bola jata hai because inke andar koi mirror nahi hota. DSLRs have mirrors that bounce light around to show you what you'll capture in that viewfinder. This makes DSLRs thoda bulky. But mirrorless cameras say goodbye to the mirror, making them lightweight and perfect for travel. Instead, they directly focus light onto the image sensor. This means super fast focusing for those super challenging moments. Mirrorless cameras are rocking the photography world. Big brands like Canon, Nikon, Sony are all about their mirrorless babies. Why? Because they're smaller, lighter and packed with the latest tech. The classic DSLR is a bit old school now, like your dad's favorite cassette tapes. While Canon and Nikon still make them, they're all about those sweet mirrorless models. So if you were to pitch the two against each other, here is what it would come down to. First up, the battery life. DSLRs will let you click all day without battery tension. Mirrorless cameras drain faster, but the newer ones are getting better. Second, the price. DSLRs fit into sasta budgets better and you can even score second-hand bargains. Mirrorless cameras on the other hand can get expensive. If you want a huge variety of lenses, especially those niche ones, DSLRs still have a bigger market. The viewfinder in DSLRs offer that classic optical viewfinder, while mirrorless gives you a preview of the exact image through the electronic viewfinder. Mirrorless and DSLRs are both awesome, but mirrorless tends to be the more modern choice. If you're a pro or have extra cash, mirrorless has that dumb dar tech. If you're a beginner on a budget, a DSLR can help you learn the ropes without breaking the bank. The best camera is the one that makes you click amazing photos. So choose wisely. If you've got more such tips and tricks, drop us a mail at techies at ndtv.com. 
Until next time, keep watching NDTV. The 2024 campaign hot side. Late Torun Gogoi, the three-time chief minister. The biggest face. The big faces. Only on NDTV 24/7. This show isn't just about news from the southern states. It's one that looks at the rest of India and the world from a diverse South India point of view. Because NDTV has always taken the southern view seriously. The Southern View with Veera Raghav, only on NDTV 24/7. biggest carnival of democracy india's general election prime minister modi makes a formidable bid for a hat trick the opposition is trying to mount a united challenge and the southern parties are standing their ground as battle lines are drawn join us on an exciting journey on the road to 2024 indian elections a festival like no other and ndtv covers elections like no other when india votes you can count on us We are here at Chief Justice of India, Justice Divai Chandrachur Chamber. First time in the history will show how Chief Justice of India, Justice Divai Chandrachur, works in his chamber and how it looked like. Mirror laptop, this is. basically say to parents stop chasing happiness and success for your kids i'm like hey but if nothing else i should at least be doing that and in today's very goal driven success driven world i'd be like i get it but i don't want my kid to be left out i want to give them the best chance Right, so let's just take success first, and most Indian parents will have to admit, even in the privacy of their own solitude, that success is their main goal in raising their children. And when we raise children with this goal in mind, what we often do is become blind to who the child really is. When we drive our children to success, we objectify them. and no parent likes to admit that they're doing that because we we pretend to ourselves we lie to ourselves that all our pushing is coming because we care about our children we love our children but that's not the truth we care about ourselves we love ourselves we feel good to have our children be successful and if our children fall off the wagon it makes us feel anxious but then you also say don't push for happiness don't make that your big goal either Can you tell us why? That sounds like a really different way of looking at things. We want our children to be happy. Well, what that really means is we want our children to be really happy because that makes us feel as if we are good parents. It makes us feel in control and as if we are successful. Our children are going to have a lot of unhappy moments in life. Life is not about just unilateral, unilinear feelings. In fact, pain, fear. anxiety is part of the human experience and in fact that's what actually keeps us safe sometimes and that's how we're wired to know that there's danger and that's how we grow our children will pay a price they may not tell us right now but they will pay a price in their own life because they will be unable to sit with their 
difficult emotions. They will drink too much, eat too much, socialize too much, spend too much money and look outward because they're too uncomfortable to sit with their pain because we've taught them that they should just be happy, which is unrealistic and it's toxic. <laughs> As this is all about gadgets, तो मेरे पास में हमेशा आपके लिए मल्टीपल गैजेट होते हैं एंड द सेकेंड वन दिस टाइम इज दिस द ऑल यू मोट्रोला एज फिफ्टी प्रो मतलब एज सीरीज जस्ट बाय द नेम इट्स यू नो ऑब्वियस कि हमको जो स्क्रीन मिलता है इट्स विद दिस थ्री डी कर्व एज डिजाइन एट द सेम टाइम फोन इज ऑल्सो हैविंग स्पेक्स दैट आर कटिंग एज और इस फोन में भी वी हैव समथिंग स्पेशल बिकॉज देर आर मेनी वर्ल्ड फर्स्ट एंड वर्ल्ड ओनली फीचर्स पैक्ड इन साइड दिस फोन वॉट वी हैव इज दिस नाइसली क्राफ्टेड वेरी स्लीक फोन जहाँ पे फ्रेम इज मेड ऑफ एल्यूमिनियम द बैक वॉट वी हैव इज दिस स्पेशल वीगन लेदर इट स्मेल्स नाइस इज वेल एंड द फोन इन साइड पैक्स द पंच बिकॉज हमारे पास में है क्वालकॉम स्नैप ड्रैगन सेवन जेन थ्री प्रोसेसर वट वी हैव इज अ फोर्टी फाइव हंड्रेड एम एच बैटरी बट द बेस्ट पार्ट इज दिस फोन सपोर्ट्स अप टू वन ट्वेंटी फाइव वॉट्स ऑफ फास्ट चार्जिंग एंड द चार्जर कम्स इन साइड द बॉक्स एट द सेम टाइम दिस ऑल्सो सपोर्ट्स अप टू फिफ्टी वॉट्स ऑफ वायरलेस चार्जिंग यू कैन ऑल्सो चार्ज योर अदर स्मार्ट फोन एक्सेसरीज बिकॉज इस फोन में रिवर्स वायरलेस चार्जिंग भी है एंड देन The camera and the screen they are pretty unique because यहाँ पे they both are Pantone certified. The screen goes up to 144 hertz and the kind of colors you see they are all certified by Pantone. And you know Pantone being the pioneer in the color space, तो हमको जो colors मिलते हैं they are very accurate. At the same time, what we have are like you know precisely accurate skin tones for all your shots because जो rear camera से photos आ रही हैं they are also certified by Pantone for skin tones. So the phone feels like a uh, a fresh device with all these unique specifications packed inside let's have a closer look about this motorola edge 50 pro motorola's edge 50 pro has finally hit the market and under the hood is packing some serious heat so dekhte hain quickly why this phone has all the potential to be your next upgrade while 50 megapixel ka front camera is no joke but expect absolutely crisp selfies from it and also do not forget ki piche bhi aapko ek triple camera setup milta hai jisme ek 50 megapixel ka main sensor hai 13 megapixel का अल्ट्रा वाइट सेंसर है जो मैक्रो का भी काम करता है देन 10 मेगापिक्सल का टेलीफोटो इट्स लाइक हैविंग अ मिनी फोटो स्टूडियो इन योर पॉकेट नो मोर सर्चिंग फॉर चार्जर्स विद मोटरोला एच 50 प्रो मोटरोला का सॉफ्टवेयर ऑलरेडी क्लीन है हेलो यूएक्स को हम काफी लुक फॉरवर्ड कर रहे हैं एंड थ्री इयर्स ऑफ मेजर अपडेट एंड फोर इयर्स ऑफ सिक्योरिटी पैचेस हैव बीन प्रॉमिस दैट इज प्रिटी कूल आपका फोन अब सेफ और सिक्योर रहेगा टिल द टाइम यू डिसाइड टू अपग्रेड टू दी नेक्स्ट फोन बेस मॉडल स्टार्ट एट थर्टी वन ट्रिपल नाइन बट मोटरोला डज है कपल ऑफ लॉन्च ऑफर्स इफ यू लुकिंग फॉर कैमरा पावर स्मूथ परफॉर्मेंस एंड फोन दैट last the Motorola Edge 50 Pro sounds like a very solid choice it's got that masalaedar mix of specs and features that will impress even the pickiest of tech enthusiasts दोस्तों so, so स्टार्टिंग एट रुपीज थर्टी वन थाउजेंड ट्रिपल नाइन रुपीज दिस लेटेस्ट मोटो एच फिफ्टी प्रो रियली पैक्स अलॉट NDTV wins big at Enba with 43 awards NDTV reigns supreme Sanjay Pugalia takes home the award for editor in chief of the year. Santosh Kumar wins managing editor of the year. Vishnu Som, Maria Shakil and Sumit Avasti take home the top honors for the anchors of the year. BSI, Hamlog and We the People all take home awards and NDTV 24/7 takes home news channel of the year award. NDTV stands for trust Prime Minister Modi power Congress ne ek sadyantra kara tha The 2024 campaign hot side. Hey, Torun Gogoi, the three-time chief minister. The biggest face. The big faces. Only on NDTV 24/7.
वी आर हियर एट चीफ जस्टिस ऑफ इंडिया जस्टिस डी वाई चंद्रचूड़ चैम्बर फर्स्ट टाइम इन द हिस्ट्री विल शो हाउ चीफ जस्टिस ऑफ इंडिया जस्टिस डी वाई चंद्रचूड़ वर्क इन हिज चैम्बर एंड हाउ इट लुक लाइक The biggest carnival of democracy, India's general election. Prime Minister Modi makes a formidable bid for a hat trick. The opposition is trying to mount a united challenge. And the southern parties are standing their ground as battle lines are drawn. Join us on an exciting journey on the road to 2024. Indian elections, a festival like no other, and NDTV covers elections like no other. When India votes, you can count on us. We are here. Again, let's go back to Gurpreet for more on this. Uh, Gurpreet, there are some reports that um, the driver was under the influence of alcohol. Have blood tests confirmed this? Do we have any other details of what took place? Well, uh, yes, uh, what we have learned from the local police and uh, top police officer, they say in the preliminary investigation, it has been learned driver under the influence of alcohol and uh, that could be possible reason why he has rammed, at a, uh, rammed into a tree of uh, having a very high speed. And that, was, that could be possible reasons why this uh, bus has already been overturned and that had, uh, uh, six children, they had already lost their life because of this accident. Which has happened here. What we have recently learned from the Haryana government uh, that the local uh, district transport officer he has been put under suspension because during the course of investigation they have also learned the bus was on the road without having valid document and that could be possible reasons uh, why this uh, uh, district transport officer has been put under suspension. Why there was no checking of the school buses? Had this DTO checked this bus earlier, the lives of of uh, six children and students uh, could have been saved. That is one of the major, major concern of the Haryana government and that was a possible reason why he has been put under suspension. Now, uh, even what we have learned uh, that uh, uh, local investigation has already been started and the political leader from opposition party, whether former chief minister of uh, Haryana, Bapinder Singh Hooda, he has been demanding there should be judicial inquiry into this thing and specifically on uh, holiday, why this school had been opened. That is also one of the concerns sure. of uh, the local people as well as the Haryana people. Absolutely. To understand and so, Gurpreet, uh, let's, uh, what we can do now is let's just take a look at several reactions which are coming in. आज महेंद्रगढ़ कनीना में स्कूल बस के दुर्घटना ग्रस्त होने से मैं बहुत आहत हूँ मेरी संवेदनाएं उन सभी शोक संप्त परिवारों के साथ हैं जिन्होंने इस हादसे में अपने बच्चों को खोए हैं स्थानीय प्रशासन घायलों के देखभाल के लिए पूरी तरह से मुस्तैद है इस हादसे की जांच करवा करके जो भी दोषी व्यक्ति है उसके खिलाफ सख्त कार्रवाई की जाएगी मैं पूरे प्रदेश को ये बताना चाहती हूँ कि आज स्कूल नहीं खुलना चाहिए था इनको नोटिस शो कॉज नोटिस जारी हो चुका जो इनकी गाड़ियों को चला रहे हैं वो शराब की अवस्था में पाए गए तो जिम्मेवारी पूरी तरह इनकी होगी और अभी भी आप देखेंगे कि जहाँ ये एफआईआर उस ड्राइवर के खिलाफ दर्ज होगी वहीं साथ में प्रिंसिपल और ओनर तीनों के खिलाफ जाएगी देखिए जी लापरवाही तो सबसे बड़ी है की आज गर्ल्ड हॉलीडे है और स्कूल चल क्यों रहा है फिर लापरवाही ये है कि सुबह बच्चों को जो बंदा लेने जा रहा है मैं नहीं कहती कि आज नवरात्रे भी हैं 
और उसके बावजूद जो बच्चे को सुबह बसेस लेने जाती हैं वो अपने पॉइंट से लगभग पाँच साढ़े पाँच निकलती हैं तो इस ड्राइवर ने जैसा बताया जा रहा है कि शराब पी हुई थी तो इसने कितने बजे पी और पीने के बाद ही पचास जिंदगियां एक बस में बैठी हुई थी पचास घरों के बच्चे थे इनके पास मैं तो चाहूँगा कि हरियाणा सरकार तुरंत इस पर एक ए एजुकेशन के अंदर कमेटी भी बनाए और मॉनिटर करे ये इंसिडेंट कैसे हुआ है छुट्टी वाले दिन क्यों स्कूल का संचालन किया गया और भी स्टेट में कितने ऐसे स्कूल थे जिनने इस हॉलिडे की वॉयेशन कर कर आज बच्चों को बुलाया है प्लस ट्रांसपोर्ट डिपार्टमेंट भी इसको मॉनिटर करे कि क्या जो व्हीकल था वो सारे सेफ्टी नॉर्म्स को फॉलो कर रहा था to the grandfather of one of the children who sadly passed away Vicky was all of 14 he is one of the six innocent children who lost their lives to this tragic incident in Mahendragarh I'm joined by the grandfather of uh, one of uh, those children sir bahut mushkil hai aapke liye kuch bhi bol pana is samay lekin kaise yaad karenge aapke pota khali 14 saal ka tha uske sapne uski puri life thi uske samne bahut lambe sapne the tha uske kisi ke lal gaye hai abhi kya bata sakte hain har saal progress dikhata tha har saal फैमिली के लिए कितना कितना ज्यादा मुश्किल है कि आप इतना भरोसा करके उसको स्कूल भेज रहे हैं और आप ये खबर आती है कि एक हादसे में उसकी मौत हो गई ये ये बात सुनना ही फैमिली के लिए कितना मुश्किल है नहीं जी बर्दाश्त नहीं कर सकते इस बात को सुनकर बर्दाश्त नहीं कर सकते और ये सब गलती है प्रशासन की गलती है जो आज के दिन शिक्षा मंत्री है उसकी गलती है ना तो आज छुट्टी के दिन स्कूल खोलने का क्या मतलब है फिर स्कूल में जो बसें लगाते हैं उनके ड्राइवर हैं कोई भी ड्राइवर ऐसा नहीं है जो सटार लाइसेंस ले रहा हो यही सब कोई गाँव से पकड़ रखे हैं कोई ट्रैक्टर चलाने वाला है कोई ऐसे ही है दो चार पाँच हजार रुपये के रखे हैं आज का हादसा है उसमें खेड़ी गांव है खेड़ी गांव में ड्राइवर को पकड़ा भी है और उसको बताया है उस स्कूल का जो प्रशासन है स्कूल प्रशासन को भी बताया है कि तेरा ड्राइवर दारू पिया हुआ है उसके बाद भी उन्होंने उसको इजाजत दे दी कोई एक्शन नहीं लिया कोई इजाजत उसको इजाजत दे दी गई तो और आप ये बताइए आप आ, आज विक्की कैसे याद करना चाहेंगे आप उसके दादाजी बचपन से आपने उसको देखा उसके बारे में थोड़ा सपनों के बारे में बताइए विक्की की यादें रह गई कल की बात है कल मैं बीड़ी पी रहा था वो मेरे को बोल रहा था दादाजी बीड़ी स्वास्थ्य के लिए आने का ठीक बहुत कुछ उससे उम्मीद थी सब उम्मीदों पर पानी फैल और आप सरकार से प्रशासन से क्या गुहार है आपकी प्रशासन से तो हमारी यही है कि जो ये एक व्यापार खुलवा रखे है इस व्यापार को बंद करवाएं सरकारी स्कूलों में बच्चों को अच्छी शिक्षा दें बच्चों को अच्छा जो इतने ये लगा रखे है ये सिर्फ एक व्यापार खुलवा रखे है और कोई कुछ नहीं है आज आज के युग में या तो शिक्षा की व्यापार बना रखे है या डॉक्टरी व्यापार बना रखे है इसके अलावा कोई है ही नहीं सबसे मोटा कमाई में कर रहे हैं लोग बहुत शुक्रिया हमसे बात करने के लिए अपना ध्यान रखिए सो ऑफ कोर्स द फैमिली कम्प्लीटली डेविस्टेटेड एन एब्सोल्युटली अनबेरेबल लॉस ऑफ अ 14 ईयर ओल्ड हियर इन हरियाणा इज महेंद्रगढ़ विद कैमरा पर्सन जेवियर थॉमस वेदांत फैली टीवी वेल वी टेक अ शॉर्ट ब्रेक एट द स्टेज कम बैक विद मोर Hello Moto Motorola India's best 5G smartphone brand
आईपीएल का हल्ला बल्ला और सबसे शानदार कवरेज सिर्फ एन डी टीवी पर talking with very little being said too many voices but hardly any being heard you turn to a show that puts you front and center a show that headlines the stories of the people by the people for the people the biggest carnival of democracy India's general election. Prime Minister Modi makes a formidable bid for a hat trick. The opposition is trying to mount a united challenge. And the southern parties are standing their ground. As battle lines are drawn. Join us on an exciting journey on the road to 2024. Indian elections, a festival like no other. And NDTV covers elections like no other. When India votes, you can count on us. We are here at Chief Justice of India, Justice Diva Chandrachur Chamber. First time in the history will show how Chief Justice of India, Justice Diva Chandrachur, works in his chamber and how it looked like. say to parents stop chasing happiness and success for your kids i'm like hey but if nothing else i should at least be doing that and in today's very goal driven success driven world i'll be like i get it but i don't want my kid to be left out i want to give them the best chance Right, so let's just take success first, and most Indian parents will have to admit, even in the privacy of their own solitude, that success is their main goal in raising their children. And when we raise children with this goal in mind, what we often do is become blind to who the child really is. When we drive our children to success, we objectify them. And no parent likes to admit that they're doing that because we, we pretend to ourselves, we lie to ourselves, that all our pushing is coming because we care about our children. We love our children, but that's not the truth. We care about ourselves. We love ourselves. We feel good to have our children be successful. And if our children fall off the wagon, it makes us feel anxious. But then you also say, don't push for happiness. Don't make that your big goal either. Can you tell us why? That sounds like a... Welcome back. The Bharat Rashtra Samiti leader K. Kavita has uh, been arrested by the Central Bureau of Investigation. She's been inside Tihar jail uh, for the last several weeks over an alleged money laundering case linked to the Delhi liquor uh, policy case. The arrest comes days after the probe agency questioned her in jail where she's been in judicial custody. My colleague Nita joins us for more on this. Uh, Nita, what angle of this is the CBI investigating? 
Vishnu, as far as the CBI is concerned, they are probing the criminal conspiracy part of it. The enforcement directorate was investigating the money part of it. The ED, in, the, in, the, in fact, in the court, they had also mentioned that uh, uh, Kavita was the South connection to the entire Liquor Gates uh, saga, uh, the South Cartel saga, allegedly who paid uh, rupees uh, 100 crores, over 100 crores to Aam Aadmi Party as kickbacks. But as far as ED is concerned, uh, as far as CBI is concerned, they are investigating the criminal conspiracy bit of it. They are also wanting to go through, you know, earlier also we, uh, we uh, like uh, ED had mentioned in the court that when they had asked her to hand over all the devices, all the phone devices and whatever digital devices that she was using, she had erased the memory, she had erased the data. So now the CBI also claims that they need to examine the WhatsApp chats between her and the other co-accused and that's the reason why they are seeking her custody. Tomorrow morning, ED would be presenting her to the court in the trial court where they would be getting her formal custody. So as far as uh, CBI is concerned, they would be getting her custody tomorrow. She was arrested on 15th of March and she is the South connection as far as this uh, as far as this liquor gate scam is concerned. So now what, what does it mean for Kavita? Uh, trouble for more trouble for her and also for Delhi Chief Minister Mr. Arvind Kejriwal whose bail application is listed for hearing on Monday that is April 15th. Vishnu? All right, uh, Nita, thanks very much. We'll leave it there. Returning now to our top story, six children have died. Dozens more were injured after a school bus overturned near a village in uh, Mahindragarh in Haryana. The bus which belonged to the GL Public School overturned near a village called um, Unhani in Arnol. I'm, good. I'm joined now by my colleague uh, Vedant, who's been tracking this story from the day, from the morning. It's a public holiday today, Vedant. On what basis was the school bus plying in the first place? Well, certainly that is an important question, Vishnu. But more than that, uh, you know, now uh, the onus lies on the school. And the latest that we're getting is that the principal and the school owner have been, uh, you know, taken into custody by the Haryana police. I'm at the accident spot currently. And if I can show you around, this was a very tree that the bus rammed into. In fact, it was a drunk driver. And we spoke to a lot of people uh, from the family of the victims as well. And they said that they tried to inform the school authorities about the fact that the driver was drunk, but nothing was done. And you can imagine the extent of the Tragedy, the sheer force with which the bus rammed into the tree, you know, uh, pieces of glass uh, scattered around here, the bus windshield. In fact, very moving visuals here, Vishnu. Uh, if you can look at, uh, you know, those visuals of the of the water bottles lying around, uh, their books and notebooks lying around. In fact, uh, you know, uh, the children's uh, shoes also lying around here at the accident spot. Extremely tragic. Six students have lost their lives. In fact, uh, all of them uh, 13, 14 year, uh, 14 year olds, and uh, the family now has also registered a complaint with the police. The police are yet to file an FIR in the case, but the medical examination of the driver has been completed is what we are being told by the police sources here uh, in, in Mahindragar and the, uh, the, the principal has been taken into custody and now uh, the Haryana government, in fact, importantly, has also asked for a detailed report in the next three days because of course the school has a lot of questions to answer. Importantly, the bus, uh, the bus was not fit to ferry students because the fitness certificate expired five years ago. So many unanswered questions, uh, Vishnu, here. But of course, the fact of the matter is that over 20 students were injured and six lost their lives. What is the condition of some of the students who've been injured and who survived this? Vedant, can you hear me? Vishnu, I couldn't hear yeah. you, I'm afraid. No, what I'm asking is, the, what is the condition of the students who, uh, who survived this? Well, six of them are critically injured and they've been referred to uh, city hospital. Six of them have been transferred to Rohtak, uh, which is close to uh, Mahindragarh here in Haryana. They've been shifted to the uh, to the Postgraduate Institute of Medical Sciences there in Rohtak. Um, others, you know, there were a lot of uh, parents who came to the local hospital here and took their uh, children away. But of course, the fact is that, you know, the, the, the back portion of the bus rammed into this particular tree, which is why the students sitting at the back, they died at the spot. Six students died at the spot and others were immediately 
basically rushed to a local hospital. They have now all been referred uh, to uh, the city hospital. What we are being told by the police and uh, the, the school authorities uh, that none of the students now are critically injured. Uh, so that is, you know, some relief there. Uh, but of course, uh, larger questions remain because a lot of, in fact, there was one family I was with just a short while back. They, uh, you know, lost their only son and their daughter now uh, ha is, is admitted to a local hospital here itself. So of course, none of them critically injured, but nevertheless, they've sustained injuries. All right, uh, Vidan, thanks very much, uh, you know, for joining us. It's just such a tragic story that children like this, 13, 14 years old, uh, would lose their lives in this manner. Absolutely horrific. Uh, we're going to move on now to some election news. In the Asansol Lok Sabha seat in West Bengal is a high-stakes battle for the Trinamool Congress and the BJP. The Trinamool has fielded its star campaigner, the MP Shatrukan Sinha, while the BJP has fielded former union minister S.S. Alowalia against the actor-turned-politician. My colleague Prabhakar spoke to Shatrukan Sinha. Listen in. There are such success who don't need any knowledge. Here, the Trinamool Congress and Asansol MP और अपने पटना के बिहार के बिहारी बाबू सर बहुत बहुत स्वागत है आपका एनडी टीवी पे सर पहले आपके थोड़ी जर्नी की बात करेंगे आपको लोग बिहारी बाबू बोलते हैं आपने बिहार को भी छोड़ दिया आप उस बीजेपी के पार्ट रहे हैं जो अटल और अडवाणी की बीजेपी थी अब जो नई बीजेपी है उसे आप कैसे देखते हैं सर पहली बात तो मैं आपकी पहली बात का जवाब दे दूँ आपका आभार प्रकट करता हूँ कि आप आए मेरे साक्षात्कार के लिए मुझसे बातचीत करने के लिए एन डी का भी हम आभार प्रकट करते हैं वहीं दूसरी तरफ मैं कहना चाहता हूं कि मैं बिहारी बाबू हूं आइए आपका प्यार है बड़प्पन है आपकी लेकिन आप बंगाली बाबू बंगाली बाबू भी हूं बहुतों के नज़रों में लेकिन सही मायनों में मैं हिंदुस्तानी बाबू हूं पूरे देश का हूं भारत का संविधान इस बात की इजाज़त देता है कि आप कहीं भी जाएँ कहीं से चुनाव लड़ें और कहीं भी व्यापार करें व्यवसाय करें आप खुद को सर्वधर्म समभाव के तहत जियो और जीने दो की पॉलिसी के तहत खुद को और अपने समाज को आगे बढ़ाएं तो ये बड़ी अच्छी बात होती है इसलिए मैं आसन सुल गया और चुनाव लड़ा इसमें क्या इस दूसरी बात हमने हमसे पूछी कि कैसा लगता है मैं सही यकीनन बहुत सालों तक मैं भारतीय जनता पार्टी में रहा सताईस अट्ठाईस साल तो जरूर रहा हूँ और मेरा तो लालन पालन ही पालन पोषण ही हुआ है भारतीय जनता पार्टी में और मुझे तो सबसे ज़्यादा प्यार मान सम्मान यानी भारत रत्न नाना जी देशमुख उसके साथ लेकर गए थे मुझे उसके बाद उन्होंने मुझे भारत के भूतपूर्व अभूतपूर्व प्रधानमंत्री फादर फिगर अटल बिहारी वाजपेयी जी के हवाले किया लाल कृष्ण अडवाणी जी जो हमारे फ्रेंड फिलासफर गाइड गुरु और अल्टीमेट लीडर थे और हैं और रहेंगे इनके हवाले किया इन लोगों ने मुझे ट्रेनिंग के लिए फर्दर मदन लाल खुराना जी के हवाले किया द टाइगर ऑफ डेली मदन लाल खुराना जी ने फिर सब ने मिल बिहार आया तो बिहार में बहुत ही अच्छे नेता थे बहुत ही प्यारे बहुत बढ़िया स्वर्गीय कैलाशपति मिश्रा जी कर स्वर्गीय कैलाशपति मिश्रा जी के साथ उनके सानिध्य में बहुत कुछ लर्न लर्निंग करता रहा सीखता रहा पुरानी बातों को भुलाता गया नई बातें सीखता गया ऐसा करते हुए आगे बढ़ता गया लेकिन अतफाक से आज दुर्भाग्य कहे इतने सालों रहने के बाद अटल बिहारी वाजपेयी जी आडवाणी जी के ज़माने से लेकर अब तक जिस लोकशाही के साथ चल रहे थे हम वो हमें अब बहुत हद तक तानाशाही के रूप में दिखाई पड़ने लगा और बहुत सारे फैसले ऐसे होने लगे जो मुझे लगा कि जनहित में नहीं है ज़बरदस्ती हो रहे हैं वो नहीं होना चाहिए था बहुत कोशिश की इसलिए मैं दूसरी दिशा में आया लेकिन सही दिशा में आया ऑल राइट शत्रुघ्न सिन्हा स्पीकिंग टू एन डी in other news, election related in mainland India's southernmost constituency, Kanya Kumari, the battle is firmly between the BJP and the Congress. The incumbent MP Vijay Vasan says the Kachativa issue or uh, Narendra Modi's campaign will not impact the vote here. Joining me now is the incumbent MP of the southernmost Lok Sabha constituency in the Indian mainland, Kanyakumari constituency, Vijay Vasan. When we say the southernmost Vijay, we are also closest to the equator. Yeah. What's the secret of surviving an election campaign in Kanyakumari? Is it Elanir? <laughs> Elanir plays a vital role in this hot summer. 
but uh, we've been cooled down by the people's response. I would say the heat has been reduced due to the overwhelming uh, support from the people when you go for campaigning. Arima, that's a political <laughs> response that you've given me. So let me get to serious political questions. If there is one constituency in Tamil Nadu where the BJP has consistently had a 30% vote share on its own, it's been in Kanyakumari. Given the Annamalai factor, given that the Prime Minister has been campaigning here, are you nervous that they may just get past the post this time? Is there a sense of nervousness about the campaign here? No, no, not at all, not at all. Uh, because here, the Kanyakumari is a majority of the people are for the minority community. And what happens is, uh, here the people start realizing the need for change. Because you know the centre, how they've uh, reacted for the Manipur issues or uh, the, how they handle the minorities. You know? So they were very clear in their mindset. And even in the case of uh, more polarisation, you know, the people very clearly wanted to have a change. Not only in Tamil Nadu, as our CM said, even the 40 or BJP dominance is very, very low in Tamil Nadu. That's why Anamali went for a walk, PM's coming for a talk. Uh, and all this happens, but uh, 40 out of 40 will be our alliance. This is one seat where the battle is seriously an INC, Congress versus BJP battle, if we can define that in Tamil Nadu, which is usually a DMK, ADMK state. Yeah, usually it is a uh, DMK, ADMK state, but in, when it comes to Kanyakumari, the national parties plays a vital role. So it's, uh, here it is between the India alliances versus the uh, B BJP. Uh, uh, so, so the, what happens is the momentum is building up. Momentum is building up. Everyone is very busy with the campaigns and other things and all. But uh, as I said earlier, the people's response and people wanted a change, and people doesn't want to risk. Uh, so well, obviously, I'm on a little. On a, or, uh, you're on a high. You're high, saying yes. so you can have the nariel pani coconut water yelanir uh, as we talk. You know, uh, Basant, what about? accusations of family rule, like accusations of corruption against the DMK made by the Prime Minister and that kind of an aggressive campaign. Uh, are you worried that anti-incumbency at the local level could hurt uh, the Congress or the ruling establishment here? No, not at all, not at all. Uh, because uh, the DMK party, uh, the ruling DMK party is doing a very good job. And here what happens is that Magali uh, Urumei the 1,000 rupees what they gave for the women and the free bus services, all these have been impacted the women's uh, thing. So what happens is women polarizations have happened and people are also because uh, we know how the women uh, handle the families and all. And this 1,000 rupees is very, very helpful for them. So they were grateful or not. So uh, there's no anti-incumbency. Even if, the, if there it is, it will not affect this election at all. Well, let's return to uh, the election trail, in fact, uh, continue with it, but this time from the uh, northern parts of the country, from, uh, from Uttar Pradesh. Uh, Mayawati on the election trail, the BSP chief. Let's listen in. Congress party ki galat nithiyon ve kariya shali ki vajay se hi aap logo ko ye malum hai ke hume bahujan samaj party banane ki bhi jarurat padi hai. यदि कांग्रेस पार्टी कमजोर तबके के लोगों का पूरी मानदारी निष्ठा से भला करती, उनको भारतीय संविधान के तहत जो दिए गए कानून हैं उनका पूरा लाभ उनको देती, तो शायद हमें बहुजन समाज पार्टी को बनाने की जरूरत नहीं पड़ी। नहीं पड़ती, लेकिन BSP को बनाने की जरूरत इसलिए पड़ी, क्योंकि कांग्रेस पार्टी की कथनी करने में काफी अंतर रहा है। आप लोगों को ये भी मालूम है कि आप लोग कांग्रेस पार्टी के राज में लंबे अरसे तक, काफी लंबे अरसे तक ये संघर्ष करते रहे। कि बाबा साहब डॉक्टर अंबेडकर को भारत रत्न की उपाधि से सम्मानित किया जाना चाहिए लेकिन कांग्रेस पार्टी ने बाबा साहब डॉक्टर अंबेडकर को अपने जीते जी उनको भारत रत्न की उपाधि से सम्मानित नहीं किया और इतना ही नहीं इनकी इनके कारवां को मूवमेंट को आगे बढ़ाने वाले बाबा साहब के देहांत के बाद इनके कारवां को मूवमेंट को आगे बढ़ाने वाले मान्यवर श्री कांशी राम जी की जब डेथ हुई मृत्यु हुई तो तब सेंटर में कांग्रेस पार्टी पावर में थी तो सेंटर में कांग्रेस पार्टी ने 
एक दिन का भी मान्यवर श्री काशी राम जी के सम्मान में राष्ट्र शोक डिक्लेयर नहीं किया था इतना ही नहीं बाबा साहब डॉक्टर अंबेडकर के अथक प्रयासों से अति पिछड़े वर्ग के लोगों को जो मंडल कमीशन की जो रिपोर्ट आई उसके तहत जो उनको आरक्षण का लाभ मिलना चाहिए था तो कांग्रेस पार्टी की सरकार ने सेंट्रल में अपनी हुकूमत के दौरान मंडल कमीशन की रिपोर्ट को भी लागू नहीं किया जिसके कारण पिछड़े वर्ग के लोगों को आरक्षण का पूरा लाभ नहीं मिल सका बहुजन समाज पार्टी के ही अथक प्रयासों से संघर्ष के कारण ही फिर मंडल कमीशन की रिपोर्ट जब कांग्रेस सेंटर से बाहर हुई और श्री बीपी सिंह की सरकार बनी तब ये मंडल कमीशन की रिपोर्ट लागू हुई थी और well, Let's turn our let's turn our attention now to Rajasthan, uh, where in Jodhpur the Congress leader Rahul Gandhi is speaking. There have been lots of setbacks for the Congress Party today uh, in uh, uh, in cases which have uh, and also in terms of leaders quitting the party. Let's just listen into what Rahul Gandhi is saying. Bezogari, dusra, mehengai. मैंने इनको मीडिया वालों को मित्र कहा मगर ये टीवी पे महंगाई की कभी बात नहीं करते कभी नहीं करते बेरोजगारी की बात कभी नहीं करते ये आपको समुंदर के नीचे नरेंद्र मोदी दिखा देंगे समुंदर के नीचे दिखाएंगे देखो 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 मोदी जी बैठे हैं कोविड से लोग मर रहे थे और मीडिया वाले देश को कह रहे थे देखो खाली बजाओ डांस करो और उसके बाद कहते हैं चलो मोबाइल फोन की लाइट ऑन करो ऑक्सीजन नहीं था वेंटिलेटर नहीं थे लाखों लोग मर गए मीडिया ने आज तक आज तक यह नहीं कहा कि कोविड में कितने लोग मरे मगर थाली की बात करी मोबाइल फोन की बात करी बॉलीवुड दिखा देंगे क्रिकेट की बात करेंगे मगर जो मुद्दे आपके सामने हैं आपके दिल के जो मुद्दे हैं किसान के मुद्दे मजदूर के मुद्दे उनके बारे में मीडिया में आपको कभी नहीं दिखाई देगा अब इनकी गलती नहीं है ये जो यहां कैमरा लिए बैठे हैं इनकी गलती नहीं है ये ऑर्डर लेते हैं इनको कहते हैं भैया देखो अदानी जी का चैनल है Well, the Prime Minister has been speaking in Rajasthan as well. Let's listen in. Rajasthan में पानी के संकट को बड़ा बनाने वाली कांग्रेस ही है। केंद्र सरकार ने हर घर पानी पहुंचाने के लिए जल जीवन मिशन शुरू किया। उसमें भी कांग्रेस ने प्रस्ताचार किया। आने वाले समय में राजस्थान के घर घर पानी पहुंचेगा ये मोदी की गारंटी है वेल लेट्स गो अक्रॉस टू एनडी टीवी हर्षा कुमारी सिंह हु जॉइंस अस नाउ रियल फेस ऑफ बिटवीन राहुल गांधी हर्षा एंड द प्राइम मिनिस्टर व्हाट वर सम ऑफ द की पॉइंट्स और और द की टॉकिंग पॉइंट्स एज फार एज राजस्थान इज कंसर्न फॉर बोथ लीडर्स 
Well, I think, uh, you know, as we go into the first phase, which is now just about a week away, it's really going to be Operation Desert Storm in Rajasthan. So you're seeing that the PM is in uh, Dhol, uh, in Karoli, Dholpur. Tomorrow he's going to be in Dosa and in Barmer. Uh, Rahul Gandhi also uh, very much present uh, uh, in Western Rajasthan. Uh, well, really the key issues um, which the PM has touched upon and which uh, which is very important is the water issue, especially in Eastern Rajasthan. Remember, the Eastern Rajasthan Canal project uh, is something that, uh, you know, uh, this uh, the BJP government has actually signed the MOU with Madhya Pradesh. It's about interlinking the rivers uh, and giving uh, water to 13 districts in Eastern Rajasthan. So the PM making promises there that it's going to reach, water will reach every household in Rajasthan. Water, drinking water is a very key issue in Rajasthan because it has the largest land mass but only 10% of the uh, uh, country's water resources. Also, if you look at Rahul Gandhi, the focus is on uh, uh, jobs, on youth, on women. He's talked about how it's important to give, um, you know, that whole thing about transferring money into the accounts of the poor, farmers' issues, MSP, uh, these are the issues that Rahul Gandhi has picked up, though of course MSP doesn't have that much of a resonance in Rajasthan because remember it's only the uh, the canal fed areas where there is bumper crop and MSP is an issue. The rest of Rajasthan is really dependent on agriculture and it's rain fed uh, agriculture really. So uh, these are some of the key issues that we're seeing that uh, you know both leaders are taking up and the, uh, the PM focusing on drinking water and especially in eastern Rajasthan where the eastern Rajasthan canal project has been a key issue uh, in the political landscape. All right, Harsha, we leave it there. Thanks very much for joining us. We'll take a short break. Uh, up after that, news of uh, a Congress spokesperson, a second one of late, leaving the party. Cool. As this is all about gadgets, so I have always have multiple gadgets for you. And the second one this time is this, the all-new Motorola Edge 50 Pro. Now, the Edge series, just by the name, it's you know, obvious that we get the screen, milta hai, it's with this 3D curved edge design. At the same time, phone is also having specs that are cutting edge. And in this phone, mein bhi, we have something special because there are many world's first and world's only features packed inside this phone. Uh, what we have is this nicely crafted, very sleek phone where the frame is made of aluminium. The back, what we have is this special vegan leather. It smells nice as well. And the phone inside packs the punch because our boss is Qualcomm Snapdragon 7 Gen 3 processor. What we have is a 4500 mAh battery. But the best part is this phone supports up to 125 watts of fast charging and the charger comes inside the box. At the same time, this also supports up to 50 watts of wireless charging. You can also charge your other smartphone accessories because this phone may reverse wireless charging bhi hai and then the camera and the screen, they are pretty unique because here they both are Pantone certified. The screen goes up to 144 hertz and the kind of colors you see, they're all certified by... Well, the former Congress leader Rohan Gupta has joined the BJP. Mr. Gupta was a Congress spokesperson and his departure is a blow for the Congress ahead of the elections. Mr. Gupta claims personal attacks by the Congress party who didn't reach out to his ailing father. He says his father was a Congress loyalist for 40 years. This among many reasons that he said. If somebody questions Sanatan, disrespects Sanatan, do you feel it is too much to ask that we should counter or at least raise a strong voice against that? No. You tell me, you give me one press if it has been addressed. They are questioning me today. I am challenging you, tell me one press why it has not been addressed if Sanatan is questioned. Is this too much to ask for? They have formed one Gadbandan in name of the country. And you are making people like Kejriwal as part of it, whom you have accused like anything as being called traitor, being with Khalistan for corruption, excise can. Congress party has done the press conferences, the leaders of Congress party. What is it that you have to ally with those people and what kind of message you will take to ground? When we go to debate, we ask this question to us. As a soldier of party, obviously we cannot question. But at least inside we ask the question that are we have that sanctity? You are not allying with them in Punjab. What message you are sending? There is no communication. So I think it is like comedy of error. If your narrative is not clear, 
and there is too much of contradiction. When you have contradiction, people will not trust you. We are going on national TV to show the trust of people in the party to communicate the vision of the party. But if we are not heard, if we give them the ground feedback and they are not heard, they are so arrogant that they say, let's do your own work, let's do your own work. I think nothing is left for us to uh, continue. If you have question on other party, you question on their policy. How does create wealth creators being attacked like this on personal level has helped party? You tell me one benefit party has received by attacking the industrialists. I'm not talking about one particular thing, but this shows the leftist mindset. Ne Congress was never like this. Congress has been after the liberalization. Congress was, has promoted the policy and now you are totally against that. आपका जो कोर था वो आपने छोड़ दिया आप पूरा लेफ्टिस्ट हो रहे हैं आप जो लोग देश विरोधी उसके साथ आप जा रहे हैं आप सनोतन के विरोध आपने बाकी क्या छोड़ा यू हैव नॉट लेफ्ट एनीथिंग इट्स नॉट अबाउट पार्टीज बैड सिचुएशन इलेक्शंस आर वन एंड लॉस्ट दैट्स नॉट अ बिग थिंग बट वेन यू आर लिविंग योर कोर आइडियोलॉजी यू आर रिमूविंग एवरी वॉट आर द मेन थ्री कोर इश्यूज रिस्पेक्ट ऑफ सनातन राष्ट्रवाद एंड एंड द रिस्पेक्ट फॉर द पीपल हु हैव कॉन्ट्रीब्यूटेड इन द जीडीपी ऑफ द कंट्री आपने बाकी क्या छोड़ा आप और दूसरा चौथी चीज फॉर पीपल लाइक अस हु हैव कॉन्ट्रीब्यूटेड इफ यू कैन नॉट मेंटेन अवर सेल्फ रिस्पेक्ट ऑल्सो अवर डिग्निटी ऑल्सो व्हाई शुड वी बी देयर नथिंग एट द कॉस्ट ऑफ सेल्फ रिस्पेक्ट well we've seen the chief justice of india live from the courtroom through the streaming of important cases but now ndtv's ashish bhargav gets us a very rare look at the chief justice of india working in his chambers when supreme court went live everyone can watch supreme court proceeding live but you know what is happening behind court room here we are at supreme court judges corridor from where supreme court judge works through their chambers we are here at chief justice of india justice dy chandrachur chamber first time in the history will show how chief justice of india justice dy chandrachur works in his chamber and how it look like she is a minister of tourism in the st vincent and the grenadines so if you all kind of thing that you also need <laughs> some social yeah, 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 yeah. and then some serious work starts in the evening after cdi dy chandrachur who advocates paperless and digital courts set an example for his chamber and the laptop is uh, is there actually you want to get it here tell uh, rajinder to get it soon after cgi asked for his laptop for work mera laptop de do yes sir cgi chandrachur tells us that his chamber like the court has gone digital all files are in the office file so see actually actually she knows the office i am now the cgi replies to emails himself he examines case files and give necessary instructions on his laptop everybody now use this computer and laptop and ipad you know also they now know that it's so simple this is the law clerk the constitution yeah, constitution of the our internal complaints committee the cgi's work carries on even beyond the court room the court's work timing are 10 am to 4 pm administrative work continues till late evening Judicial work till four thirty to five. Then five to seven, seven thirty is engaged with the administrative work. Now we are going to rest. So very late. Ten thirty to two o'clock. Okay. One minute is enough. Thank you so much. 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 Th
with 43 awards, NDTV reigns supreme. Sanjay Pugalia takes home the award for Editor-in-Chief of the Year. Santosh Kumar wins Managing Editor of the Year. Vishnu Som, Maria Shakil, and Sumit Avasti take home the top honours for the Anchors of the Year. BSI, Hamlo, and We the People all take home awards. And NDTV 24-7 takes home News Channel of the Year award. NDTV stands for trust. Prime Minister Modi power. Congress ne ek sadyantra kara tha. The 2024 campaign hot side. Late Torun Gogoi, the three-time chief minister. The biggest face. The big faces. Only on NDTV 24/7. We are here at Chief Justice of India, Justice Divai Chandrachur Chamber. First time in the history will show how Chief Justice of India, Justice Divai Chandrachur, worked in his chamber and how it looked like. Carnival of Democracy, India's general election. Prime Minister Modi makes a formidable bid for a hat trick. The opposition is trying to mount a united challenge. And the southern parties are standing their ground. As battle lines are drawn, join us on an exciting journey on the road to 2024. Indian elections, a festival like no other. And NDTV covers elections like no other. When India votes, you can count on us. You say, celebrate the ordinary in your child. Celebrate their... Welcome back. The Tesla chief Elon Musk has posted on X that he's looking forward to meeting Prime Minister Narendra Modi in India. Sakshi Bajaj takes us through details on why this visit could be significant in more ways than one. Tesla CEO Elon Musk on X declared that he's looking forward to visiting India and meeting Prime Minister Modi. Now, as per initial reports, this visit is likely as soon as this month end, really, and as per experts and reports, Musk may announce his India investment plans and even decide to open a factory in India. Now remember, this development comes nearly a year after Tesla indicated their desire to build a factory in India. Of course, experts believe this visit is really significant as far as two things are concerned. One, from the economic standpoint really, where the focus will be on job creation, the boost in electric vehicle manufacturing in India, and the other from the environment front as well. Remember, Tesla is known for accelerating transition to sustainable energy and increasingly the focus to meeting climate goals is essential for all nations. Well, now a fresh development from the world of gadgets and smartphones and iPhone users. Specifically, be aware, Apple has warned iPhone users of a mercenary spyware attack in 92 countries. Here's a brief report on this. In true, ye duk kahe khatam nahi hota base style after the certain warning for possible threats to multiple devices, Apple ne bhi ek mercenary spyware attack ki warning issue kar di hai. Across 92 countries, many iPhone users ko messages aare hain jisme clearly likha hai and let Sharat Nair at NDTV.com paraphrase, Apple detected that you are being targeted by a mercenary spyware attack that is trying to remotely compromise the iPhone associated with your Apple ID, blah, 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 blah. Apple has called mercenary spyware attacks as exceptionally rare and vastly more sophisticated, baat sahi bhi hai. Just like the Pegasus attacks, which you remember, these attacks are most likely individuals who are targeting, zone in, 
this could very well be because of who they are and what they do through infiltration of your device the attacker can gain access to your data on the device and any waterfall that cascades from within so that could include and of course it's not limited to other emails and apps that you use on your device aapki location movement while certain ki warning was very general it was like hey hello everyone such stress exists Please be careful. Apple की warning is pretty much like hello मैं आप ही से बात कर रहा हूँ. It's that specific. Apple has advised users extreme caution not to open suspicious links, avoid attachments and all from unknown senders and keep devices generally updated. Software patches आपके official sources से होनी चाहिए. India में some people have got this notification but अभी थोड़ा clarity missing है on which countries and how many people are being guesstimated to have been affected. Stay hooked to the technology programming team here at NDTV Networks to know more about the developments on this story. Hope. A debate has many facets. Perhaps no one right answer. Left, right, and center. Conversations that get to the core of the debate. वैसे अभी की डेट में आई एम श्योर वी हैव टर्म्स एंड टर्म्स ऑफ गैजेट्स जहाँ पे एटलीस्ट हमारे पास में मोबाइल फोन तो है ही एंड मोबाइल फोन से काफी लोग जो हैं वो कंटेंट क्रिएट भी कर रहे हैं स्पेशली फॉर इंस्टाग्राम और यूट्यूब यू वुड सी मेनी पीपल रिकॉर्डिंग देयर वीडियोस डूइंग सम कॉमेंट्री या वो अपने व्लॉग्स रिकॉर्ड करते हैं एंड फॉर दोज माइक्रोफोन इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट मतलब मोबाइल फोन का कैमरा है तो आपको सब कुछ अच्छे से रिकॉर्ड तो हो जाएगा बट the audio is also very important now while we have multiple different kinds of microphones aap sab content creators ko ek cheez ka aur dhyan rakhna chahiye which is the pickup pattern of a particular microphone because alag alag types ke microphone milte hain for all different kinds of usage ek hota hai cardioid microphone jahan pe द फ्रंट ऑफ द माइक इज वेयर इट्स मोस्ट सेंसिटिव और ये बैक और साइड्स को ब्लॉक कर देता है सो दैट अगर आप कहीं शोर वाले एरिया में हैं द माइक स्टिल गो न फोकस और वॉट यू आर सेंग जो आपके आस पास का शोर है वो बहुत कम कैप्चर होगा अगर हम एक स्टेप और आगे जाएंगे तो वॉट वी हैव इज अ माइक्रोफोन विद अ पिकअप पैटर्न ऑफ सुपर कार्डोइड जहां पे एकदम नैरो पिकअप पैटर्न बन जाता है सो so दैट आपकी जो आवाज है योर वॉइस ओवर योर कॉमेंट्री यू नो कुड बी दिस इज एन डी टीवी एंड यूर वॉचिंग एन डी टीवी ट्वेंटी फोर सेवन Hello Moto Haryana Hora in fact school bus overturns uh, in an accident in Haryana six children killed principal in custody now district education officer also suspended Chandigarh corn job exposed by an audit report three senior IS officer Mokta system misuse public funds to travel to Paris without any official permit for a tour meant for a lower ranking official Setback for Congress in National Herald case court validates enforcement directorate seizure worth 751.9 crores After enforcement directorate now CBI arrest ke kavita in the alleged Delhi liquor policy case Political heat rises in Rajasthan Prime Minister Narendra Modi versus Rahul Gandhi in the state Rahul Gandhi's rally in Bikaner while Prime Minister addresses twin rallies in Karoli Dolpur and Barme Very good evening and welcome to Wendy TV. I am Ankit Tyagi. Six children have uh, died and dozens more injured after a school bus overturned near a village in Haryana's Mahendragarh district this morning. According to the district administration, 12 injured students were uh, taken, in fact, uh, to a local hospital. Two others have been moved to Rohtak and are in critical condition. The school bus, uh, the school was functioning despite uh, the holiday for Eid. In fact police are now questioning the school authorities over the accident the school principal has been detained and the district uh, education officer has been suspended the haryana government has sought a detailed report as far as this matter is concerned
कनीना में स्कूल बस के दुर्घटनाग्रस्त होने से मैं बहुत आहत हूँ मेरी संवेदनाएं उन सभी शोक संप्त परिवारों के साथ हैं जिन्होंने इस हादसे में अपने बच्चों को खोए हैं स्थानीय प्रशासन घायलों के देखभाल के लिए पूरी तरह से मुस्तैद है इस हादसे की जांच करवा करके जो भी दोषी व्यक्ति है उसके खिलाफ सख्त कार्रवाई की जाएगी पूरे प्रदेश को ये बताना चाहती हूँ कि आज स्कूल नहीं खुलना चाहिए था इनको नोटिस शो कॉज नोटिस जारी हो चुका है जो इनकी गाड़ियों को चला रहे हैं वो शराब की अवस्था में पाए गए तो जिम्मेवारी पूरी तरह इनकी होगी और अभी भी आप देखेंगे कि जहाँ ये एफआईआर उस ड्राइवर के खिलाफ दर्ज होगी वहीं साथ में प्रिंसिपल और ओनर तीनों के खिलाफ जाएगी देखिए जी लापरवाही तो सबसे बड़ी है की आज गर्ल्स स्ट्रीट हॉलीडे है और स्कूल चल क्यों रहा है फिर लापरवाही ये है कि सुबह बच्चों को जो बंदा लेने जा रहा है मैं नहीं कहती कि आज नवरात्रे भी हैं और उसके बावजूद जो बच्चे को सुबह बसेस लेने जाती हैं वो अपने पॉइंट से लगभग पांच साढ़े पांच निकलती हैं तो इस ड्राइवर ने जैसा बताया जा रहा है कि शराब पी हुई थी तो इसने कितने बजे पी और पीने के बाद ही पचास जिंदगियां एक बस में बैठी हुई थी पचास घरों के बच्चे थे इनके पास मैं तो चाहूँगा कि हरियाणा सरकार तुरंत इस पर एक ए एजुकेशन के अंदर कमेटी भी बनाए और मॉनिटर करे कि ये इंसिडेंट कैसे हुआ है छुट्टी वाले दिन क्यों स्कूल का संचालन किया गया और भी स्टेट में कितने ऐसे स्कूल थे जिनने इस हॉलिडे की वायलेशन कर कर आज बच्चों को बुलाया है प्लस ट्रांसपोर्ट डिपार्टमेंट भी इसको मॉनिटर करे कि क्या जो व्हीकल था वो सारे सेफ्टी नॉर्म्स को फॉलो कर रहा था Let me go across to my colleague Vedant Agarwal, who is uh, joining us at this moment. Uh, in fact, from Mahindragar uh, earlier, you see, saw a report that Vedant had sent from the accident spot. Vedant, the big question is uh, why was Eid, which is uh, a designated holiday, not observed as far as the school is concerned? And uh, you know, what is the action that the administration is taking in this case? Okay, well, we seem to have, uh, you know, lost that audio uh, line with Vedant. Uh, what what we'll do? We'll try and fix that, and we'll go back to him. But uh, a very very heart wrenching incident, in fact, uh, this in which uh, these school students were travelling to the school, and uh, uh, then of course uh, this accident took place. And you can understand the uh, speed at this at which this bus was travelling. Look at the condition of this bus after the it collided with that tree. Let me uh, at this moment just play out this interaction uh, with one of the family members that Vedant had earlier. So all of 14, he is one of the six innocent children who lost their lives to this tragic incident in Mahindragar. I'm joined by the grandfather of uh, one of uh, those children. Sir, बहुत मुश्किल है आपके लिए कुछ भी बोल पाना इस समय. लेकिन कैसे याद करेंगे आपके पोता? खाली 14 साल का था. उसके सपने, उसकी पूरी लाइफ थी उसके सामने. बहुत लंबे सपने थे उसके. किसी के लाल गए? अभी क्या बता सकते हैं? हर साल प्रोग्रेस दिखाता था. हर साल फैमिली के लिए कितना कितना ज्यादा मुश्किल है कि आप इतना भरोसा करके उसको स्कूल भेज रहे हैं और आप ये खबर आती है कि एक हादसे में उसकी मौत हो गई ये ये बात सुनना ही फैमिली के लिए कितना मुश्किल नहीं जी बर्दाश्त नहीं कर सकते इस बात को सुनकर बर्दाश्त नहीं कर सकते ये सब गलती है प्रशासन की गलती है जो आज के दिन शिक्षा मंत्री है उसकी गलती है ना तो आज छुट्टी के दिन स्कूल खोलने का क्या मतलब है फिर स्कूल में जो बसें लगाते हैं उनके ड्राइवर हैं कोई भी ड्राइवर ऐसा नहीं है जो सटार लाइसेंस ले रहा हो यही सब कोई गांव से पकड़ रखे हैं कोई ट्रैक्टर चलाने वाला है कोई ऐसे ही है दो चार पाँच हजार रुपए के रखे हैं आज का हादसा है उसमें खेड़ी गांव है खेड़ी गांव में ड्राइवर को पकड़ा भी है और उसको बताया है स्कूल का जो प्रशासन है स्कूल प्रशासन को भी बताया कि तेरा ड्राइवर दारू पिया हुआ है उसके बाद भी उन्होंने उसको इजाजत दे दी 
कोई एक्शन नहीं लिया कोई इजाजत उसको इजाजत दे दी गई और आप ये बताइए आप आज क्यों कैसे याद करना चाहेंगे आप उसके दादाजी बचपन से आपने उसको देखा उसके बारे में विक्की की यादें तो रह गई कल की बात है कल मैं बीड़ी पी रहा था वो मेरे को बोल रहे थे दादाजी बीड़ी स्वास्थ्य के लिए आने का ठीक बहुत कुछ उससे उम्मीद थी सब पर पानी और आप सरकार से प्रशासन से क्या गुहार है आपकी प्रशासन से तो हमारी यही है जो ये एक व्यापार खुलवा रखे है इस व्यापार को बंद करवाएं सरकारी स्कूलों में बच्चों को अच्छी शिक्षा दें बच्चों को अच्छा जो इतने ये लगा रखे है ये सिर्फ एक व्यापार खुलवा रखे है और कोई कुछ नहीं है आज आज के युग में या तो शिक्षा की व्यापार बना रखे है या डॉक्टरी व्यापार बना रखे है इसके अलावा कोई है ही नहीं सबसे मोटा कमाई में कर रहे हैं लोग बहुत शुक्रिया हमसे बात करने के लिए अपना ध्यान रखिए सो ऑफकोर्स द फैमिली कम्प्लीटली डेविस्टेटेड एंड एब्सोलूटली अनबेरेबल लॉस ऑफ अ फोर्टीन ईयर ओल्ड हेयर इन हरियाणा महेंद्रगढ़ विद कैमरा पर्सन जेवियर थॉमस वेदांत फैली टी वी I mean, unimaginable, as Vedant was saying, and for the, the family. In fact, you send. This is the worst nightmare for any family. You send your children to school, and then you get this news. Vedant uh, is back with us. Vedant, you know, uh, we have been seeing your reports and your interactions with the family. For them, of course, nothing. No amount of compensation of any words, uh, you know, are going to, in fact, uh, fulfil that loss. But the fact remains that there has to be people. Those who have to be held accountable. Absolutely, uh, Ankit, and uh, I come to you from the school here, the the GL Public School. This is one of the few private schools in the district in Mahindra Garden. This school has many questions to answer. In fact, I've been trying to reach uh, uh, to the school authorities, but there has been no response. In fact, the school was locked up uh, soon after the news of the incident uh, came out, and the, we are being told that the school has been shut for the next two three days as well. Uh, now, the school has 12 private buses, is what we are being told, and at least three of them do not have a fitness cert. Certificate that is up to date. In fact, as far as this particular bus is, uh, the bus that rammed into a tree, that was rammed into a tree by a drunk driver, that uh, you know the fitness certificate of that that particular bus expired five years ago. So the big question is, why did the school not have checks in place to ensure that the buses that is ferrying that are ferrying students to the schools are fit to carry students? In fact, uh, this particular school, uh, the principal and uh, the the school owner both have been taken into custody by the Haryana government. The Haryana government. by the Haryana police i beg your pardon and the Haryana government has asked for a detailed report in the next 3 days so of course uh, the education i just spoke to the education minister a short while back as well and she said that a show cause notice has also also been issued to the school uh, asking all these questions and also asking why the school was open on a holiday so of course these are big unanswered questions the school has to be held accountable there are about uh, 3000 st uh, students that study in this particular school and there are multiple villages in this mahendragarh district and all of those villages rely on this particular school because this is the only uh, you know uh, school where uh, that that teaches in the english medium uh, and that teaches the english language which is why this is this is considered to be a rather prestigious uh, a school in a, you know in this particular district a small district in haryana so um, uh, you know the, the credibility of the school is certainly hit and it has many questions to answer very quickly let me also make the point that when i was speaking to the family members they said that in the morning when they sent off their children to school uh, they had informed the school authorities that the driver appears to be drunk and the school authorities took no action so of course these are big uh, questions that the school now has to answer the detailed report has to be submitted by the school authorities in the next 3 days the, the police is expected to register an fir in the next 24 hours an important meeting uh, of the school and transport right. authorities tomorrow morning as well here in haryana and along with the school of course uh, you know questions uh, as far as the education department is concerned the traffic department is concerned how is a bus with uh, no certificate uh, uh, you know uh, of uh, its uh, road worthiness was allowed to, uh, to ply in a school why wasn't it checked and also the education officer uh, you know as far as uh, the uh, bus and the school's conduct is concerned vidhan thank you for joining us with all those details at this moment sudha acharya Uh, she's a principal of the ITL Public School and former chairperson of the National Progressive Schools uh, Conference. We are also being joined by Pradeep Rawat, founder of Gurgaon Parents Association. Mr. L N Rao, former deputy commissioner of Delhi Police, is also with us. Uh, I thank all of you for joining us. Uh, I want to start uh, by asking you, Mr. Rawat. You know, for any parent, uh, this is the nightmare, sir. 
you send your child and then you get uh, to hear that uh, they have not only not reached safely, but they are no more. Uh, what are the rights that the parents have? What is it that the parents can do uh, when they see the school, in fact, not fulfilling their obligations? Uh, first of all, I, I feel uh, literally my heart is uh, broken after hearing this news from the Mahindragarh. So many children's lives have been lost just because a few mistakes were committed. Can you take? Can you believe that a school bus which is taking the children to the school, that bus is not fitness worthy? I think its license expired in the uh, in August 2018, and insurance was also not there. Can you imagine such lacuna is happening after knowing that they are taking children to the school? That is a one question. Why did no authorities not take action on the bus when it was uh, applying without the fitness certificate? Secondly. The school was informed, as uh, my previous uh, somebody from the family of the child was saying, the school was informed that di driver appeared to be drunk. Then why did the school not take any action on that? And thirdly, and most importantly, in fact, two years back, similar incident happened. We had a same discussion on uh, some other channel also that a child was run over by a school van. There was a lot of discussion. There was a lot of uh, you know hype in the media also. Right. But ultimately, nothing happened. No rules were made. The problem is. Parents need to understand, schools need to understand that until uh, unless a strict action is taken, not only on the school, but the authorities who neglected this fact that this bus was running on the road without the fitness certificate, right. that till then nothing is going to happen. So basically, we all got to wake up and okay. believe that government is going to be very strict, at least in this case. We are hoping that, that as well. And uh, Sudha Acharya, if I may bring you in, madam, uh, the big question also remains that why was the school open on uh, Eid, which is a designated holiday? And apart from that, a lot of parents keep saying that, you know, if you go and tell the school authorities generally about some problems that their children are facing or about their school's, uh, you know, buses or transportation, then you are a marked parent. You are a parent who creates problems and your child then has to bear the cost. Yeah, this is very unfortunate. At the outset, my heart goes out to the parents of these six children who lost their valuable lives. And I find the school has flouted all the norms, all the rules. Every month we do a transport safety audit in our school. And when the parents have informed that the driver is drunk, there was no question of again sending children in that bus with that same driver. So uh, ensuring a child's safety is of utmost importance as a school leader i will ensure inside the school premises and while providing transport services inside the bus also so as per ncpcr and uh, supreme court order also we have got norms and guidelines in place so as school leader i as a principal of a progressive school we take care we uh, include our parents i see parents as our partners we should not have any doubt and suspicion when a parent is coming and informing us mm. and giving some constructive criticism or some suggestion. Wholeheartedly, right. we should accept. And uh, unless without parents' cooperation, the school cannot work for the uh, betterment of our children. These are so precious lives which yeah. have been uh, lost at this moment and uh, of uh, all the avoidable circumstances, in fact, if uh, uh, people were vigilant. But Rao Saab, if I may come to you at this moment, uh, as much as the school needs to answer these questions, the question is also on the district administration, the police there, which allowed a bus which did not have a transport uh, you know, certificate, did not have the roadworthy certificates to, be, uh, to apply on the streets carrying children. And apart from that, also the education department, sir, under what section can, uh, uh, you know, uh, the action be taken now? See, I absolutely yes, agree I that... Uh, I'm, I'm sir, getting, that's, uh, that's for Mr. Rao. Just, just let, let him complete. I'll come to you, sir. For sure. Yeah, yes, Ankit, this is a very heartbreaking, uh, heartbreaking news. And uh, from my district, because I, I hail from Hanra district, and I am lucky, and coincidentally, I'm, today I am there in my village. And this very near from my village. And then these, uh, this incident speaks of so many questions, big questions. Number one, how this bus was being allowed to ply without any fitness certificate or any insurance. Another thing very important that the, why the, the, the bus driver was drunk and then why he could not, uh, nobody could check it up. And these are the very serious allegations. And um, on these allegations, this, uh, this offense will be I don't think that it's it's a it, uh, this offense is covered under 304A. It should have been registered and it should be registered under 304. 
IPC that is culpable homicide not amounting to murder that is the appropriate section so that nobody can be bailed out in this case because uh, we we know that uh, unless an alpin uh, we we take any strict action against these people against the driver or against the uh, uh, administration of the school who allowed this bus to uh, carry but on sir, uh, shouldn't uh, there be an action against the traffic police uh, responsible as well yes definitely i'm coming to that and i'm coming to that because traffic police is also responsible of checking and implementing the uh, and executing these uh, uh, this uh, that he they should see whether how many buses are being plied without any license and without yeah. any fitness certificate so this that area uh, inspector of traffic or or the, the sp of that area should also be questioned and mm. how these uh, this, uh, this could not be detected that such buses not only this bus i i must tell you there are so many schools in this area uh, which are plying with uh, such type of buses right. and if if they we check with the correct audit of these buses we will find so many lacunas in these uh, uh, um, this uh, transport company so at least uh, we must take the, we must take a lesson out Absolutely. of this case. Absolutely. At least that now the administration should be. wake up. I mean, uh, there there can be uh, no more cost or nothing bigger than losing lives of six innocent children. And of course, uh, such incidents should not uh, be repeated at all. But uh, uh, before I, in fact, uh, bring in Mr. Rawat, uh, I just want to understand from you, Ms. Acharya, uh, why and how uh, is the school operating on a designated holiday? Shouldn't the administration be made responsible? I mean, uh, under what rules are, are you allowed any exemption if it is a holiday? There is no exemption at all. I'm really surprised how the school was functional. E uh, even uh, if some uh, emergency or something, the office staff or admin may come to complete some work, but it is a closed holiday. So I don't know how the children were called to school and how normal functioning was happening. So the uh, uh, administration can ask the question to the school. Uh, I'm in Delhi only, uh, leading a school in Delhi. All of us are closed, mm. completely closed. No, so I mean, this would very... warrant, uh, if nothing else, this would warrant some serious action against the school. Uh, Mr. Rabat, uh, I just want to understand from you, sir. Uh, a lot of parents many times, uh, you know, feel that if they voice their opinion, the school might uh, do some sort of injustice or their, they, their uh, child will be marked. Uh, is it also a time where the parents have to forcefully exert their rights because it's at the end of the day, their children, their safety, their lives are at stake? Absolutely agree with you. This has been a problem for a long time. It's just not in Gurugama or Delhi or Noida or any NCR school. Basically, what happens is if a parent happens to raise a voice over any issue, the schools kind of, you know, indirectly or directly, they try to threaten the child or kind of make him suffer and then he reports to his family and there are cases, there are instances, the parents have reported to me as well that they were forced to leave the school because schools were so dramatic in, you know, uh, punishing the child. And there's, a, there's one more point I wanted to mention earlier also. Most of the schools, when they ask the, uh, the children to go for a picnic or any other activity outside the school, no, they always, I'm uh, referring to, to the all the schools, what they do is they send a note for the parents, both mother and father to sign that school will not be responsible in case of an accident. Mm. See how smart they are. What they do, they make a sign. Otherwise, what, what in case we say we, don't, we won't sign it, our children get angry that my my other kids are going to the picnic, my other kids are going to a, a show or whatever. But if you don't sign, they will not take me. So what they are doing is they are, you know, shutting, shutting out their responsibility and putting mm. on the parent. In case of an accident also, they are asking us to sign before. Right. Absolutely ridiculous. And no, this, this, I, right from the time the child sits in the school operated transport till the time the child reaches the school and back home, the responsibility lies squarely with the school and the authorities. I mean, uh, there is there are no two ways about it. And uh, the more we talk about it, at least we can hope that there will be responsibility that will be fixed. And uh, nobody wants to see a repeat of such incidents. Thank you so much. Uh, to all my panelists for joining me at this moment. With that, we are slipping into a very short break. News and updates on the other side. Stay tuned. Hello, Moto. Motorola, India's best 5G smartphone brand. Oh, 
Some people say the metaverse will only be virtual. One day this lecture hall will be made of code and driverless cars would be trapped in intersections. But even in this maze of the future, you can't wish away health. It's time to become more resilient. Ten years of Banega Swast India, we have grown and achieved so many milestones. And now I have a plan to beat the urgency, to stop breathing with difficulty, to relieve getting choked with inactivity. Energize our government, our environment, our society, and ourselves. Everyone, everywhere, every day. Banega Swast India, One World Hygiene. का हल्ला बल्ला और सबसे शानदार कवरेज सिर्फ एनडी टीवी पर वैसे टेलीस्कोप से याद आया डिड यू नो द जेम्स वेब स्पेस टेलीस्कोप ये एक टेलीस्कोप तो है एट द सेम टाइम इट आल्सो एक्ट्स लाइक अ टाइम मशीन आपको लग रहा होगा टेलीस्कोप टाइम मशीन का आपस में लिंक क्या है Well, friends, link is quite interesting because आपको पता है light travels at a Welcome back. An audit report has exposed a major scam in Chandigarh, which shows uh, how three senior IAS officers cheated the system and made unauthorized expenditure of uh, rupees six point seven one lakh on foreign tour. Uh, switched to luxurious hotels and overstayed a meeting which was meant for a lower ranking official ntv has accessed the audit report by the director general of audit uh, central which shows the senior officers then chandigarh advisor vijay dev anurag agarwal former home secretary and vikram dev dutt former secretary personnel went on a tour to paris in 2015 during their tenure in chandigarh administration and made unauthorized expenditure of over rupees 6 lakh one of the major major thing which has come out some of the, the officer top officer of chandigarh administration they had misused around uh, 6 lakh rupees on the uh, tours and travels how do you see this jewel pack may i see that this is uh, repeating time and again this has happened in 2007 2014 then the 2015 the officers are not answerable to the public and controlling power here is the administrator who is happens to be the governor of punjab keeping in view his status it is not possible for him to look into the work day to day working of the uh, administration as such i feel that there should be an officer like a commissioner or something somebody who looks after all this uh, the day to day working of the administration and then only these things uh, can be controlled whoever has done wrong in this matter that money should be recovered from these officers because that is the hard earned money of the indian public which was which has been spent by these officers in gross violation of their rights let me bring in my colleagues uh, ishika and uh, gurpreet who are joining us with more details on this gurpreet uh, has there been some reaction as far as the uh, chandigarh administration is concerned are they going to take any action against these officers well uh, today is holiday and uh, when we contacted the top uh, Ch chandi chandigarh officers they say they have already uh, received this uh, 
audit report and they are going to examine and after that uh, appropriate action will be taken against those who are involved in this case. Uh, what we have learned uh, from the sources also, uh, some of the people they are mounting a pressure on the Chandigarh administration top officer that this money should be recovered from the officer. So let's see uh, what type of action they are going to plan and what type of action they are going to take against these erring officers. But one thing is very clear, this audit report has already indicated that there were a lot of irregularities and even a lot of guidelines by these Babus and IS officers. They did not follow the proper guidelines. Even for extending this uh, tour from one day to seven days, there, there needs to get a permission uh, from the top uh, uh, central government uh, level officers that had not been taken uh, by these officers. So okay. as of now, we try to talk to these officers so that they, we will be able to know their reaction also. Right. Right. Are reluctant to uh, talk to the media persons, but let's see that what type of action is expected against these officers who had exploited okay. public money for their personal lavish and luxurious tour. Ishika, you know, all of these officers, uh, Vijay Dev and others, are very senior officers. They are uh, bureaucrats, uh, high ranking bureaucrats. Uh, has, have they reacted personally to this story? I mean, is there an explanation coming in from them? you know we did try to contact Vijay Dev you know multiple times for a comment on this but he did not respond to us you know in fact uh, because in this uh, audit report that has now been accessed by NDTV it certainly shows how you know all of these officers you know they approved each other's tour programs and how they in fact made an unauthorized expense of 6.71 lakhs so we tried to contact him on that tried to get his response as to how all of this happened and what did he have to say on this but he did not respond to NDTV despite you know uh, we, uh, despite us trying to reach out to him multiple times now this certainly in fact you know raises question as to how you know uh, these bureaucrats are not even willing to respond on this and this is certainly concerning because it is the taxpayers money that was misused on such a large scale over to you Gurpreet, uh, Ishika, thank you for, for joining us with all those uh, details. Uh, certainly, taxpayer money uh, being uh, shown, at least in this report, of being wasted as far as these officers are concerned. Strict action, hopefully, will be taken. With that, we are stepping into a very short break. News and updates on the other side. Stay tuned. Coal powered. NDTV wins big at Enba. With 43 awards, NDTV reigns supreme. Sanjay Pugalia takes home the award for Editor-in-Chief of the Year. Santosh Kumar wins Managing Editor of the Year. Vishnu Som, Maria Shakil, and Sumit Avasti take home the top honours for the Anchors of the Year. BSI, Hamlo, and We the People all take home awards. And NDTV 24-7 takes home News Channel of the Year award. NDTV stands for trust. The biggest carnival of democracy, India's general election. Prime Minister Modi makes a formidable bid for a hat-trick. The opposition is trying to mount a united challenge. And the southern parties are standing their ground. As battle lines are drawn, Join us on an exciting journey on the road to 2024. Indian elections, a festival like no other. And NDTV covers elections like no other. When India votes, you can count on us. We are here at Chief Justice of India, Justice D.Y. Chandrachur Chamber. First time in the history will show how Chief Justice of India, Justice D.Y. Chandrachur, worked in his chamber and how it looked like. Can you give us, a few, like, say, a three of your strongest takeaways of not-to-dos or to-dos? Because it's a map you have to 
parenting, you have to, it's a slow process. But the three things one has to get, one can keep in mind even today in this very stress, pressure-driven world, goal-driven world for our kids. Well, I think the main takeaway is that parents need to connect with their children, understand who their children are, and understand that every goal or every solution Welcome back. The war of words between the Congress and the BJP in the election season continues uh, to see a mounting, in fact, impact. Congress leader Rahul Gandhi today at a rally in Rajasthan, where the Prime Minister also in is uh, addressing two rallies, uh, attacked the BJP government and said they don't talk about unemployment and inflation. Their work is to divide and divert your attention. They don't want the issues of backward classes, farmers and poor to be shown on national and regional media. बेरोजगारी की बात कभी नहीं आएगी महंगाई की बात कभी नहीं आएगी इनका काम आपका ध्यान भटकाने का है ये सिर्फ चाहते हैं कि पिछड़े वर्ग के मुद्दे किसानों के वर्ग मुद्दे गरीबों के मुद्दे नेशनल और रीजनल मीडिया पे ना आए राजस्थान में पानी के संकट को बड़ा बनाने वाली कांग्रेस ही है केंद्र सरकार ने हर घर पानी पहुंचाने के लिए जल जीवन मिशन शुरू किया उसमें भी कांग्रेस ने भ्रष्टाचार किया आने वाले समय में राजस्थान के घर घर पानी पहुंचेगा ये मोदी की गारंटी है Uh, well, really, the key issues um, which the PM has touched upon and which uh, which is very important is the water issue, especially in eastern Rajasthan. Remember, the eastern Rajasthan canal project uh, is something that uh, you know uh, this uh, the BJP government has actually signed the MOU with Madhya Pradesh. It's about interlinking the rivers uh, and giving uh, water to 13 districts in eastern Rajasthan. So the PM making promises there that it's going to reach water will reach every household in Rajasthan. Water drinking water is a very key issue in Rajasthan because. Because it has the largest land mass, but only 10% of the uh, uh, country's water resources. Also, if you look at Rahul Gandhi, the focus is on uh, uh, jobs, on youth, on women. He's talked about how it's important to give, um, you know, that whole thing about transferring money into the accounts of the poor, farmers' issues, MSP. Uh, these are the issues that Rahul Gandhi has picked up. Though, of course, MSP doesn't have that much of a resonance in Rajasthan, because remember. It's only the uh, the canal-fed areas where there is bumper crop and MSP is an issue. The rest of Rajasthan is really dependent on agriculture and it's rain-fed uh, agriculture, really. So uh, these are some of the key issues that we're seeing that uh, you know both leaders are taking up and the uh, the PM focusing on drinking water and especially in eastern Rajasthan, where the eastern Rajasthan canal project has been a key issue uh, in the political landscape. Meanwhile, the Asanso Lok Sabha seat candidate in West Bengal uh, is Shatrugan Sinha. It's a high-stake battle between the TMC and the BJP. TMC has fielded uh, former BJP leader, now TMC MP Shatrugan Sinha, while BJP has fielded former Union Minister SS Aluwalia against the actor-turned-politician. My colleague Pragha Akar spoke to Shatrugan Sinha. Listen in. There are many successes that do not need to be able to do anything. The Trinamool Congress of Asanso Lok Sabha एमपी और अपने पटना के बिहार के बिहारी बाबू सर बहुत बहुत स्वागत है आपका एन डी पे सर पहले आपकी थोड़ी जर्नी की बात करेंगे आपको लोग बिहारी बाबू बोलते हैं आपने बिहार को भी छोड़ दिया आप उस बीजेपी के पार्ट रहे हैं जो अटल और अडवाणी की बीजेपी थी अब जो नई बीजेपी है उसे आप कैसे देखते हैं सर आ, पहली बात तो मैं आपकी पहली बात का जवाब दे दूँ आपका आभार प्रकट करता हूँ कि आप आए मेरे साक्षात्कार के लिए मुझसे बातचीत करने के लिए एन डी का भी हम आभार प्रकट करते हैं वहीं दूसरी तरफ मैं कहना चाहता हूं कि मैं बिहारी बाबू हूं आई आपका प्यार है बड़प्पन है आपकी लेकिन आप बंगाली बाबू बंगाली बाबू भी हूं बहुतों के नज़रों में लेकिन सही मायनों में मैं हिंदुस्तानी बाबू हूं पूरे देश का हूं भारत का संविधान इस बात की इजाज़त देता है कि आप कहीं भी जाएँ कहीं से चुनाव लड़ें और कहीं भी व्यापार करें व्यवसाय करें आप खुद को 
सर्वधर्म समभाव के तहत जियो और जीने दो की पॉलिसी के तहत खुद को और अपने समाज को आगे बढ़ाएं तो ये बड़ी अच्छी बात होती है इसलिए मैं आसन सुल गया और चुनाव लड़ा इसमें क्या इस दूसरी बात हमने हमसे पूछी कि कैसा लगता है मैं सही यकीन बहुत सालों तक मैं भारतीय जनता पार्टी में रहा हूँ सत्ताईस अट्ठाईस साल तो ज़रूर रहा हूँ और मेरा तो लालन पालन ही पालन पोषण ही हुआ है भारतीय जनता पार्टी में और मुझे तो सबसे ज़्यादा प्यार मान सम्मान यानी भारत रत्न नाना जी देशमुख उसके साथ लेकर गए थे मुझे उसके बाद उन्होंने मुझे भारत के भूतपूर्व अभूतपूर्व प्रधानमंत्री फादर फिगर अटल बिहारी वाजपेयी जी के हवाले किया लाल कृष्ण अडवाणी जी जो हमारे फ्रेंड फिलासफर गाइड गुरु और अल्टीमेट लीडर थे और हैं और रहेंगे इनके हवाले किया इन लोगों ने मुझे ट्रेनिंग के लिए फर्दर मदन लाल खुराना जी के हवाले किया द टाइगर ऑफ डेली मदन लाल खुराना जी ने फिर सब ने मिल बिहार आया तो बिहार में बहुत ही अच्छे नेता थे बहुत ही प्यारे बहुत बढ़िया स्वर्गीय कैलाशपति मिश्रा जी कर स्वर्गीय कैलाशपति मिश्रा जी के साथ उनके सानिध्य में बहुत कुछ लर्न लर्निंग करता रहा सीखता रहा पुरानी बातों को भुलाता गया नई बातें सीखता गया ऐसा करते हुए आगे बढ़ता गया लेकिन अतफाक से आज दुर्भाग्य कहे इतने सालों रहने के बाद अटल बिहारी वाजपेयी जी आडवाणी जी के ज़माने से लेकर अब तक जिस लोकशाही के साथ चल रहे थे हम वो हमें अब बहुत हद तक तानाशाही के रूप में दिखाई पड़ने लगा और बहुत सारे फैसले ऐसे होने लगे जो मुझे लगा कि जनहित में नहीं है ज़बरदस्ती हो रहे हैं नहीं होना चाहिए था बहुत कोशिश की इसलिए मैं दूसरी दिशा में आया लेकिन सही दिशा में आया We will uh, let us uh, give you some uh, election-related news in brief. BJP Chief J.P. Nadda has released the manifesto for uh, Sikkim Assembly polls. BJP has promised uh, Gati Shakti Master Plan for Infra Push Jobs and Opportunities, establish women-led and women-run Ama uh, community canteens, revamp the agricultural infrastructure to establish the Regional Institute of Medical Sciences in Sikkim. BJP Chief J.P. Nadda also held an election rally in Port Blair. He addressed the rally in support of BJP candidate Vishnu uh, Pada Ray. Uh, the lone Lok Sabha seat of Andaman Nicobar will go to polls in the first phase. Padma Shri awardee uh, S. Damodaran is contesting as an independent candidate in Trichy constituency. Held a unique poll campaign. He made flower, garland, and sold vegetables as part of his election strategy. BSP chief uh, uh, in fact a rally a uh, first rally ahead of the lok sabha polls mayawati campaigns in nagpur bjp has uh, bsp has fielded candidates in all constituencies and is hoping to consolidate the bahujan vote bank former ias officer uh, parampal kaur and the daughter in law of senior shirumani akali dal leader sikandar singh maluka has joined the bjp today Parampal Kaur is expected to be fielded by the BJP from the Patinda Lok Sabha constituency where three time Akali Dal MP Harsimrat Kaur Badal is aiming for a fourth straight win. Congress leader Karthik Chidambaram uh, held election campaign in uh, his constituency Karthik Chidambaram is contesting from the Congress stronghold of uh, Shivaganga Karthik Chidambaram won the 2019 elections uh, from Shivaganga by defeating BJP's H Raja by over 3.3 lakh votes. Actor turned politician and BJP candidate from uh, Mandi Kangna Ranaut held an election rally in her constituency. She took a dig at dynasty politics. She said that outsiders should be given a chance in politics. Now one more exit from the Congress party former Congress uh, leader spokesperson Rohan Gupta joined the BJP today Rohan Gupta while joining the BJP attacked the Congress party in fact he said that uh, there were personal attacks by Congress leaders against him Rohan Gupta also said that Congress did not reach out to his ailing father If somebody questions Sanatan disrespect Sanatan do you feel it is too much to ask that we should counter or at least raise a strong voice against that no 
you tell me you give me one press if it is been addressed they are questioning me today i am challenging you tell me one press why it has not been addressed if sanatan is question is this too much to ask for they have formed one gadbandan in name of the country and you are making people like kejriwal as part of it whom you have accused like anything as being called traitor being with khalistan for corruption excise can congress party has done the press conference is the leaders of congress party what is it that you have to ally with those people and what kind of message you will take to ground when we go to debate we ask this question to us as a soldier of party obviously we cannot question but at least inside we ask the question that are we have that sanctity you are not allying with them in punjab what message you are sending there is no communication so i think it is like comedy of error if your narrative is not clear and there is too much of contradiction when you have contradiction people will not trust you we are going on national tv to show the trust of people in the party to communicate the vision of the party but if we are not heard if we give them the ground feedback and they are not heard they are so arrogant ke nahi ye sab chalo aap apna kaam karo jo bola jata ho karo i think nothing is left for us to uh, continue if you have question on other party you question on their policy how does create wealth creators being attacked like this on personal level has help party you tell me one benefit party has received by attacking the industrialists i am not talking about one particular thing but this shows the leftist mindset ne congress was never like this congress has been after the liberalization congress was has promoted the policy and now you are totally against that आपका जो कोर था वो आपने छोड़ दिया आप पूरा लेफ्टिस्ट हो रहे हैं आप जो लोग देश विरोधी उसके साथ आप जा रहे हैं आप सनोतन के विरोध आपने बाकी क्या छोड़ा यू हैव नॉट लेफ्ट एनीथिंग इट्स नॉट अबाउट पार्टीज बैड सिचुएशन इलेक्शंस आर वॉन एंड लॉस दैट्स नॉट अ बिग थिंग बट वेन यू आर लिविंग योर कोर आइडियोलॉजी यू आर रिमूविंग एवरी वॉट आर द मेन थ्री कोर इश्यूज रिस्पेक्ट ऑफ सनातन राष्ट्रवाद एंड एंड द रिस्पेक्ट फॉर द पीपल हु हैव कॉन्ट्रीब्यूटेड इन द जी डी पी ऑफ द कंट्री आपने बाकी क्या छोड़ा आप और दूसरा चौथी चीज फॉर पीपल लाइक अस हु हैव कॉन्ट्रीब्यूटेड इफ यू कैनॉट मेंटेन अवर सेल्फ रिस्पेक्ट ऑल्टो अवर डिग्निटी ऑल्सो वाई शुड वी बी देर नथिंग एट द कॉस्ट ऑफ सेल्फ रिस्पेक्ट In major trouble for the Congress Party, a PMLA abjugating body has cleared enforcement directed action to attach assets worth seven thousand seven hundred fifty crore rupees to of Congress Party held AJL that was later acquired by Young India, a company under majority control of Sonia and Rahul Gandhi. The PMLA abjugating authority paved the way for the enforcement directorate to take possession of about seven hundred and fifty-two crore rupees worth assets of the Congress Party. promoted national herald newspaper uh, as it upheld a freezing order issued by these property or for these properties by the enforcement directorate the authority said in its order it believes that the motive movable assets and equity shares that were attached by the enforcement directorate are proceed of crime and linked to the offenses of money laundering more trouble for the congress party as uh, it is the adjudicating authority under the pmla which has upheld the decision of the enforcement directorate which attached the properties and uh, the shares worth rupees 752 crores uh, last year and they have upheld this decision that certainly means that the uh, enforcement directorate can now take possession of uh, uh these uh, properties uh, we all know that uh, in delhi in bombay in lucknow there were several properties which were attached last year and now when uh, the adjudicating authority has upheld this decision they can take further position of it uh, uh, under pmla it is uh, the adjudic adjudicating authority which has to determine whether uh the properties and equity shares are determined to the offense uh, uh, and uh, are proceeds of crime or not within 180 days and the decision has now been taken uh, certainly it is the adjudicating authority which also had stated that uh, uh the offense uh, way in which it has been uh, uh in, in in which uh, the assets were booked uh, uh the uh the people who were involved failed to determine whether this is a burden of proof or not and therefore the reason uh, perhaps now uh, the uh, go ahead had been given uh, rahul gandhi and sonia gandhi holds more than 38% shares uh, each in uh, uh, the aji and young india and therefore the reason perhaps just before the elections uh, this decision has come which is more trouble for the Congress congress party uh one thing that the congress party had uh, uh, said after this decision was taken by the adjudicating authority that uh, again the agencies are being misused by the central government and this is a political vendetta certainly these lines we have heard before as well when uh, the opposition parties have uh, been uh, have been targeting the central government over misuse of the agencies and that's what also now we are hearing so certainly more trouble for the congress party before the elections quick break at this moment news and updates on the other side stay tuned
Hello, Moto. Motorola, India's best 5G smartphone brand. The 2024 campaign hot side. Torun Gogoi, the three-time chief minister. The biggest face. The big faces. Only on NDTV 24/7. This show isn't just about news from the southern states. It's one that looks at the rest of India and the world from a diverse South India point of view. Because NDTV has always taken the southern view seriously. The Southern View with Veera Raghav, only on NDTV 24-7. We are here at Chief Justice of India, Justice Divide Chandrachur Chamber. First time in the history will show how Chief Justice of India, Justice D.Y. Chandrachur, worked in his chamber and how it looked like. शानदार कवरेज सिर्फ एनडी टीवी पर BRS leader K. Kavita has been arrested by the CBI inside the Tihar prison over an alleged uh, money laundering case linked to the Delhi liquor policy. The arrest comes days after the probe agency questioned her in the prison while she is in judicial custody. Remember, she was earlier arrested by the Enforcement Directorate. Let me uh, bring in my colleagues Uma Sudhir and Neeta for more on this. Neeta, first to you. Uh, after the enforcement directorate, now CBI has uh, K. Kavita's custody. Are these cases different? What is the different angle that the CBI at this moment is investigating? See, as far as ED is concerned, Ankit, they were investigating the money part of it, that how the kickbacks were, you know, paid by the South Cartel because ED claims that she was connected to the South Cartel, linked to the scam and allegedly 100 crore rupees as bribes or kickbacks were paid to Aam Aadmi Party. But as far as the CBI is concerned, they are going to look into the criminal conspiracy angle uh, of the entire case. CBI had interrogated K. Kavita on April 5th in Tihar Jail regarding the WhatsApp chats uh, between her and the co-accused and now they have formally arrested her but although tomorrow morning she would be produced in Rouse Avenue court where CBI would be formally taking her custody. Uh, she has also filed an application in Rouse Avenue Court. Her lawyers, in fact, have filed uh, stating that how come they were not informed about the fresh arrest uh, which has taken place. So now this is a second case against uh, K. Kavita. More trouble for her because in, in their complaint, ED had earlier also mentioned that she had tried to destroy evidence when they had asked her to hand over uh, her digital devices, which includes phones or tablets or whatever she was using. She had erased that data. They had informed the court. Uh, linked to that now even the CBI says that they need to go through a WhatsApp chats between her and the co-accused and that is why they have taken her custody. So trouble not only for her but also for the sitting chief minister whose bail application is now listed for April 15th that is the coming Monday. Ankit. 
Thank you, uh, Nita. Uma, you know, politically, uh, already, it, you know, the BRS is in a corner. It's in a tight corner uh, in Telangana after losing the government there. How are they in taking uh, this uh, entire uh, development uh, with, uh, you know, K. Kavita behind the bars? Interestingly, BRS leader Mr. KCR, known his brother, have really uh, spoken about Kavita's arrest. They have, you know, you would expect in the run-up to the parliament elections that they could talk about this as a targeting of uh, the family itself. Uh, but they have not uh, chosen to rake up those issues. They are, in fact, talking about people's issues. That's what they are going to the people with. What I must point out is that in Kavita's case, the other people who are supposed to be part of the South group, that includes Sarachandra Reddy, director of the Arabinda Pharma, as well as Bagunta Srinivasla Reddy, who was YSRCP leader, and subsequently uh, they have shifted uh, to the TDP, and his son Raghavla Reddy. Uh, all of them were supposed to be part of the South group, and all of them turned approvers. And it is based on their statements and uh, what they have told the investigating agencies now that uh, Kavita is being arrested and confronted. Like Kanita was mentioning, tomorrow the CBI will also seek custody of uh, Kavita. And what we are being told is that even inside court, they had brought up the WhatsApp chats that she had with Buchi Babu, her former chartered accountant, and that's what they had asked her to explain. Kavita, on, from her side, on the day that uh, bail was denied to her, the court had in fact said that uh, uh, even though she's a woman and women are given exception at a PMLA, but it's not mandatory or obligatory on the part of the court, and that she's someone with agency and she's someone who is powerful and she does not need right. that kind of protection. And they also cited that uh, she had allegedly destroyed evidence and that she could influence people because she has tried to influence some other, another witness in this particular case. But Kavita from her side had put out a note and informed the court okay. saying that she had in fact handed over the mobile phones that they were supposed to have been destroyed and she had said that she's also cooperating with the agency so there is no reason in fact for her to be arrested or uh, kept uh, right. inside jail as of now when she had sought uh, bail uh, of you know citing that her son is having exams in the presence of the mother in this case is required. She, in fact, uh, shouted out in case, right. last point, that uh, it is all based on statements and not on trail or evidence, and therefore this case would not stand, is what she is saying. Right, but at this moment she continues to be in jail, and now uh, she has been handed over to the CBI as they take over custody. Thank you so much, Uma Sudhir, uh, for joining us with all those details. Uh, now, Tamil Nadu will be voting in the first phase on the 19th of April. One key constituency in Tamil Nadu is Kanyakumari. The battle is firmly between the Congress and the BJP. The incumbent MP Vijay Vasant of the Congress party says that the Kachativu Island issue or Narendra Modi's campaign won't have any impact here. Listen in. Joining me now is the incumbent MP of the southernmost Lok Sabha constituency in the Indian mainland, Kanyakumari constituency, Vijay Vasant. When we say the southernmost Vijay, we are also closest to the equator. Yeah. What's the secret of surviving an election campaign in Kanyakumari? Is it Elanir? <laughs> Elanir plays a vital role in this hot summer. But uh, we've been cooled down by the people's response, I would say. The heat has been reduced due to the overwhelming uh, support from the people while you go for campaigning. Arima, that's a political <laughs> response that you've given me. So let me get to serious political questions. If there is one constituency in Tamil Nadu where the BJP has consistently had a 30% vote share on its own, it's been in Kanyakumari. Given the Annamalai factor, given that the Prime Minister has been campaigning here, are you nervous that they may just get past the post this time? Is there a sense of nervousness about the campaign here? No, no, not at all, not at all. Uh, because here, the Kanyakumari is a majority of the people are for the minority community. And what happens is, uh, here the people start realizing the need for change. Because you know the centre, how they've uh, reacted for the Manipur issues or uh, the, how they handle the minorities. You know? So they were very clear in their mindset. And even in the case of uh, more polarisation, you know, the people very clearly wanted to have a change. Not only in Tamil Nadu, as our CM said, even the 40 or BJP dominance is very, very low in Tamil Nadu. That's why Anamali went for a walk, PM's coming for a talk. Uh, and all this happens, but uh, 40 out of 40 will be our alliance. This is one seat where the battle is seriously an INC, Congress versus BJP battle, if we can define that in Tamil Nadu, which is usually a DMK, ADMK state. Yeah, usually it is a uh, DMK, ADMK state, but in, when it comes to Kanyakumari, the national parties plays a vital role. So it's, here it is between the India alliances versus the uh, BJP. 
so, so the, what happens is the momentum is building up. Momentum is building up. Everyone is very busy with his campaigns and other things and all. But uh, as I said earlier, the people's response and people wanted a change, and people doesn't want to risk. Uh, so. Well, obviously, I'm on a little... On a, or a you're on a high, you're high, saying. Yes. So you can have the Nariel Pani coconut water, Yelanir, uh, as we talk. You know, uh, Basant, what about accusations of family rule, like accusations of corruption against the DMK made by the Prime Minister and that kind of an aggressive campaign? Uh, are you worried that anti-incumbency at the local level could hurt uh, the Congress or the ruling establishment here? No, not at all, not at all. Uh, because uh, the DMK party, uh, the ruling DMK party is doing a very good job. And here what happens is that Magali uh, Urumei the 1,000 rupees what they gave for the women and the free bus services, all these have been impacted the women's uh, thing. So what happens is the women polarizations have happened and people are also because uh, we know how the women uh, handle the families and all. And this 1,000 rupees is very, very helpful for them. So they were grateful or not. So uh, there's no anti-incumbency. Even if, the, if there it is, it will not affect this election at all. And there's too much talking but very little being said. Too many voices but hardly any being heard. You turn to a show that puts you front and center. A show that headlines the stories of the people, by the people, for the people. Biggest carnival of democracy, India's general election. Prime Minister Modi makes a formidable bid for a hat trick. The opposition is trying to mount a united challenge. And the southern parties are standing their ground. As battle lines are drawn, join us on an exciting journey on the road to 2024. Indian elections, a festival like no other. And NDTV covers elections like no other. When India votes, you can count on us. We are here at Chief Justice of India, Justice D.Y. Chandrachur Chamber. First time in the history will show how Chief Justice of India, Justice D.Y. Chandrachur, works in his chamber and how it looked like. say to parents, stop chasing happiness and success for your kids. I'm like, hey, but if nothing else, I should... This is NDTV. And you're watching NDTV 24-7. Hello, Moto. Hello and welcome, Eid Mubarak, to you from the southernmost Lok Sabha constituency of Indian mainland. We are here at the Kanyakumari Lok Sabha constituency, just a few hundred meters down from me. That side is the southernmost tip of India's mainland. And behind me, the pictures that you saw is of that famous Vivekananda rock and the famous Thiruvalluvar statue, which was inaugurated in 1999. The ancient Tamil saint who wrote the Tirukkural, which embodied the entire essence of life in seven words. Perhaps best for modern day X, but what a fascinating read it is for anyone who understands and follows it. So we are here at the heart of Kanyakumari where we have come 
all the way from Chennai to Coimbatore to Virudhanagar to Tutukudi, now to Kanyakumari. That's our election journey covering different locations across South India. Fascinating contest here politically in Kanyakumari where this is the only constituency in Tamil Nadu where the BJP has consistently maintained around 30% vote share. It has a majority, 51 odd percent population of minorities, Muslims and Christians, which makes it a fascinating contest here between the Indian National Congress and the BJP. The INC, of course, backed by the INDIA alliance and the DMK, in fact, just a short while from here, you have uh, Udayanidhi Stalin campaigning for the Congress candidate Vijay Vasant, uh, who has been campaigning hard here. Obviously, the BJP has Pon Radhakrishnan, two-time MP, someone who's contesting for his 10th time here. He contested, has been contesting from 1996 onwards here in Kanyakumari. So, I caught up with both of them. But first, let's listen to what Vijay Vasant, the Congress candidate, says, I caught up with him over some very nice elanir. Elanir is coconut water. That's the only way you can survive from the heat, the survive the heat and the humid conditions here. Listen. In. Go ahead. What's the secret of surviving an election campaign in Kanyakumari? Is it Elanir? <laughs> Elanir plays a vital role in this hot summer. But uh, we've been cooled down by the people's response, I would say. The heat has been reduced due to the overwhelming uh, support from the people while you go for campaigning. Arima, that's a political response that you've given me. So let me get to serious political questions. If there is one constituency in Tamil Nadu where the BJP has consistently had a 30% vote share on its own, it's been in Kanyakumari. Given the Annamalai factor, given that the Prime Minister has been campaigning here, are you nervous that they may just get past the post this time? Is there a sense of nervousness about the campaign here? No, no, not at all, not at all. Uh, because here, the Kanyakumari is a majority of the people are from the minority community. And what happens is, uh, here the people start realizing the need for change. Because you know the center, how they've uh, reacted for the Manipur issues or uh, the, how they handle the minorities. You know? So they were very clear in their mindset. And even in the case of uh, more of polarization, you know, the people very clearly wanted to have a change. Not only in Tamil Nadu, as our CM said, even the 40 or BJP dominance is very, very low in Tamil Nadu. That's why Anamali went for a walk, PM's coming for a talk. Uh, and all this happens, but uh, 40 out of 40 will be our alliance. This is one seat where the battle is seriously an INC, Congress versus BJP battle, if we can define that in Tamil Nadu, which is usually a DMK, ADMK state. Yeah, usually it is a uh, DMK, ADMK state, but in, when it comes to Kanyakumari, the national parties play a vital role. So it's, here it is between the India alliances versus the uh, B BJP. Uh, uh, so, so the, what happens is the momentum is building up. Momentum is building up. Everyone is very busy with the campaigns and other things and all. But uh, as I said earlier, the people's response and people wanted a change, and people doesn't want to risk. Uh, so well, obviously, I'm on a little. On a, or, uh, You're on a high. Panic. You're saying yes. so you can have the Nariel Pani coconut water Yelanir uh, as we talk. You know, uh, Basant, what about? accusations of family rule, like accusations of corruption against the DMK made by the Prime Minister and that kind of an aggressive campaign. Uh, are you worried that anti-incumbency at the local level could hurt uh, the Congress or the ruling establishment here? No, not at all, not at all. Uh, because uh, the DMK party, uh, the ruling DMK party is doing a very good job. And here what happens is that Magalir uh, Urumei Tawit, the thousand rupees what they gave for the women and the free bus services, all these have been impacted the women's uh, thing. So what happens is women polarizations have happened and people are also because uh, we know how the women uh, handle the families and all. And this thousand rupees is very, very helpful for them. So they were grateful or not. So uh, there is no anti incumbency Even if, the, if there it is, it will not affect this election at all. What about issues like Kachativu, accusations against the Congress and the DMK of a 50-year-old issue being made by the BJP, issues like Sanatan Dharma, you don't see them polarizing the electorate, impacting the no, electorate? No, no, not at all, not at all. This Kachativu, why do you have to bring during this election time? 
uh, even Sanadana, whatever it is, whatever it is, don't make it as a political, you know. See, what, what happens to the border issues? See, Arunachal Pradesh, you know, like how many square kilometers have been occupied by China? But PM didn't talk about it. And Manipur issue, PM didn't talk about it. Uh, Demontation, he said, what he said and what happened is totally different. He didn't talk about it. You're saying there won't be any big impact uh, later this evening. Udayanadi camp Stalin will be campaigning for you. If there is one defining theme of the elections, Lok Sabha 2024 in Kanyakumari, what would that be? The major issues in Kanyakumari, that is for the politically you're saying or... Uh, for the electorate, for the population here. No, the, the, definitely, the, the overall the people wanted the change and they want development, they want employment. Uh, they want recognition, they want uh, to be recognized. So in, uh, considering all these facts, our ally India alliance has become very strong in Kanyakumari. So our, 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 uh, we would say uh, out of 40, out of 40, and we'll form the government in the center. Okay, you're saying 40 out of 40 here, forming government in the center, we'll see out there. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, quickly, one final question. Uh, you know, the fact that the India alliance doesn't have a prime ministerial candidate, uh, you know, is that is that an impediment given the fact that there seems to be an anti-Modi plank, but there is no concrete solution on the offer? No, no uh, we, uh, we, um, I wouldn't say like that because here the anti-Modi wave is huge, so there's going to be a change. So, uh, in, according to us, Rahul Gandhi is our Prime Minister candidate and we're campaigning for Rahul Gandhi ji only. But it is all uh, to the India Alliance heads to decide upon it. But we are working on the uh, uh, making Rahul ji as a Prime Minister. You have taken the seat after the demise of your father. Uh, you won the by-election. Have you become a full-time politician now? Have you gotten used to being a full-time politician? Yes, 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 sir. Uh, I would say a uh, full-time uh, politician. I'm learning a lot of things, actually, because every day is a new day. Connecting with the people is totally different. There were different type of people, different type of requests. But it is very, uh, I would say, I'm happy to be there, part of it. Vijay Vasant, the Congress candidate, he's the son of the late H. Vasant Kumar, who was the MP here, who won in 2019, the owner of Vasant & Co., a very famous uh, shop, a shopping complex in uh, across Tamil Nadu, has chains across Tamil Nadu. So that's Vijay Vasant, the competitor, the challenger to the Congress here is the BJP's Pun Radhakrishnan, who, as I mentioned at the start, has contested 10 times, he's won twice, 1999 and 2014. So, Pun Radhakrishnan uh, has consistently got a 30% vote. He's the old-time BJP leader who has come from the grassroots, who's built the party in this constituency here. He had a long and arduous campaign trail this afternoon across the villages. Uh, and I spoke to him on his campaign vehicle and I asked him what his secret of surviving summer heat in Kanyakumari during campaign trail and also what he thought of the Annamalai factor in Tamil Nadu politics which has been spoken about and whether the BJP can get a bump up from its 30% vote share. Remember, while the BJP has got that vote share, it's often found it to get difficult to get past the post, to get that incremental vote. And that's the challenge for the party here in Kanyakumari. He sounded confident and said, this time there is an X factor in these elections that could possibly take the BJP past the post. Listen While the BJP has had that 30% vote share in Kanyakumari consistently, given the communal nature of the constituency in terms of the communal divide, you have a 51% population of Muslims and Christians, is the BJP stuck there and is not able to move forward? Yeah, maybe it goes like that. But, but this time we are seeing see a uh, total change in the, the whole, whole conference. All, all community people, cutting across caste, religion, everything, they want BJP to win in this conference because they want development. 
lot has been spoken about this Annamalai factor in Tamil Nadu. What do you think of that? I mean, is there a is there a, a some value addition that he's brought? Definitely, sir. Definitely. The last two years, almost two years, he is working hard. He did Padayatra. It was welcomed by the people of Tamil Nadu everywhere. Not only Kanyakumari, every district. People are in front of BJP because of anomaly also. That is one of the main factors we are uh, growing up. Okay. You know, you just spoke about the communal polarization aspect. The opposition blames the BJP of divisive politics. That the only reason why you are able to hold a vote is on communal uh, lines. They are telling we are polarizing the Hindu votes. It is not so. We tried to polarize only the Hindu votes. It is very difficult to win here. What about the narrative saying that, you know, this is anti-Dravidian, Dravidian ideology is in threat. You don't see that really communally polarizing or, or you know, polarizing the electorate in favor of the Dravidian parties? So what is the difference between Dravidian and Aryan and other things? See, for some political reasons, they created this. My opinion is, they failed in all their efforts. See, when Kalangir was there, Karnadi was there, eh, he needs something. But in these two years, people are seeing the difference between the BJP government, uh, BJP governing states and the Tamil Nadu. They won the double-edged government for Tamil Nadu also. You're a long-time observer. Be honest. What's your prediction for the BJP? Because most people say, while they may have a small bump in vote share, it doesn't seem to be translating into seats. What would you say? Well, <clears throat> 2014, we formed our own alliance in Tamil Nadu. That alliance got 19% vote. 19% vote. And we got three seats, Kanyakumari, Dharmaburi, Puducherry. Out of 40, we got three seats. At that time, DMK got 23% vote, but they couldn't get even a single seat here. So people are waiting for a change. They are searching for a good leadership. Annamali is there. Modi is there. So they failed in their Dravidian ideology. Okay, this is your 10th time as a candidate here for the BJP. You've been successful twice as an MP. Uh, what's the defining feature of Kanyakumari 2024 from Pun Radhakrishnan's point of view? Sir, first, we had to unite the people. The division was there since 1980, we want a peaceful district. We want development for all the communities. Definitely after this election, the people of Tamil Nadu, particularly our Kandiyam district, is going to see a model, model district for communal harmony and everything. It wasn't wrong to leave the AIDMK alliance? Coming elections you are telling? No, in these elections, would it have been stronger had you been with the AIADMK? Sir, we have our own alliance. Why should we bother about other alliance? One final question, sir. What is the secret of surviving a campaign in such hot weather? You've done this for many, many years. What is the secret tip to staying healthy in such hot weather? Sir, this is not only an election. For me, this is an opportunity to see my people, my people. For the last <clears throat> more than 45 years, I am serving for them. They are waiting the hot weather eh? on the roads. I am under shelter. So, they are great. Well, that was Pon Radha Krishnan of the BJP. Remember, when we say BJP Congress contest, it doesn't mean that the DMK, AIA, DMK aren't 
are irrelevant. The AIDMK this time has fielded Basili and Nazareth, like a, a young candidate, like they fielded everywhere else in Tamil Nadu. And the DMK is a major player here. In terms of assembly segments, the DMK still holds and the AIDMK still holds maximum vote share when it comes to even a constituency like Kanyakumari. But in the Tamil Nadu context, which is overwhelmingly DMK versus AIDMK, this is one constituency where the Congress and the BJP have their own hold. That's that's what when that's what I mean by saying it's a Congress versus BJP contest. So it's a fascinating contest for the southernmost Lok Sabha constituency of the Indian mainland and we'll keep a close watch of it, whether it's the old war horse Pon Radhakrishnan or the young businessman turned uh, politician Vijay Vasant who's going to pip the race or is it going to be a third person like Basilian Nazareth of the AIA DMK. We'll keep every track and turn of the Kanyakumari contest in focus. But shifting over from Tamil Nadu to Karnataka where Deputy Chief Minister D.K. Shivkumar got notices from the Lok Ayukta for the case that was transferred by the Karnataka government from the CBI to the Lok Ayukta. Remember, there is a legal challenge as well going on in that. But more interestingly, D.K. Shivkumar is fighting a strong contest for his brother, D.K. Suresh, in the Bengaluru rural constituency. That's the only seat the Congress won in 2019. And this time, the BJP-JDS alliance has fielded Deva Gowda, HD Deva Gowda's son-in-law, Dr. Manjunath there, turning it into a prestige contest for Bengaluru Rural. There's been an enormous amount of campaigning by the BJP's top leadership in Bengaluru Rural. It's part of the Vokkaliga heartland and DK Shiv Kumar will have to retain it to prove a point about his power in that region. Remember, these are regions where the Congress swept the assembly election. Can it do it again like it has done so many times before in Bengaluru rural? That's the question my colleague Pratibha Raman caught up with DK Shivkumar for this exclusive conversation. DK Shivkumar, so first of all, Eid Mubarak to you. And second of all, sir, how confident are you with the Lok Sabha election? I'm not only confident, I'm more confident that whatever we have promised, we have delivered. There is a big wave of the Congress party here, big wave of guarantee, and big wave on the confidence of the people of this uh, uh, state and the government that uh, whatever we just look at the development of every individual economically due to the price rise, all of them were suffering. We are able to sort it out. Now I'm very happy Mr. Malikajan Kargeji and Rauji has signed a check, check to the people of this country that they are going to give one lakh rupees per year, Ma Lakshmi, Bhagya Lakshmi, and for use, one lakh rupees and 25 lakh insurance to every citizen who will be suffering on various health insurance schemes. This is a very big boost what the Congress party has given to the entire country. Sir, there's also a Loka Yukta notice that has been issued to you. Do you feel that that is going to be an impediment ahead of the Lok Sabha election? Of course, see, I think even CBA also, though it withdrew the case and handed out the Loka Yukta, CBA also has uh, uh, going on investigating. They have issued notice to various of my friends and my institutions and a lot of things. At the same time, Loka Yukta is also doing it. Yesterday night I got an information. I just look at it. I am ready to reply to whatever the information is because all my records is nothing private. It is, a, it is on a public domain. It has been, uh, uh, my system of uh, declaring is different and others hide the information. But I do not hide the information. I know what is the law of this country. Uh, everything is on Loka Ekta, my documents, everything is on income tax, everything is on the election commission. Apart from that, nothing I have hidden and I will not hide it also. So today Mr. Yadurapa held a press conference, spoke about Modi's guarantees. Do you feel that this is going to be a Congress guarantees versus Modi guarantees ahead of the Lok Sabha election? Also Mr. Yadurapa seeking apology from DK Shukumar as well as uh, Rahul Gandhi for demanding or protesting against the closure of the HAL. See, let it not discuss HAL, we'll discuss later. Let it discuss about the whatever the promises they had given in the early election. Early, early election number one. The second question you are asking on the Modi guarantee. What is, what is Modi guarantee? If Modi guarantee is going to fill anyone's stomach, he agreed to it. But Modi guarantee, 10 years there was in rule. 
no stomach has been filled no one has been benefited even at the time of corona 20 lakh crore was been announced but nothing reached a common man i think uh, uh, they are trying to just uh, they have copied our congress guarantee not a bjp guarantee now it is a modi guarantee so some of the surveys of the Congress government have suggested that the BJP as well as the JDS, if the votes were to transfer to each other, it might not benefit the Congress. I think it is a closed era of the uh, JDS and BJP. BJP themselves have agreed that they are going to be defeated, though they have got, so they have gone to the JDS, number one. Uh, BJP knows that uh, they have lost the face of all the parliament members. That is why they have changed 50% uh, of the candidates in Karnataka. Sir, so my so final the, question, will your CM aspirations be fulfilled after Lok Sabha? Sir, will your CM aspirations be fulfilled after Lok Sabha? That was Mr. D.K. Shivakumar talking about how confident the Congress is ahead of the Lok Sabha election. Though, was pretty much tight-lipped when we asked him about the CM aspirations ahead of the Lok Sabha election. With camera person over Pratima Raman in Bengaluru for NDTV. Well, he's left the most interesting political question unanswered, uh, the impact of the Lok Sabha elections on state politics. But remember, the Congress putting up a very strong fight in Karnataka against the BJP there in the 28 Lok Sabha constituencies. But shifting focus to Telangana and to the first family of the BRS and its troubles continue. K. Kavita has been taken into CBI custody at the Tihar jail today. She was questioned by the CBI in that liquor scam in which she has been facing ED charges and ED questioning and she was in Tihar jail custody where she's been taken into custody by the CBI after questioning. My colleague Uma Sudhir, who's been tracking all those details there, joins us live uh, from Hyderabad. Uma, the real political consequences of these cases that the BRS is facing. On the one hand, an electoral battle to remain relevant in Telangana politics. On the other, these cases for the first family. Yes, indeed. Uh, the CBI has today issued the order saying that uh, she will be arrested and tomorrow in court is when they will seek the custody of uh, Kavita and if she goes into the CBI custody, they want to confront her with the new evidence that they say has come to light. They have already questioned her inside jail after having got uh, permission from the uh, special court uh, to question her inside Tihar jail and they had confronted her, we are told, with evidence of the WhatsApp chats uh, of uh, her former chartered accountant, Gucci Babu. Remember that... Uh, not just Kavita, but also Manish Sisodia, Sanjay Singh, as well as uh, Vijay Nair, where have been arrested both by the CBI and the ED, and the three others who were with her in the South Group, which is alleged to operate 100 crore rupees as a uh, bribe uh, to the uh, Delhi government to have the formulation of the uh, liquor policies according to uh, according to the allegations. They were, all three of them have turned approvers and that's what Kavita has spoken about. Politically speaking, in the run-up to parliament elections, uh, the, uh, the first family, whether it is KCR or KTR, are now not really talking about Kavita or about her being victimized, so to speak, by the central agencies. They are focusing, in fact, on the issues here of the people and saying that it is the BRS that can solve those issues and attacking both the Congress as well as the BJP on that front. Interestingly, also, I must say that uh, Kavita had in a note to the uh, agency said that it is only based on the statements of people that she is being, in fact, uh, incarcerated and kept in jail and that there is no trail of evidence against her. On the day that bail was uh, not granted to her, rather rejected and her uh, custody was, in fact, extended, uh, the exceptions that under PMLA that women get, even that was not given to her because the court felt or the argument given was that she is someone who is powerful and she has agency and she does not fit into that category where uh, she needs to be given bail because she is a woman and they said that it is not obligatory or mandatory. On her part, Kavita says that she has not destroyed any evidence, that she has cooperated with the investigating agencies and she also claims that the telephones that the agency says were destroyed, she had in fact presented before them and she is willing to share all the evidence. Of course, the uh, investigating agencies have said that when she came back with the phones, they were formatted and that all that uh, information was lost. So politically, very clearly, this is linked right. also to the AAP party and Delhi uh, Chief Minister Kejriwal as well. And that's why this becomes even more of a naughty issue politically -ish as well. Back to you.
That's right, Uma. We'll keep a close track of it. Uh, it is obviously a politically sensitive case. The heat is on from the ED on the AAP as well as the BRS, but the heat is on politicians as well campaigning in a hot, hot, humid summer. How do they cope with it? We posed that question to several of the candidates we met along the way in our journey on the Southern View, and these are some of the reactions. How are you handling the heat? It's very hot here and it's so crowded. Welcome to Chennai. We are dealing here. So okay. We are okay with it. Yeah. Manikam Tagore, literally a hot, 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 hot campaign trail here, isn't it? Just we are entering into the Chitarai month, therefore it will be hot only. Alien plays a vital role in this hot summer, but uh, we've been cooled down by the people's response. Are wow! What a what a thing for the summer, huh? This is the best thing for the summer. Yeah, I can have this in one hand and then do the interview with you also on the other hand. Well, hot, hot summer there, but. Uh, that's all we have time for on the Southern View. Here's our wishes on Eid Mubarak to all our viewers, and we leave you with these fascinating images on Eid. The news and updates continue here on NDTV. Thanks for watching. This is all about gadgets. So, I have always have multiple gadgets. And the second one this time is this. The all-new Motorola Edge 50 Pro. Now, the Edge series, just by the name, it's you know, obvious that we get screen milta hai, it's with this 3D curved edge design. At the same time, phone is also having specs that are cutting edge. And in this phone, mein bhi, we have something special because there are many world's first and world's only features packed inside this phone. Uh, what we have is this nicely crafted, very sleek phone, where the frame is made up of aluminium. The back, what we have is this special vegan leather. It smells nice as well. And the phone inside packs the punch because हमारे पास में है Qualcomm Snapdragon 7 Gen 3 processor. What we have is a 4500 mAh battery. But the best part is this phone supports up to 125 watts of fast charging, and the charger comes inside the box. At the same time, this also supports up to 50 watts of wireless charging. You can also charge your other smartphone accessories because this phone में reverse wireless charging भी है, and then the camera and the screen, they are pretty unique because here they both are Pantone certified. The screen goes up to 144 hertz and the kind of colors you see, they're all certified by Pantone. And you know Pantone being the pioneer in the color space, so we get colors, milte hai, they are very accurate. At the same time, what we have are like you know precisely accurate skin tones for all your shots because your rear camera se photos are hai, they are also certified. Hello ladies and gentlemen, you're watching NDTV. In a significant setback to the Congress party ahead of the Lok Sabha elections, the Prevention of Money Laundering Act, PMLA Adjudicating Authority, has confirmed the attachment of over Rs 750 crore belonging to party-run Associated Journal Limited, AJL and Young Indian. It has pointed out, and I quote, that the attachment shall continue during the pendency of the proceedings and become final after an order of confiscation is passed by the special court. Now, uh, let me remind my viewers that the National Herald is a newspaper that was founded by former uh, and late Prime Minister Jawaharlal Nehru in 1938. AJL, in fact, is the company that published and owned this newspaper. Now, this case is particularly important as it is in this alleged uh, uh, money laundering case in which the Gandhis are the main accused and it is centered on uh, the alleged takeover of uh, Associated Journals Limited, AJL, along with the assets that are estimated 
estimated at Rs 750 crore by Young Indian allegedly for 50 lakh. Now, these attached properties are situated in prime locations in Delhi, Lucknow and also Mumbai. Now, this is in line with the actions of the investigating agencies that the centre says is a move against the corrupt, but the opposition parties have been calling it an assault on democracy. Should such actions continue during elections? That is the question we are asking. Also, Congress had all the time to put the AGL papers, issues in order. Why did it not do that? That is also another significant question that we would like to answer. Those are the questions that we are asking tonight. Joining us now are Rashaina NC of the BJP, Mahima Singh of the Congress Party and Rashid Kidwai, who is a senior journalist and also a political uh, commentator. Let me uh, go across to uh, Shaina first. Uh, uh, yes. Uh, Shaina, how do you, you know, every Amba. opposition party has been saying that why mm. is this action being Amba. taken now from Mr. Kejriwal to Mr. Soren yes. and now the Gandhis? How is the BJP yes. preparing to counter these allegations and mm. how confident are you that the Modi factor will help you sort of sidestep some of these issues? So the adjudicating authority of the Prevention of the Money Laundering Act, we know has uh, talked about this attachment because this issue has been going on for the longest time. Now, freezing uh, properties is only part of the process. But I think what we need to highlight clearly here is how this young Indian owns that owns the newspaper, how 38% of the shares belong to Rahul Gandhi and 38% belong to Sonia Gandhi. Now, isn't this a clear-cut case of money laundering? The uh, central agency attached these properties last year in November. So everyone who says, oh, elections and all of that, I don't think anyone buys that argument. The PMLA case uh, with the associate journals, the AJL uh, and the National Herald newspaper and the YI that owns the newspaper, all of this has been uh, going on an ongoing process. And the young Indian has been under the ED scanner for the reasons which are known to all, an alleged loan which was given and extended to the Congress party. And the ED initiated this whole thing after the Delhi uh, court took cognizance of this in right. 2014. And this was then a private complaint. So let's understand the agency has only done right. its job. Mm -hmm. And the so-called people, the uh, people who are in contention, have not even uh, replied so this has been going on since 2014. So, Mahima Singh, can I, can I, can I get, you, get your response on this? this? Because, you know, China is, uh, China is this making is a very important point here. She's, you know, she, you know, this complaint was because of uh, Mr. Subramaniam Swami and that was duly acknowledged and acted upon by the Patiala House Court as per an order in 2014. I remember covering the Gandhis when they had come to the court also. Now, both Sonia Gandhi and Rahul Gandhi were also questioned by ED regarding their relations to the case. Two leaders held 76% stake in Young Indian. Now, now just the, not just the investigating agencies, you see the courts are and also involved in this. How do you see your party getting out of this? Mahima. Jai Hind, uh, I would begin with these lines. Lashkar bhi tumhara hai, sardar tumhara hai. Tum jhoot ko sach likh do, akhbar tumhara hai. Suraj ki tapan tum se bardasht nahi hoti. Ek mom ke putle sa kirdar tumhara hai. The weaponization of these laws, making them draconian ever since 2014. You see, Vasudha, the law was enforced by the UPA government in 2005. And ever since 2014, there have been as many as four uh, amendments to this law, making it more draconian, raising questions on... Can't absolve uh, you of the of these laws. Just, just a moment. Allow me to finish. Shana, let me just finish. I'll come back to you. I'll come back to you. I yes. did not. I did not. Now, in our Nyay Patra, Vasudha, let me say, in our Nyaya Patra, we have made it very clear that when we are voted to power this year, we will put an end to the weaponization of laws, arbitrary searches, seizures and attachments, arbitrary and indiscriminate arrests as, you know, have been happening. And to we, we shall enact a law on bail that will incorporate the principle that bail is the rule, jail is the exception. Our leaders have been questioned endlessly. Has the country not seen that? 
55 hours of questioning for Mr. Rahul Gandhi by the ED and nothing was found. The BJP may keep on howling because you see, they are the ones running the system today. But, but Mahima, let me, let me just but interject you. No, you know, there is, no there is a argument. perception issue. But you know, Mahima Singh, there is, you know, the Congress party could have also gotten its papers in order, right? Because there was time. So the merits of the case is one thing. Would you, you like see. to respond to that? Vasudha, Vasudha, you see, it's not, it's not about uh, uh, the, uh, the the concern is not whether the Congress Party should have put the papers in order or what should have been done. You you just look around, bureaucrats, journalists, politicians from the opposition. Who has this government? Can I respond, Vasudha? Yes, one second, one second. I'll just come to you. Let let how me just. How indiscipline? How indiscipline? You you remember cases against Mr. Chidambaram and Mr. D.K. Shivakumar before 2019 and before Karnataka elections? What happened to them? They got acquitted at the end. What Can is I the comment? Okay, now? China, respond to this because you know she is saying that this the perception of this and you know this being seen as an assault on democracy overweighs the fact that there are merits in this case. How would you respond to that? The Congress so amended. I, I only want to ask two serious questions and hopefully the Congress spokesperson will give a reply. Now, the young Indian that has so-called been under the ED scanner on charges of uh, acquiring AJL and its at assets for pittance against the loan which was extended to the Congress party, is this not a gross violation? The ED initiated the money laundering probe because the Delhi court then took cognizance of this in 2014. So how is this not a money laundering case? And look at the kind of properties in Lucknow, in Mumbai, in Delhi. And does the Congress party really feel it can continue to cheat where you have 38% belonging to Rahul Gandhi and 38% belonging to Sonia Gandhi? Why shouldn't the agencies record a statement and ask the care shareholders and the donors of the Congress if they feel they were cheated by the office okay. bearers let, of AJL. Let me, let me get the expert here. Mr. Give Kidwai, you know, uh, so one both one China and Mahima have made very important one points. Moment, one moment, now, a brief uh, Mahima, I'll just come to you. Let Rashid if you know, finish his point. Like The ED's investigation also concluded, like China was also mentioning, that these maneuvers also you know, not only defrauded the shareholders of AJL, but also misled the donors so of the Congress party. But, uh, but Mahima has also been talking about perception. What does this mean for the Congress party, specifically for the Gandhis? See, it's, it, Congress is passing through a difficult time politically and these kind of litigation and cases are also taking a very uh, heavy toll because it's a you know, battle of perception. And that is where the BGP is scoring. My friend China says that, you know, a private citizen uh, filed a complaint. Not a private citizen. Mr. Surabhim Swami is a private citizen, but he is also a very well-known, you know, BGP leader, a person who is known to be, uh, you know, hostile to the Congress and an Aru Gandhi family. Uh, second part is, look at the, you know, uh, progress. If we say that the matter was, uh, uh, was, you know, the ED took over in 2014, we are in 2024. There is such a tardy progress. If he, if the Gandhis are accused of anything, then they should be convicted not this kind of trial and third thing was the timing the elections are going on and uh, you know one thing the other the inspired leaks or some action on the part of et we also know that the other day indian express carried a news item saying that those 25 people uh you know against whom et had initiated you know cases 23 of them have joined the bjp now these are you know telling things i'm not going into the merit of the case Hmm. If there is a if, if some wrongdoing has happened, hmm. then it's then you know people should be taken to task. But this is not the way. And you know, selective targeting is and particular time of election is unfair. Okay, I'll, I'll get Shaina to respond to this, but I have my colleague uh, Ashwarya yeah. joining us. He's been tracking this case just to know, you know, what is the latest development. You know, Ashwarya, the May confirmation of the PMLA adjudicating yeah. authority yeah. came yeah. just a day yeah. after, you know, following this detailed hearings on the property attachment order that was issued in 2023 yeah. by ED, which is, of course, prob probing this case. Now, this is all under PMLA. It was based on a complaint that was filed by Subramaniam Swami and many individuals, I understand, were involved in this from Rahul Gandhi, Sonia Gandhi, Motilal Vora, even Suman. Dubey, Sam Petroda. What is the update on this case and what are we expecting in the coming days? Well, the adjudicating authority uh, said in its order uh, that uh, having considered the material in uh, original complaint, the written reply and rejoinder of uh, defendants and also the oral arguments of uh, complainant and defendants uh, find that movable and immovable properties provisionally attached uh, on November 20, 2023 in the names of defendants. Uh, both of the AJL and uh, the Young India are proceeds of crimes in terms of sections uh, of the PMLA and therefore involved in money laundering. Now, when 
uh, the uh, when when the order uh, when the authority has upheld the decision and has stated that these uh, immovable properties and equity shares would be considered as proceeds of crime, then certainly uh, the next part uh, of the uh, of, of the progress of this entire uh, enforcement directorate would be to attach these properties and to uh, to take them in their possession. So clearly, uh, uh, you know, at this point of time, ED also had placed ample material on record to establish. The nexus between the attached properties uh, and the pursuits of crime. So certainly these properties, be it in New Delhi, be it in Bombay, be it in Lucknow and other places will be taken under their possession. So clearly, uh, you know, that's where uh, we uh, all are saying that it's a, uh, a setback for the Congress party. Right. Uh, thank you, Ashwarya, for joining us with those details. Shana, would you like to respond to this? Because both UP and NDA have made PMLA tougher over the years, but many have now started talking about the need to prevent misuse of legal mechanisms, although many of these provisions have been upheld by Supreme Court in 2021. Would you say that there is really a need to reassess the provisions of PMLA, specifically the powers that it gives to ED? Or do you think that the merits of the case are strong enough for it to stand? And also... Oh, not clearly the merits... The yes. merits of the case are strong enough and uh, Rashid Ji talked about Subramaniam Swami. Why shouldn't any law-abiding citizen or any citizen for that matter question? Now, if you look at it, the abdicate, educating authority under the Prevention of Money Laundering Act froze the assets only based on the evidence and the order allows the enforcement directorate to take possession of the assets. This is not the Bharatiya Janata Party saying it. It is obviously the process of law. And if you have a final confiscation of these properties and the trial courts, uh, you know, rule in favor or against, this matter is sub -judice. So if you're going to question how Herald House in Delhi or how properties in Mumbai or Lucknow or any other location can be correlated. I want to say that the Central Investigative Agency has attached the properties way back in November. And please understand provisional uh, attachment orders issued in any case in PMLA cases are, are done in accordance with what the evidence is. And here the evidence is clear that the Congress leaders who are part of this young Indian, 38% Sonia Gandhi, 38% Rahul Gandhi, and the fact that you have uh, assets being pro uh, you know, bought for pittance, absolute right. pittance, shows you the cross trail okay. and it's a clear open and closed case. So, so Mahima, you know, Shaina says to... it's an open and shut case, but why is the Congress party holding on to AJL despite, you know, major problems being faced by it? You know, at some point, would you think that the National Herald case could have been handled in a better way by, by the party leaders? Basudha, I've been uh, meaning to respond for a hello, long time. Hello, hello. Let me first say what I would have liked to, and I hope PJP spokesperson will not create okay. nuisance by interfering. Now, the uh, every law-abiding citizen of this country, when they would hear your debate today, w would wonder, why is the BJP spokesperson speaking as if she is the one conducting the trial? Because the way she is speaking about the accused in the matter or the other facts of the matter, it sounds like, you know, she's facts, only passing... Shana, let her finish. So let Mahima finish. Matter, Mahima, please continue. Once again, there she goes, the BJP culture. So you see, the uh, the matter is sub judice, which she rightly pointed out, and I hope she understands the scope of uh, when a matter is sub judice. And the CJI has time and again reminded the country and the media that please do not uh, pass judgmental remarks on sub judice matters. So one is that it is sub judice, and the other is when you ask me whether we should have uh, handled it better or not. You see, I have pointed out to only two of many, many, you know, above 90 percent, 95 percent cases that are on opposition leaders today. Mr. Chidambaram's and Mr. D.K. Shivkumar's case, you can remember, the BJP was still uh, spreading canards at that stage and they came out clean. 2G scam, you would remember how the BJP, uh, you know, spread canards and came to power in 2014. If it was not for transparent procedures set up by the Congress and the UPA, the BJP would have had never uh, had their way. But there have been... please. Uh, okay. Yeah, Allow yeah, me yeah, let, let her finish. I'm coming to you. We, because we, we did what we mean to do again by the promise we have made uh, through our manifesto, the Nyaya Patra. 
we will okay. remove these draconian amendments. Okay, we, we are running short of time, and I want the last word from Mr. Kidwai. Mr. Kidwai, this issue was supposed to. I, I'll come to you. This this issue was supposed to be a rallying point for the opposition, but this is election time. Everybody is, uh, you know, back to campaigning. Do you think that this discourse that agencies are being misused, you know, do you see this becoming the most important issue for the opposition, and how, uh, you know, relatable will it be for common voters? Yeah, I think, uh, Vasudha, you have uh, raised a very valid question and uh, I wish I could answer in a very definite, certain way. There is a perception that is being, you know, created. Remember, most uh, citizens, most voters are law-abiding citizens. So, therefore, if there is uh, any case by, you know, government agencies and all, uh, people become, you know, suspicious, whether it is a case of Amadi Party or National Rights case or so. So, the battle of perception, the BGP is, is doing well. I, I see there is a political, you know, messaging also that's taking place. As I said, if there is a watertight case, as my friend uh, China thinks, then 10 years is a long period for a crime of this nature to be taken to a logical end. But it's not happening. And that is something that is an overt politicization of this issue. Right. Uh, Shana, you wanted to but, respond to Mahima so that, quickly, 30 just seconds. very fast. I want to say that young Indian paid only 50 lakhs to, and recovered 90 crores of Associate Journals Limited, which was owned by the Congress. And the Enforcement Directorate has only highlighted the same. So I want to ask that what is the great, uh, uh, you know, secret here? If, if there has been properties to this extent, which have been uh, beneficiaries, have been the Congress party, and if the ED has talked about uh, the, the, the entire process which started in 2014, which culminated now, if it had culminated early, you would say that it's a witch hunt. Okay, Mahima, would you like to respond to that very quickly? quickly she's saying that I mean, this is not November election time. This is not you know, about, This is something that has been going on for, for a long time now. Kittens, which was... Yes, all the, remarks, all the remarks that the BJP spokesperson is making are unbecoming and she's not at a position to actually make those remarks. Let the courts decide. And the BJP is losing this election miserably. That is why they are so nervous that they are taking these steps in haste and desperation. Ma'am, wishful thinking, but best luck to you. Nyay Patra is going to, Nyay Patra is going to remedy yeah, by all. Let the public the decide whether it's Nyay or Nyay. Okay. But thank you so much. Uh, thank you so much, all of you, for joining me on this uh, show. Anti-corruption body thank has you, affirmed action on the National Herald's assets worth over 750 crore. Congress leaders Rahul Gandhi and Sonia Gandhi were earlier questioned by ED regarding their relations to this case. So this is definitely a setback uh, for the Congress party. But uh, moving on, this is election time. And uh, one of our reporters uh, is in Jorhat constituency of Assam. Uh, all eyes are on the prestigious seat of Jorhat. Congress deputy leader in Lok Sabha, Gaurav Gogoi, is contesting against BJP MP Topon Gogoi. It's, it's a prestige battle for both Gogois as Gaurav Gogoi faces the challenge of maintaining his winning streak from a, from a new seat where the BJP has a strong presence to present himself as the face of Congress in national politics. My colleague Ratadeep Chaudhary and Sanjay Chakraborty have this report. It's a battle between two Gogois in Jorhat, Gaurav and Topon. Once a Congress bastion, now a BJP stronghold since 2014, the constituency is a prestige battle for both sides. The Ahum factor is also key to the contest. 41 years old Gaurav Gogoi starts his day early, reaching out to voters of Jorhat. Gaurav has ancestral roots in Jorhat, and his father, late Tarun Gogoi, Assam's three time chief minister, had represented Jorhat in Lok Sabha twice in the 70s. Before he returned to the state politics, Gaurav says his fight for Jorhat is beyond his family legacy. I have not worked in Jorhat for the last 10 years. I was in a, in a neighboring district uh, far from uh, Jorhat with the response that we are seeing from all sections of society and the way the BJP have also responded. It seems as if even the BJP were not prepared uh, for me to contest from this seat. And this campaign 
is not about an individual. This campaign is not about a specific po political party. This campaign is about the people. I'm fighting for the right of tea garden workers who don't get a sufficient living wage. And, and we are fighting for the idea of democracy because people in Assam, especially in Jorhat, they have opposed the Citizenship Amendment Act, but they don't have the space to exercise their right to protest. Gogo is trying to reach out to the far-flung areas and to the villages and tea gardens, holding more than a dozen meetings every day, trying to meet the voters. The challenge for him is that not only this is a new constituency, but several Congress leaders from this area have left the Congress and switched over to the BJP. Cut to the campaign on the other side. BJP has fielded the sitting MP Tapan Gogoi, a former student leader in Assam and a former Assam minister. Tapan faces a challenge of another kind. He is campaigning in a wheelchair after he fractured his leg, but Tapan is sure he will overcome this temporary handicap. 19 April, 19 April to Sunao Hoga, Sab Lugune BJP ko bhot dega, or 4 June ane dijiye. तो उस उस दिन हम बात करेंगे तो हम लोग जो बोला है अभी हम जो बोला है उसी सही होगा डेली हम 10 12 13 ऐसे मीटिंग हम सुनाओ का मीटिंग हम लोग कर रहा हूं अभी भी मेरा मीटिंग है इसलिए कोई प्रॉब्लम नहीं है तो हम जीतेंगे 100% बीजेपी चीफ मिनिस्टर हिमंत बिश्व शर्मा हैज थ्रोन हिज वेट बिहाइंड टॉपन सेवरल ऑफ हिज टॉप मिनिस्टर्स एंड द पार्टी स्टेट लीडरशिप हैव बीन स्टेशन देयर द क्वेश्चन इज विल बीजेपी रिटेन जोरहाट we are looking forward a bright future uh, so we will go with the government who gave us these facilities and who provided us with all the sources for our development like uh, during this uh, government rule we got this uh, employment opportunities the ahum community and the tea garden workers make up the majority of the voters in jorhat both Congress's Gaurav Gogoi and BJP's Tapan Gogoi are from the Ahum community. Seen as a youth icon, Gaurav is busy crisscrossing this vast constituency to win over the youth. As the sitting MP, Tapan is on home turf, while Gaurav Gogoi has a family legacy to bank. Tapan is also backed by the might of the BJP juggernaut in Assam. Under Himanta Bishwa Sharma, to dub your heart a clash of the titans may be an exaggeration, but it promises to be a keenly fought contest. With camera person Sanjay Chakravarti in your heart, Ratnadeep Chaudhary for NDTV. Moving on, Association for Democratic Reforms has released data for the richest and poorest candidates in the free in the first phase of Lok Sabha elections. As per this data, Kamal Nath's son, Nakul Nath, is the richest candidate, having declared assets worth 716 crores. The data also shows that 450 of the 1,600 candidates are Krodpatis and 10 candidates have declared their assets as zero. Here's a report. Senior leader Kamal Nath's son Nakul Nath, the Congress candidate from Chindwara in Madhya Pradesh, 716 crore rupees. From Tamil Nadu, AIA DMK candidate from Erode Ashok Kumar, 662 crore rupees. And the BJP candidate from Siva Ganga, Devanathan Yadav, 304 crore rupees. These are the three richest candidates in the first phase of the Lok Sabha elections. Analysis by the NGO ADR or Election Watch of the affidavit submitted by 1618 candidates has revealed that 450, that is around 28%, are Karorpatis. Nakul Nath, the son of Congress leader Kamal Nath and the Congress candidate from Chindwara, Madhya Pradesh, is the richest candidate. The AIA DMK candidate from Erod in Tamil Nadu, Ashok Kumar, is the second richest candidate. And the BJP candidate from Sivaganga in Tamil Nadu, Devnathan Yadav T is the third richest in the fray in phase one. Anji, Bilkul, Yeto ADR ka Amesha se Muddarahae, Kijo Dhanbal or Bahubal, 
कोर्ट अभी चल रहा है हमारे इलेक्शन सिस्टम में उसमें धनबल का प्रभाव ज़्यादा बढ़ गया है और अगर हम ये स्टैटिस्टिक देखें कि जीतने वाली बात तो पिछली लोकसभा का जो एनालिसिस हमने किया था उसमें लगभग 48 प्रतिशत जो जीते थे एम उनकी एसेट्स दो करोड़ से ऊपर थे इंटरेस्टिंगली टेन कैंडिडेट्स इन दिन दर्स्ट फेज है A few independent candidates have declared very few assets. They include Pondraj K from Tamil Nadu who has declared assets worth just 320 rupees. Kartik Gendla ji Doke in Maharashtra has declared assets worth just 500 rupees. While the assets of Surya Muthu in Tamil Nadu are just 500 rupees. बहुत कम जीतते हैं नॉर्थ ईस्ट में हमने देखा है कुछ एक कम पैसे वाले भी जीत जाते हैं लेकिन जैसे मैंने बताया स्टैटिस्टिक्स अगर हम देखें पिछले जो लोकसभा चुनाव में थे आ, में सिर्फ 0.03 पॉइंट ज़ीरो थ्री परसेंट चांसेज परसेंटेजेस थे जो ऐसे जिनके कम पैसे हैं वो लोग जीते हैं अकॉर्डिंग टू इलेक्शन वॉच सिक्सटीन हंड्रेड एंड एटीन कैंडिडेट्स हु आर इन फ्रे इन दर्स्ट फेज ऑफ दिस पोल्स हैव डिक्लेयर एन एवरेज एसेट ऑफ फोर करोड़ एंड फिफ्टी वन लैक इन दर्स्ट फेज द हाइस्ट नंबर ऑफ रिच कैंडिडेट्स आर इन तमिलनाडु AIDMK has fielded 36 candidates who have declared an average asset of around 35 crore while 22 candidates fielded by DMK have declared average assets worth around 31 crore clearly the influence of money power seems visible everywhere in these lok sabha elections in delhi with manoj thakur himanshu shekhar for edi tv That's quite a gulf between the richest and the poorest candidates uh, contesting the first phase of elections uh, in 2024. Time for a short break. We'll be back in a bit. Hello, Moto. Motorola, India's best 5G smartphone brand. In a move to ensure a 100% voter turnout, the Election Commission in the West Tripura Parliamentary Constituency has launched a pioneering initiative, Home Voting, where voting facilities reach voters' doorstep for disabled and blind voters apart from elderly persons. TV wins big at Enba with 43 awards. NDTV reigns supreme. Sanjay Pugalia takes home the award for editor in chief of the year. Santosh Kumar wins managing editor of the year. Vishnu Som, Maria Shakil, and Sumit Avasti take home the top honors for the anchors of the year. BSI, Hamlo, and We the People all take home awards and. NDTV 24/7 takes home News Channel of the Year award. NDTV stands for trust. We are here at Chief Justice of India, Justice D. Y. Chandrachur Chamber. First time in the history will show how Chief Justice of India, Justice D. Y. Chandrachur, works in his chamber and how it looked like. Middle lap, come this one.
This is NDTV. And you're watching NDTV 24-7. Hello, Moto. Hello and welcome. You're watching the News Bulletin at 8 with me, Tanima Biswas. Wishing all our viewers Eid Mubarak. Let's take a look at the top headlines. Six children killed as school bus overturns in Haryana. Driver was reportedly drunk and speeding. School bus driver, principal and school secretary arrested. Battle Royale in Rajasthan as Prime Minister Modi and Rahul Gandhi hold rallies in the state. Prime Minister Modi targets Congress over corruption. Rahul counters, accuses BJP of diversionary tactics. Battle for Virudhanagar in Tamil Nadu. BJP fields star versus Congress veteran in this hot seat. Tiger's roll leads to silent pole zone in parts of Chhattisgarh. Tiger spotted in a Chhattisgarh forest after 15 years. State Forest Department monitors tiger movement. Leads to loudspeakers being banned in seven villages in the area in election season. Poll Panel's pioneering initiative, home voting for differently abled and elderly voters in West Tripura. And Elon Musk confirms his India visit to meet Prime Minister Modi. Will Musk's visit pave the way for Tesla projects to roll into India? Right, our top focus. Six children died and dozens more were injured after a school bus overturned near a village in Haryana's Mahendragarh. Police have arrested the school bus driver, principal and school secretary. As per reports, the bus driver was allegedly drunk and speeding. This tragic incident has once again thrown the spotlight on rules followed while selecting staff for school buses. Right, and election news now, campaigning pick space as we inch closer to the first phase of general elections scheduled next week. And the heat is on in Rajasthan as biggest faces from BJP and Congress, Prime Minister Modi and Congress MP Rahul Gandhi campaigned in the state today. Prime Minister once again took a dig at Congress targeting them on corruption. Rahul Gandhi hit back, calling it BJP's diversionary tactics. So there on your screens, the two biggest faces from BJP and Congress there holding competing rallies in Rajasthan. Uh, this as we inch closer to the first phase of polls in, of, for the Lok Sabha and uh, where you can in fact see that uh, Congress MP Rahul Gandhi there uh, holding a rally as well as Prime Minister Modi also uh, holding multiple rallies in the state of Rajasthan today. News from the south now and we turn our focus to constituency of Virudhunagar where BJP is hoping to draw on the star power of actor turned politician Radhika to take on Congress veteran and incumbent MP Manikam Tagore. Popular actor and a powerful name in television production, Radhika is the BJP's face for the Virudhunagar Lok Sabha seat. Her husband Sharat Kumar is one of Tamil cinema's top stars and a former Rajya Sabha MP. And together, their aim is to wrestle out the Virudhanagar seat. From this man, the incumbent Congress MP Manikam Tagore, who's backed by the formidable DMK Congress left alliance with other smaller parties. Radhika and Sharat Kumar are the star and local political appeal for the BJP in a state which has had an eternal bond between film stars and politics. You will be very surprised. I think this is going to throw up a lot of surprises. When I uh, entered the political fray, in the sense to get involved in politics, it was 1996. The same reaction we feel now, that people definitely want a change and the change is going to be for the BJP. <laughs> Good. 
grassroots political equations and caste arithmetic like anywhere else play a decisive role in a constituency like Virudhunagar. The two Dravidian parties with their tested alliances have been masters at that grassroots management and breaking through is a formidable challenge for a third force. The Congress is riding on DMK power in Tamil Nadu and a carefully nurtured alliance of parties which have consistently sided with the DMK after the demise of AIA DMK Supremo J. Jayalalitha. Manikam Tagore's biggest strength is that alliance that brings with it the grassroots arithmetic to get past the post. He won this seat in 2009 with a 40% vote share as a DMK ally but came fourth with just 3% vote in 2014 when the Congress and DMK fought separately in one of their worst elections. The AI DMK won the seat in that election. But in 2019, Tagore was back on poll as a DMK ally with a 43% vote. This history just reiterates the importance of the Congress-DMK alliance, especially for the former. After 4th of July, June, they will all be there, shops will be closed and we will not, they will not have, we will have the 40 MPs of the India Alliance together in the parliament and we will all stand together as India Alliance. The bigger threat to him, according to Tagore, is this man, Vijay Prabhakar, son of DMDK founder and late actor Vijay Kant. These parts are a DMDK region of influence and Vijay is banking on a sympathy factor as his campaign is about keeping his father's legacy alive. The alliance with the AIA DMK is a formidable one and he is threatening to have a sting in the tail. We have a quite uh, good uh, vote bank here and even ADMK has a good quite vote bank here. So according to our tactics, uh, I think uh, we are stronger to compare to those two. And to be honest, the competition will be between uh, Mr. Manikam Thakur and myself, I think. Yeah. The battle for Virudhunagar is one for survival of the DMDK. One to hold on to seats, to keep the numbers to remain a relevant opposition nationally for the Congress. And one that could mean a march into new territory for the BJP. All three together make Virudhunagar as interesting a contest as any. In Virudhunagar, Veera Raghav for NDTV. Now the Asanso Lok Sabha seat in West Bengal is a high-stakes hot seat for TMC as well as for BJP. TMC has in fact fielded its star campaigner MP Shatrughan Sinha, while BJP has fielded former union minister SS Aluwalia against the actor turned politician. Prabhakar spoke to Shatrughan Sinha. Listen in. हमारे साथ ऐसे सक्सेस मौजूद हैं जिन्हें कोई परिचय की जरूरत नहीं है। जी हाँ त्रिनमूल कांग्रेस के आसनसोल के एमपी और अपने पटना के बिहार के बिहारी बाबू सर बहुत-बहुत स्वागत है आपका एंडीटीवी पे सर पहले आपके थोड़ी जर्नी की बात करेंगे आपको लोग बिहारी बाबू बोलते हैं आपने बिहार को भी छोड़ दिया आप उस बीजेपी के पार्ट रहे हैं जो अटल और अडवाणी की बीजेपी थी अब जो नई बीजेपी है उसे आप कैसे देखते हैं सर पहली बात तो मैं आपकी पहली बात का जवाब दे दूं आपका आभार प्रकट करता हूं कि आप आए मेरे साक्षात्कार के लिए मुझसे बातचीत करने के लिए एनडीटीवी का भी हम आभार प्रकट करते हैं वहीं दूसरी तरफ मैं कहना चाहता हूं कि मैं बिहारी बाबू हूं आई आपका प्यार है बड़प्पन है आपकी लेकिन बंगाली बाबू बंगाली बाबू भी हूं बहुतों के नजरों में लेकिन सही मानों में मैं हिंदुस्तानी बाबू हूं पूरे देश का हूं भारत का संविधान इस बात की इजाजत देता है कि आप कहीं भी जाएं कहीं से चुनाव लड़ें और कहीं भी व्यापार करें व्यवसाय करें आप खुद को सर्वधर्म समभाव के तहत जियो और जीने दो की पॉलिसी के तहत खुद को और अपने समाज को आगे बढ़ाएं तो ये बड़ी अच्छी बात होती है इसलिए मैं आसन सुल गया और चुनाव लड़ा इसमें क्या इस दूसरी बात हमने हमसे पूछी कि कैसा लगता है मैं सही यकीनन बहुत सालों तक मैं भारतीय जनता पार्टी में रहा हूँ सताईस अट्ठाईस साल तो जरूर रहा हूँ और मेरा तो लालन पालन ही पालन पोषण ही हुआ है भारतीय जनता पार्टी में और मुझे तो सबसे ज़्यादा प्यार मान सम्मान अने भारत रत्न नाना जी देशमुख उसके साथ लेकर गए थे मुझे उसके बाद उन्होंने मुझे भारत के भूतपूर्व अभूतपूर्व प्रधानमंत्री फादर फिगर अटल बिहारी वाजपेयी जी के हवाले किया लाल कृष्ण अडवाणी जी जो हमारे फ्रेंड फिलोसफर गाइड गुरु और अल्टीमेट लीडर थे और हैं और रहेंगे इनके हवाले किया इन लोगों ने मुझे ट्रेनिंग के लिए फर्दर 
मदन लाल खुराना जी के हवाले किया द टाइगर ऑफ डेली मदन लाल खुराना जी ने फिर सबने मिलकर बिहार आया तो बिहार में बहुत ही अच्छे नेता थे बहुत ही प्यारे बहुत बढ़िया स्वर्गीय कैलाशपति मिश्रा जी कर स्वर्गीय कैलाशपति मिश्रा जी के साथ उनके सानिध्य में बहुत कुछ लर्न लर्निंग करता रहा सीखता रहा पुरानी बातों को भुलाता गया नई बातें सीखता गया ऐसा करते हुए आगे बढ़ता गया लेकिन अतफाक से आज दुर्भाग्य कहे इतने सालों रहने के बाद अटल बिहारी वाजपेयी जी आडवाणी जी के ज़माने से लेकर अब तक जिस लोकशाही के साथ चल रहे थे हम वो हमें अब बहुत हद तक तानाशाही के रूप में दिखाई पड़ने लगा और बहुत सारे फैसले ऐसे होने लगे जो मुझे लगा कि जनहित में नहीं है ज़बरदस्ती हो रहे हैं वो नहीं होना चाहिए था बहुत कोशिश की इसलिए मैं दूसरी दिशा में आया लेकिन सही दिशा में आया Let's return to one of our top stories now in battleground Rajasthan where Prime Minister Modi and Rahul Gandhi held competing rallies campaigning pitch clearly on the rise as we inch closer to the first phase of elections. Temperatures on the rise in Rajasthan. With elections just a week away, it is Operation Desert Storm as the Congress and BJP double up on the campaign trail. The Prime Minister in Dholpur Karoli touching an emotive issue drinking water that strikes a chord but is especially significant for eastern rajasthan that has been waiting for the eastern rajasthan canal project for years that will supply water to 13 districts rajasthan mein pani ke sankar ko bada banane wali congress hi hai kendra sarkar ne har ghar pani pahunchane ke liye jal jeevan mission shuru kiya usme bhi कांग्रेस ने भ्रष्टाचार किया आने वाले समय में राजस्थान के घर घर पानी पहुंचेगा ये मोदी की गारंटी है द प्राइम मिनिस्टर विल अगेन हिट द डेजर्ट ट्रेल ऑन सैटरडे कैंपेनिंग इन बाड़मेर ऑन द वेस्ट एंड दौसा इन द ईस्ट राहुल गांधी हु वाज आल्सो इन फ्लोरिडा स्पोक अबाउट द कांग्रेसेस आउटरीच टू फार्मर्स एंड वुमेन वोटर्स बेरोजगारी की बात कभी नहीं आएगी महंगाई की बात कभी नहीं आएगी इनका काम आपका ध्यान भटकाने का है ये सिर्फ चाहते हैं कि पिछड़े वर्ग के मुद्दे किसानों के वर्ग मुद्दे गरीबों के मुद्दे नेशनल और रीजनल मीडिया पे ना आए Rajasthan is in for a largely bipolar contest and the BJP is hoping to score 25 out of 25 for the time even as the Congress hopes for a change to open its account in Rajasthan in Lok Sabha 2024. With Harsha Kumari Singh Bureau Report NDTV. Now Association for Democratic Reforms has released data for the richest and poorest candidates in the fray in the first phase of Lok Sabha elections. As per the data, Kamal Nath's son Nakul Nath is the richest candidate, having declared assets worth 716 crores. The data also shows that 450 of the 1600 candidates are crorepatis and 10 candidates have declared their assets as zero. Senior leader Kamal Nath's son Nakul Nath, the Congress candidate from Chhindwara in Madhya Pradesh, 716 crore rupees. From Tamil Nadu, AIADMK candidate from Erod Ashok Kumar, 662 crore rupees. And the BJP candidate from Siva Ganga, Devanathan Yadav, 304 crore rupees. These are the three richest candidates in the first phase of the Lok Sabha elections. Analysis by the NGO ADR or Election Watch of the affidavit submitted by 16 18 candidates has revealed that 450 that is around 28% are crorepatis. Nakul Nath the son of Congress leader Kamal Nath and the Congress candidate from Chhindwara Madhya Pradesh is the richest candidate. The AIA DMK candidate from Erode in Tamil Nadu Ashok Kumar is the second richest candidate and the BJP candidate from Siva Ganga in Tamil Nadu Devnathan Yadav T is the third richest in the fray in phase 1 जी बिल्कुल ये तो ए का हमेशा से मुद्दा रहा है कि जो धनबल और बाहुबल 
कोर्ट अभी चल रहा है हमारे इलेक्शन सिस्टम में उसमें धनबल का प्रभाव ज़्यादा बढ़ गया है और अगर हम ये स्टैटिस्टिक देखें कि जीतने वाली बात तो पिछली लोकसभा का जो एनालिसिस हमने किया था उसमें लगभग 48 प्रतिशत जो जीते थे एम उनकी एसेट्स दो करोड़ से ऊपर थे इंटरेस्टिंगली टेन कैंडिडेट्स इन दिन दर्स्ट फेज have declared their assets as zero a few independent candidates have declared very few assets they include pondraj k from tamil nadu who has declared assets worth just 320 rupees kartik gendla ji doke in maharashtra has declared assets worth just 500 rupees while the assets of surya muthu in tamil nadu are just 500 rupees bahut kam jeette hain north east mein humne dekha hai kuch ek kam paise wale bhi jeet jate hain lekin jaise maine bataya statistics agar hum dekhein पिछले जो लोकसभा चुनाव में थे आ, में सिर्फ 0.03 पॉइंट जीरो थ्री परसेंट चांसेज परसेंटेजेस थे जो ऐसे जिनके कम पैसे हैं वो लोग जीते हैं अकॉर्डिंग टू इलेक्शन वॉच 1618 हंड्रेड एंड एटीन कैंडिडेट्स हु आर इन फ्रे इन दर्स्ट फेज ऑफ दीज पोल्स हैव डिक्लेयर एन एवरेज एसेट ऑफ फोर करोड़ एंड फिफ्टी वन लैक इन द फर्स्ट फेज द हाइस्ट नंबर ऑफ रिच कैंडिडेट्स आर इन तमिलनाडु AIDMK has fielded 36 candidates who have declared an average asset of around 35 crore while 22 candidates fielded by DMK have declared average assets worth around 31 crore clearly the influence of money power seems visible everywhere in these lok sabha elections in delhi with manoj thakur himanshu shekhar for edit tv On to another one of our top stories six children died and dozens more were injured after a school bus overturned near a village in Haryana's Mahindragarh now in this case three people have been arrested including the school bus driver the principal and the school secretary and the driver was found to be speeding while driving drunk grief anger and despair at 13 year old vanshu's home in haryana's mahindragarh vanshu's grieving parents who lost their only son in a tragic bus accident in the village feel they have nothing to live for his grandfather who sent him off to school this morning is still in shock kal ki baat hai kal main beedi pe raha tha वो मेरे को बोल रहे थे दादाजी बीड़ी स्वास्थ्य के लिए हानिकारक ठीक बहुत कुछ उससे उम्मीद थी वंश इज अमंग दिक्स यंग स्टूडेंट्स किल बाई अ ड्रंक ड्राइवर हु रैम द प्राइवेट स्कूल बस इन टू अ ट्री सीरियसली इंजरिंग ओवर ट्वेंटी स्टूडेंट्स ऑन बोर्ड नॉट ओनली वॉज द ड्राइवर ड्रंक but the school bus was not fit to ferry students we have report that the driver was hurt the driver was hit by a car and a bus came to the report that he was hit by a car and he was hit by a car and the driver was hit by a car the vehicle documents are available he will be required to be proper checked and if you have any problems you can come out so that you can come out with us The driver abandoned the dying and injured children and fled the spot. This was a bus that was ferrying over 20 students uh, to a school, a private school here in Kanina, and the back portion of the bus rammed into a tree. And just looking at the bus, you can imagine the extent of the tragedy. The the insides of of the bus here, absolutely tragic. and absolutely devastating because all that is left you know here uh, these pieces of glass scattered on the floor this was this was a very tree that the bus rammed into during the accident and in fact the remains of the bus scattered all around here you know the water bottles of uh, kids uh, who, who who were injured who lost their lives here in fact uh, you know shoes also lying here school shoes वो सौ 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 की स्पीड कम से कम होगी सौ 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 की स्पीड जी आराम से जी और यहाँ पर जब आए तो बच्चे घायल पड़े थे बुरी तरीके से बुरी तरह चल रहा आए तो वह मात रही थी इधर स्कूल के स्टाफ आ गया इधर गांव ग्रामीण आ गए पदार भी बहुत आर पी गया है तो वहाँ से सब लोग आकर फिर बच्चों को उठाई फिर वो बच्चे आधे नीचे दब रहे थे इसी से उस साइड परी वो दब रहे उन्हें काले हालात गंभीर से उनकी दिस इज अ जी एल पब्लिक स्कूल वन ऑफ द फ्यू प्राइवेट स्कूल इन द डिस्ट्रिक्ट विच वॉज लॉकड अप soon after the incident 
with the principal, a school trust secretary and the bus driver arrested by the police. But there are many unanswered questions. Why was the school open on a government holiday? Why were there no checks on the vehicles carrying students to school? How was an irresponsible driver allowed to ferry the children? फिर लापरवाही ये है कि सुबह बच्चों को जो बंदा लेने जा रहा है मैं नहीं कहती कि आज नवरात्रे भी हैं और उसके बावजूद जो बच्चे को सुबह बसेस लेने जाती हैं वो अपने पॉइंट से लगभग पांच साढ़े पांच निकलती हैं तो इस ड्राइवर ने जैसा बताया जा रहा है कि शराब पी हुई थी तो इसने कितने बजे पी और पीने के बाद ही पचास जिंदगियां एक बस में बैठी हुई थी पचास घरों के बच्चे थे इनके the children who died have turned into statistics already. But for the families of Vansh, Ricky, Anshu, Yuvraj, Akshu and Satyam, and the others who have been scarred for life, this fateful day can never be forgotten. He was just 13 years old. He had his whole life ahead of him. Dreams, aspirations that have all been shattered. Who takes accountability for the tragic death of these six innocent children. In Mahindragar with camera person Xavier Thomas, Vedant for NDTV. Shifting focus now and a tiger was spotted nearly after 15 years in Baloda Bazar area of Chhattisgarh. The State Forest Department is monitoring the tiger's movement, but the tiger scare has also prompted imposition of prohibitory orders in seven villages of Chhattisgarh, which means in the election season, loud campaigning and loudspeakers have now been banned in the area. The Chhattisgarh Forest Department is monitoring the movements of a tiger that entered the forests of Baloda Bazar range over 20 days ago. This is the first time in 15-20 years that a tiger has been seen here. But this has meant movement is restricted for the seven villages adjacent to the Navpara sanctuary. In fact, the government has imposed prohibitory orders here banning large gatherings. <laughs> और हमारे समस्त जिला स्तरीय अधिकारी हम वहां पे गए थे वहां पे हम लोगों ने स्वीप कार्यक्रम भी किया था बार गांव में और साथ ही साथ बाघ की संरक्षण और बाघ को किसी प्रकार के डिस्टर्ब ना हो इसी एक समीक्षा बैठक भी हम लोगों ने करी वन विभाग की सारा अमला उसको ट्रैक कर रहा है कि वहां पे कैमरे सीसी कैमरा वगैरह लगे हैं उसके माध्यम से ताकि किसी प्रकार की क्षति बाघ को ना हो स्वतंत्र रूप से अपना जंगल में जहां भी उसको रहना है विचरण कर सके those most affected by this order are political parties which can't hold rallies or campaign on loud speakers but for conservationists who are looking at the declining tiger population in Chhattisgarh, this tiger must be protected at all costs. In 2018, there were nine tigers in the three tiger reserves of the state. There were five in the Achanakmar Tiger Reserve, one Udanti Sita Tiger Reserve and three Nindravati Tiger Reserve. But the 2022 report says the total number of tigers is down to seven. The number of leopards in tiger reserves of Chhattisgarh have also decreased 55% since 2018. Conservationists have written to the government demanding a state of emergency be declared. Experts say that while hunting has increased in the forest of Chhattisgarh, patrolling is not adequate due to a staff shortage. With the Pen Shukline Baloda Bazar and Uragdwari for NDTV. Now, Tesla chief and billionaire Elon Musk has confirmed that he's coming to India soon. Taking to X, Elon Musk said that he's looking forward to meeting Prime Minister Narendra Modi in India. Sakshi Bajaj takes us through details as to why this visit could be very significant. Tesla CEO Elon Musk on X declared that he's looking forward to visiting India and meeting Prime Minister Modi. Now, as per initial reports, this visit is likely as soon as this month end, really, and as per experts and reports, Musk may announce his India investment plans and even decide to open a factory in India. Now remember, this development comes nearly a year after Tesla indicated their desire to build a factory in India. 
Of course, experts believe this visit is really significant as far as two things are concerned. One, from the economic standpoint, really, where the focus will be on job creation, the boost in electric vehicle manufacturing in India, and the other from the environment front as well. Remember, Tesla is known for accelerating transition to sustainable energy, and increasingly the focus to meeting climate goals is essential for all nations. Now, in a move to ensure 100% voter turnout, the Election Commission in West Tripura Parliamentary Constituency has launched a pioneering initiative, Home Voting, where voting facilities reach the voters' doorstep for disabled and blind voters apart from elderly persons. The Election Commission introduced home voting facilities, enabling elderly voters aged 85 years and above as well as people with disabilities, those registered for the facilities, to cast their ballot from the convenience of their homes. Many have voted after years. Welcoming the initiative, voters commend the election administration and officers for facilitating their fundamental right to vote from the comfort of their homes. Meanwhile, Samarth, an NDTV's initiative in partnership with Hyundai, which is launched as a movement to create a change in mindset and spark societal change to create an opportunity for more inclusive and accessible world for people with disabilities. In Guwahati, Ratandeep Chaudhary for NDTV. Now time for us to wrap up the show, but before we leave, it's Eid al-Fitr today and videos and images are coming in of celebrations from across the country. In fact, two of Bollywood's biggest stars, Shah Rukh Khan and Salman Khan, were seen celebrating the occasion with their fans. Take a look and thanks for watching. The biggest carnival of democracy, India's general election. Prime Minister Modi makes a formidable bid for a hat trick. The opposition is trying to mount a united challenge. And the southern parties are standing their ground. As battle lines are drawn. Join us on an exciting journey on the road to 2024. Indian elections, a festival like no other. And NDTV covers elections like no other. When India votes, you can count on us. You say, celebrate the ordinary in your child. Celebrate their ordinariness or at least observe their ordinariness, because once they are seen by you for who they are, that's going to create a child with better self-worth and that unconsciously we are looking at the child that we want them to be or that we're trying to get them to be or the future that we see before for them and not who they are. To celebrate the ordinary seems so radical. And why is it so hard and why is it so important, especially today? Well, it's so important because it's the fact that we are all ordinary. And I think that is the human plague right now, our refusal to accept that we're ordinary because we're all searching to be significant on social media, in our, in our worlds today. We're all basically screaming, see me, see me, see me, aren't I important, aren't I significant? Guess what? No, we're no more important than the next being. We are no more extraordinary. We are all ordinary. 
if we accept that, here's why it's important to accept that, because then we can let go of the desire to control our children or ourselves to get external validation. And we can learn to settle into our own being and learn to be connected to our inner world, our inner sense of self, and be open. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching NDTV and this is India Decides. Rajasthan saw rallies by big guns today. Prime Minister Narendra Modi, who was in Karoli Dholpur, made a big announcement that the exam mafia of Rajasthan will soon be behind bars and that it is the opposition party, the Congress party, that let this industry thrive. Dholpur, a town bordering Madhya Pradesh, Uttar Pradesh and Rajasthan, is known for the family that former Chief Minister of Rajasthan, Basuntra Raji, was wedded to. Karoli is known for its spiritual and religious importance. Speaking here, the Prime Minister accused the Congress party of betraying the aspirations of youth and also farmers. Mr. Modi was born to work and not to relax, that's what he said. Just a few miles away, Congress leader Rahul Gandhi too held rallies in Bikaner and Jodhpur. Now, both are reserved constituencies and Jodhpur is a tr thriving trade center, the second most important city in Rajasthan also with a military base. Here, Rahul Gandhi said the Agnivir scheme should be scrapped and that Lok Sabha 2024 was going to be an election of the backward people, Dalit its tribals and poor general class. Now, in the desert state of Rajasthan that has voted overwhelmingly for the BJP in the last two Lok Sabha elections, will the Congress party's focus on unemployment and representation strike a chord with voters? Will the BJP get the delicate balancing act of uh, Jat, Gurja, Rajput, Dalit outreach right and let the Modi factor um, do the magic? That's what we will try and understand tonight. But first, this report. <laughs> Temperatures on the rise in Rajasthan. With elections just a week away, it is Operation Desert Storm as the Congress and BJP double up on the campaign trail. The Prime Minister in Dholpur Karoli touching an emotive issue, drinking water that strikes a chord but is especially significant for Eastern Rajasthan that has been waiting for the Eastern Rajasthan Canal. Project for years that will supply water to 13 districts. Rajasthan mein पानी के संकट को बड़ा बनाने वाली कांग्रेस ही है केंद्र सरकार ने हर घर पानी पहुंचाने के लिए जल जीवन मिशन शुरू किया उसमें भी कांग्रेस ने भ्रष्टाचार किया आने वाले समय में राजस्थान के घर घर पानी पहुंचेगा ये मोदी की गारंटी है the Prime Minister will again hit the desert trail on Saturday campaigning in Barmer on the west and Dosa in the east. Rahul Gandhi, who was also in Falodi, spoke about the Congress's outreach to farmers and women voters. ये सिर्फ चाहते हैं कि पिछड़े वर्ग के मुद्दे किसानों के वर्ग मुद्दे गरीबों के मुद्दे नेशनल और रीजनल मीडिया पे ना आए राजस्थान इज इन फॉर अ लार्जली बाइपोलर कॉन्टेस्ट एंड द बीजेपी इज होपिंग टू स्कोर 25 आउट ऑफ 25 फॉर द टाइम इवन एज द कांग्रेस होप्स फॉर अ चेंज टू ओपन इट्स अकाउंट इन राजस्थान इन लोकसभा 2024 विद हर्षा कुमारी सिंह we have Charu Pragya from the BJP, Shipra Mathur, a senior journalist, and also Swarnim Chaturvedi joining us from the Congress Party. Um, uh, Charu, uh, to you first, in the last few days, we have seen uh, some Jat Netas, particularly from the BJP, move to the Congress. We've seen Rahul Kaswan, we've seen Vijendra Chaudhary. There has also been a farmer's protest. Do you see all of this affecting the prospects of your party in Rajasthan? Asudha, very good evening to you. And no, absolutely not. See, uh, the party from which 
a political leader decides to contest is based on a lot of reasons. And ours is a party which is uh, intent on one thing and one thing alone, and that is nation first. Ours is also the world's largest political party. So it's but obvious that many a times some seats could be shuffled because uh, that's the norm. That's how it works. So in spite of that, if someone wants to move to another political party, that is entirely their own prerogative. And we are not going to dignify that or indignify it also. So with any kind of a negative comment. That being said, Bharti Janta Party wins every single election on one thing, and that is our report card. The fact that we have worked round the clock over the last 10 years for the welfare of the people of India in every nook and corner of this country, not merely the state of Rajasthan, but even far-flung places which used to be neglected for the longest time, like the Northeast, like Jammu and Kashmir. And that is one reason why Prime Minister Modi's vision gets the blessings of the people. Okay. This election is going to be exactly the same. We are okay. going two people with a vision and a report card both. Okay, so it's a report card of the BJP that will matter and not the movement of a few netas. That's what Charu says. Uh, uh, Swanim, you know, despite losing elections to the Congress in December 2018, and you know, uh, that also, thus being the opposition, the BJP managed to win 2019 around 24 seats in your in your state. In fact, it swept, and the, the other seat, in fact, went to RLP. Now, this time, BJP is, is the ruling party in the state and also in the centre. So despite all this, why do you think Rajasthan will vote differently this time? Yeah, actually, uh, BJP uh, won all the 25 seats in the previous two elections, but now in these elections, they will lose very badly. We are going to win more seats than BJP because there are many uh, promises that are unfulfilled, uh, promises made by the prime minister himself. So uh, we, uh, the people, they uh, just wanted to know what is your report card, what you did for us. But instead of uh, putting forth this uh, report card, Prime Minister just uh, uh, criticized Congress and Congress leaders in his rally. And uh, never told, uh, I think he didn't uh, allow anybody to speak even uh, for a second about the achievements of the BJP government. So what he did just to criticize the Congress, Congress leaders, it, uh, and... Uh, in the other rally, uh, which uh, Rahul Gandhi ji attended, the two rallies Rahul Gandhi ji attended, he, uh, he just explained or manifesto, he put forth the vision of the Congress party. So there is a stark difference between the two leaders. So people wanted to know what BJP has done or what will they do for the Rajasthan. The, the uh, reason where PM addressed the rally right. is uh, Eastern Rajasthan. And people wanted to know why they stalled a ERCP project for the five years. So this is the big issue. And this is, uh, uh, on these issues, people will vote against the BJP. Right. Harsha, let me also get my colleague Harsha in here. She's been tracking Rajasthan for many years. Uh, the state, Harsha, has 25 parliamentary constituencies. The polling is going to be held in two phases, 19th of April, 26th of uh, April. Can you tell us the significance of the seats of Karoli, Dholpur, that the PM addressed rallies in today, and also Bikaner and Jodhpur, where Rahul Gandhi was? Also, the PM is likely to go to Dhosa and Barmer uh, tomorrow. Tell us, uh, you know, the symbolic and also the political importance of, of these seats. Well, you know, Karoli Dholpur is very, very important because it's when you enter Rajasthan from the east, then that's the first district that you go into. Now, Karoli Dholpur, remember, Vasundhra Raje is also the former Maharani of the uh, royal family of Dholpur. And Dholpur has really been, in some senses, um, you know, where the, that big promise of the Eastern Rajasthan Canal project has um, been a part of the political narrative, not just in the assembly elections, but also now. Now, I'm here in Jodhpur, Gajinder Singh Shekhawat's constituency, and I'm going to be tracking him tomorrow. So, in fact, GSS, as he is fondly called here, is someone who is believed to have actually put the Eastern Rajasthan Canal project back on track. Uh, you know, as soon as the government changed, he got the MOU signed between um, uh, Madhya Pradesh and Rajasthan, and they're moving ahead with the draft of the Eastern Rajasthan Canal project. Very important uh, for those 13 districts of Eastern Rajasthan. Today, uh, one of those districts was Dholpur Karoli, where the PM was. So, of course, the impact is not just going to be Dholpur Karoli, but Bharatpur and uh, Savai Madhapur and, um, you know, Dosa, all those areas get impacted when the PM is in one um, particular constituency. So water, if you remember, the, you know, I think people picked up a lot of things that the PM said, but I immediately listened into the fact that he talked about the Eastern Rajasthan Con Canal Project and he talked about the Jal Jeevan Mission. Yeah. So this has definitely been part of the political narrative in Rajasthan. The PM touched upon that. Now, if you look at Bikaner, 
uh, you know Rahul Gandhi in Jodhpur uh, and uh, you know uh, Falodi and Bikaner uh, important they are western outposts important uh, uh, constituencies uh, Arjun Ram Meghwal is fighting from there uh, and like we're saying it's Operation Desert Storm because tomorrow he's going to be in Barmer now Barmer is really again if you look at Bikaner it's in the central part of the western side so it impacts uh, seats uh, Jodhpur, Barmer, Jaisalmer all those areas get impacted by Bikaner and Ganganagar and Hanmangar also. Uh, now tomorrow he's going to be in Barmer and I was talking about Operation Desert St uh, Storm Vasudha because uh, Ravindra Bharti is really, uh, you yes. know, making it difficult for both the Congress on the, and the BJP. He's got a huge social media following. He's a much talked about candidate. And when yeah. I told some of my family members, I'm going here and there, they said, hey, you're not going to Barmer, you better go to Barmer. So I think now after Jodhpur, I'm going to be going to Barmer to track exactly what's happening there. So yeah. that's the kind of seats which are creating a buzz in this election. Yes. And of course, Dosa, very important because, you know, the Congress does stand a chance in Dosa. Yeah. Um, they are hoping that, you know, that they've got a candidate who's won this election with over one lakh votes so dosa is somewhere the congress is hoping they're going to open their account with these two three seats and i think dosa is one of them so yes. that's the importance of these seats yes uh, thank you harsha uh, also stay with us uh, uh, you know shipra uh, you know this point that harsha made you know about pani and water and i was listening to the prime minister's speech today and he said that he comes from gujarat he knows what short water shortage means and you know this whole aspect of you know this factor of ravindra bharti and also some other candidates like the cpm candidate that i've been following amra ram how do you you think you know these factors or these uh, Mr. Bharti or Mr. Amraram? How, how do you think these are fact? These factors could be influencing a bipolar contest like uh, what we see in Rajasthan every time, and also the fact that Congress has extended support to the Bharat Adivasi Party in Panswara Dungarpur. Do you see some of these aspects making a dent in in the, in the mainstream party's votes, or do you uh, do you see this influencing the larger uh, voter uh, uh, narrative or voter results? So, Vasudha, uh, let's talk about the Western part, which uh, Harsha mentioned, because this has become a very interesting seat, in fact, because the whole uh, uh, star campaigners of BJP uh, would be flocking there in the in the uh, Barbade Jaisalmer seat as well. And in the last uh, Vidhan Sabha uh, election also, if you see that this uh, the, the, there was just one seat which was grabbed by uh, Congress party, still, this is a very interesting seat and very, uh, I think, challenging seat for uh, BJP because of the tri uh, triangular uh, fight which we are perceiving uh, as of now um, uh, because uh, because of Ravindra Bhatti as an independent candidate and he was denied ticket from BJP uh, you know right since his uh, uh, you know stint in um, uh, I think student uh, elections in uh, in Jodhpur University he didn't get a BBP ticket then he didn't get uh, BJP ticket in Vidhan Sabha and then this time also he was in the fray though it was the speculation that he might be supporting you know BJP uh, in fact, so it is going to be a triangular fight. That's that's why there is a tension uh, in both the parties, both big parties here in Barmer. Right. Uh, uh, right. Um, uh, if if you see the the, uh, the speech of uh, Prime Minister, I I would like to highlight two uh, important things in his speech from the perspective of Rajasthan Vasudha. Uh, one was of course, uh, which Harsha also mentioned. What one was water issue. Water is, is, uh, issue is re really very uh, important for Rajasthan. And this this aspect of ERCP, which, which is being uh, an, an, uh, implemented in Rajasthan, it covers nine Lok Sabha seats in Rajasthan. So this is this issue, which was again highlighted by uh, Prime Minister Modi, is also important. And also he, I think very interestingly this time in his speech, I, I can see that he highlighted the aspect of uh, livestock population also. Right. Vaccine to a livestock. Let, let, me, let me get in Charu here. Charu, uh, yeah. you know, Rahul Gandhi today talked a lot about Agniveer scheme and, you know, in jo Jodhpur, there's also a military base and Rajasthan is also known to send a lot of youngsters to the to the army and Prime Minister Narendra Modi, in fact, focused on welfare politics. He, in fact, accused the Congress of, of cheating students. He talked about exam mafia today. Uh, I know that you, you belong to a political party, but which political pitch do you think will find resonance among voters? Because both of them are really important. Both of them are really important, Vasudha, but uh, here what remains to be seen is that which political party delivers on its promises, which political party actually brings forward the issues of the people and keeps it above personal welfare. In the last five years, we've seen the state of 
Rajasthan deteriorating every single day. Whether it was the situation of students, the rising number of suicide cases, unfortunately, we saw the way social security has taken a hit, women's security became an issue. The uh, number of violence against women cases went up to such an extent that even Rajasthan ministers, Congress ministers have been worried about it and uh, for expressing that uh, sentiment, they have been kicked out of the cabinet. So I think people are not going to forget all of that. Also, I think uh, Prime Minister Modi's uh, one huge uh, winnability factor always is that he has his ear to the ground. He understands what the people need. So when we talk of our welfare schemes, when we prioritize issues like Har Ghar Jal, when we make sure that uh, the welfare given to the families of uh, our armed personnel is uh, paramount and it is not secondary to any. I think that is why people support him all around and Congress has made its promises and they have already been rejected by the people okay. as shortly as four months ago. Right. Swanim, would you like to respond to that? Also, how is your party going to handle not just the challenge of infighting, we all saw what happened with Mr. Gerloth and Mr. Pilot last time, but also of defections. Just yesterday, we saw the treasurer, Sitara Magarwal, move to BJP. How is your party going to handle the challenge of defections? Actually, BJP uh, have to has a challenge to handle the uh, defections because uh, uh, a sitting MP uh, B, uh, of BJP joined Congress party and is uh, he is contesting uh, on the Congress ticket, Mr. Rahul Kaswa. He is very popular person and he will uh, surely he is going to win. So BJP has some challenges, uh, but the issue main issue in Rajasthan is that why uh, uh, BJP waited for five years to. Uh, uh, for the ERCP to be made uh, a national project, why PM not uh, fulfilled his promises uh, to provide a drinking water to 13 districts? Why uh, special status has not been given to Rajasthan in the Jal Jeevan mission? Even when the Jal Shakti Mantri is from Rajasthan, uh, the, uh, actually PM promised that uh, the, uh, the public welfare scheme that Congress government started will not be stopped now. Uh, they have already been uh, stabbed and uh, stopped. So people are not getting uh, free treatment up to 25 lakhs. So people are asking why uh, Prime Minister uh, has promi uh, promised and not fulfilled these promises. So these are the main issues and core issues. There is no infighting. There is no factionalism in Congress. We are right. fighting uh, <laughs> unitedly and we, will, we are going to win uh, this election because there are many promises that Prime Minister made three uh, months ago right. and they are not fulfilled. Even the pre uh, price, uh, petrol uh, prices of petrol diesel have not been uh, reduced. So right. oh, how can we believe that Prime Minister had uh, made, and uh, if Prime Minister makes the promises and he doesn't fulfill them? So right. we all know that they are not promises, they are just, just the jumlas. So that, that's an important point. Harsha, you know, you interviewed Sachin Pilot a few days ago. Tell us, what, what do these elections mean for two important individuals, Ashok Kehloth and Vasundra Rajay? You know, both the sons are contesting. And Vasundra Rajay has also, you know, she's no longer the chief minister, or for that matter, you know, she's not part of the mainstream leadership of uh, BJP in Rajasthan. What do these elections mean for these two leaders and for the state that is, uh, you know, that does not have Vasundra Rajay, you know, in, in one of those, uh, uh, you know, uh, pivot positions right now? Well, I think I'll answer the last question first, Vasudha. So definitely for the new leadership in Rajasthan, there's an entirely new leadership, absolutely first-timers, uh, you know, who've, who are in government now. So for them, it's really a litmus test. It's a chance for them to prove uh, that, you know, they can uh, make Rajasthan work for the BJP. Now, will they be able to get 25 out of 25? Uh, you know, that really is the benchmark because in the past two elections, the BJP has won and each and every seat and the Congress has not managed to open its account. For Ashok Gehloth, it's the second time that his son uh, Vaibhav is fighting this election. Uh, last time he was pitted against uh, Gajendra Singh Shekhawat. He lost by a margin of about 4 lakh votes. This time we've been told extensive surveys were been done and uh, Webhav is now fighting from Jalor, which is adjacent to Jodhpur. So as much of a prestige battle for Ashok Gehloth as it is uh, for Webhav, because this is the second time around, it's as much Ashok Gehloth's election as it is his son's election. Uh, Vasundra Rajay, in fact, not seen that active on the political landscape of Rajasthan. And when you go into nooks and crannies, into villages, people do talk about her. But she's not such a visible face in the party's campaign. In fact, uh, she's really uh, uh, fielding from afar, I could say. And she's concentrating more on her son's constituency, which is, um, uh, you know, uh, uh, Jhalawar. But for Sachin Pilot, I think somewhere, you know, Vasundra, uh, Vasudha, I beg your pardon, I was traveling with him. And I definitely got the sense 
that this election matters more for him than it did for the, than the assembly election did. The mm. assembly election was fought on Ashok Gehlot's welfare plank. After all, he was the chief minister. Now, Sachin is also in the forefront. He's uh, one of the front batsmen for the Congress. And somewhere, I think he's querying the pitch for 2028 because right. that's when it'll be his chance uh, to lead the election. So I think he's definitely, uh, you know, preparing ground for the next five years for his own political career. Right. Uh, Shipra Mathur, uh, do you think that the BJP is a little worried about, you know, uh, communities, different communities, be it the Jats or for that matter, uh, Dalits or even Rajputs? Because we see, we, we hear of these stories and speculations of Rajputs being angry. But, you know, uh, at the end of the day, it's, it's a Modi factor that matters. How would you assess the campaigns of both parties right now, specifically for Rajasthan? Because here is Rahul Gandhi talking a lot about representation in every state, Agniveer specifically in Rajasthan and here is the BJP that's focusing on its welfare politics and also you know, the, the, the factor of Narendra Modi and the credibility and popularity that the PM demands. Uh, see, the caste factor, which uh, is not uh, in, in the conversation of uh, BJP leaders especially because they've already uh, said that there are four castes, you know, they have, uh, they have underlined this fact again and again that you know, women and farmers and youth and women these are four castes which they are focusing on. So they are apparently not talking about the caste uh, per se. But as far as the, uh, you know, uh, appeasing or targeting the, uh, the, the pop different uh, set of population, especially if you if you ask the, uh, about the uh, BAP factor also, tribal party factor also, that is one seat, Baswada and Dungarpur seat, which is uh, where, where the tribal factor is so important that the Congress leader, uh, uh, you know, he joined BJP uh, uh, for, for this reason only, uh, that the major chunk of tribal population uh, uh, would uh, come along uh, with the BJP. So that is one part. And also, Vasudha, I would like to highlight that how the women especially have been in the focus of all the campaigns uh, of uh, Congress party also, for one reason, that BJP has given uh, tickets to five uh, candidates this time in this election, and Congress has allocated three uh, seats to women candidates in this election. Right. So total nine uh, nine women in the fray. And uh, if you, if you uh, look at the campaigning, also they are they are apparently saying that you know what, what are the benefits which will be given to the women, especially for that for the reason that in Vidhan Sabha elections also in Lok Sabha elections. So if you if you see the track record of uh, you know right. past two elections, three elections, women voters. Have have shown their uh, presence in a in a in a very a very strong way in Lok Sabha elections also, right. and they they have asserted themselves. So right. I think both the parties are uh, are very categorically talking about the benefits which which. Okay, has last to be given last to word from the political Nagar. spokesperson here, Charu. There's a lot of talk in Delhi about this Nagar seat, uh, Nagar seat with with Hanuman Beniwal and Jyoti Mirda, and also the Shekhawati region where your party performed very well last time, Churu Sikar and Junjunu. How do you expect the contest to play out this time? I would want you to respond to that and also, uh, Mr. Swarnip. Asuda, we are going to win every single seat in the state of Rajasthan. And I say that with a lot of conviction. And I say that based on our uh, past track record and our vision for the future. Congress is a party that is so confused that can't even get its manifesto together. The manifesto itself is vague and I have spent days asking every spokesperson I run into to explain what anti-people laws are and which ones they are repealing. They have no answer. So it's uh, not just uh, lacking attention to detail, it is also lacking attention to any kind of vision for the future. And that is one reason why we are going to sweep Every single seat. Apki baar char super. Okay, uh, last word. Uh, Swarnim, uh, you know, Shikhavati region saw the BJP win with huge margins. Why are you expecting your party to make uh, strides there? Okay, BJP has already uh, uh, lost its credibility. It was evident even in the current, current for assembly election. They violated court, uh, model code of conduct, made minister their candidate, but uh, he lost. So uh, now I can assure you, all the three uh, central ministers will lose. Uh, the uh, Lok Sabha speaker is going to lose. And even uh, uh, what uh, BJP spokesperson is uh, saying is that uh, they have read our manifesto. But uh, can they tell us where is BJP's manifesto? 
So that's expected in the coming days. I'm running out of time. Thank you all of you for joining me on this broadcast and discussing Rajasthan. Eyeing a repeat of the electoral performance of 2019, BJP clearly is looking to win all 25 seats of uh, Lok, Sabha, like, Lok Sabha polls in Rajasthan, even as the Congress hopes to cause a dent in uh, BJP's plans. Both Prime Minister Narendra Modi and Rahul Gandhi were in Rajasthan today making pitches for their respective parties. Uh, moving on to news from the south of India, we turn our focus to the constituency of Viridhanagar, where the BJP is hoping to draw on the star power of actor-turned-politician Radhika Sarat Kumar to take on Congress veteran and incumbent MP Manikam Thakur. He is here as a report. <laughs> popular actor and a powerful name in television production, Radhika is the BJP's face for the Virudhunagar Lok Sabha seat. Her husband, Sharat Kumar, is one of Tamil cinema's top stars and a former Rajya Sabha MP. And together, their aim is to wrestle out the Virudhunagar seat. But this man, the incumbent Congress MP, Manikam Tagore, who's backed by the formidable DMK Congress left alliance with other smaller parties. Radhika and Sharat Kumar are the star and local political appeal for the BJP in a state which has had an eternal bond between film stars and politics. You will be very surprised. I think this is going to throw up a lot of surprises. When I uh, entered the political fray, in the sense, to get involved in politics is to 1996. The same reaction we feel now that people definitely want a change and the change is going to be for the BJP. <laughs> Grassroot political equations and caste arithmetic like anywhere else play a decisive role in a constituency like Virudhunagar. The two Dravidian parties with their tested alliances have been masters at that grassroot management and breaking through is a formidable challenge for a third force. The Congress is riding on DMK power in Tamil Nadu and a carefully nurtured alliance of parties which have consistently sided with the DMK after the demise of AIA DMK Supremo J. Jayalalitha. Manikam Tagore's biggest strength is that alliance that brings with it the grassroots arithmetic to get past the post. He won this seat in 2009 with a 40% vote share as a DMK ally but came fourth with just 3% vote in 2014 when the Congress and DMK fought separately in one of their worst elections. The AI DMK won the seat in that election. But in 2019, Tagore was back on poll as a DMK ally with a 43% vote. This history just reiterates the importance of the Congress-DMK alliance, especially for the former. After 4th of July, June, they will all be there, shops will be closed and we will not, they will not have, we will have the 40 MPs of the India Alliance together in the parliament and we will all stand together as India Alliance. The bigger threat to him, according to Tagore, is this man, Vijay Prabhakar, son of DMDK founder and late actor Vijay Kant. These parts are a DMDK region of influence and Vijay is banking on a sympathy factor as his campaign is about keeping his father's legacy alive. The alliance with the AIA DMK is a formidable one and he is threatening to have a sting in the tail. We have a quite uh, good uh, vote bank here and even ADMK has a good quite vote bank here. So according to our tactics, uh, I think uh, we are stronger to compare to those two. And to be honest, the competition will be between uh, Mr. Manikam Thakur and myself, I think, yeah. The battle for Virudhanagar is one for survival of the DMDK. One to hold on to seats, to keep the numbers to remain a relevant opposition nationally for the Congress. And one that could mean a march into new territory for the BJP. All three together make Virudhanagar as interesting a contest as any. In Virudhanagar, Veera Raghav for NDTV. That's all we have for you. Time for a short break. More news and updates on the other side. Hello, Moto. Motorola, India's best 5G smartphone brand. Present. 
debate has many facets, perhaps no one right answer. Left, right and centre, conversations that get to the core of the debate. वैसे अभी की डेट में आई एम श्योर वी हैव टन्स एंड टन्स ऑफ गैजेट्स यहाँ पे एटलीस्ट हमारे पास में मोबाइल फ़ोन तो है ही एंड मोबाइल फ़ोन से काफ़ी लोग जो हैं वो कंटेंट क्रिएट भी कर रहे हैं स्पेशली फॉर इंस्टाग्राम और यूट्यूब यू वुड सी मैनी पीपल रिकॉर्डिंग देयर वीडियोस डूइंग सम कॉमेंट्री या वो अपने व्लॉग्स रिकॉर्ड करते हैं एंड फॉर दोज माइक्रोफोन इज़ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट मतलब मोबाइल फ़ोन का कैमरा है तो आपको सब कुछ अच्छे से रिकॉर्ड तो हो जाएगा बट the audio is also very important now while we have multiple different kinds of microphones aap sab content creators ko ek cheez ka aur dhyan rakhna chahiye which is the pickup pattern of a particular microphone because alag alag types ke microphone milte hain for all different kinds of usage ek hota hai cardioid microphone jahan pe the front of the mic is where it's most sensitive aur ye back aur sides ko block kar deta hai so that agar aap kahin shor wale area mein hain the mic still gonna focus on what you are saying jo aapke aas paas ka shor hai wo bahut kam capture hoga agar hum ek step aur aage jayenge to what we have is a microphone with a pickup pattern of super cardioid jahan pe एकदम नैरो पिकअप पैटर्न बन जाता है सो दैट आपकी जो आवाज है योर वॉइस ओवर योर कॉमेंट्री यू नो कुड बी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट इन टर्म्स ऑफ रिकॉर्डिंग पॉडकास्ट जहां पे जो आप बोलते हैं वो एकदम प्रिसाइजली कैप्चर होता है लेकिन अगर आसपास कुछ शोर शराबा है वो एकदम अट्यूनेट हो जाता है और आपको कोई ज्यादा आवाज नहीं आती है बट देन समाइम्स एज कॉन्टेंट क्रिएटर्स वी वुड वॉन्ट टू कैप्चर दीज एम्बियंट साउंड हमको बताना होता है कि आसपास क्या हलचल है How exactly is the environment? और उसके लिए you... This is NDTV, and you're watching NDTV 24/7. Hello, Moto. Good evening. Welcome to Left, Right, and Center. I'm Vishnu Shom. On the program tonight, the former Congress spokesperson Rohan Gupta has joined the BJP today, marking the defection of yet another visible opposition face to the ruling party this election season. He joins us on the program in a few moments. Rohan, along with some other leaders, joined the BJP in the presence of Union Minister Hardeep Puri, heading out at the Congress, a party he's been associated with for nearly 15 years. He said it's become directionless and was full of contradictions. leading to a loss of credibility we did reach out to the congress to offer their comment join us on this program they declined also on the show we have two years to save the world a dire warning by the un climate chief who says that we still have a chance to make greenhouse gas emissions tumble simon steel's dire warning in london is this he says and i quote i'll be candid blame shifting is not a strategy sidelining climate isn't a solution to a crisis that will decimate every G20 economy and has already started to hurt but first uh, our big guest this evening the former congress spokesperson rohan gupta has joined the bharatiya janata party ahead of the uh, forthcoming lok sabha elections he follows gorav uh, uh, vallabh gupta an ex key communications aide to the congress president uh, thanks very much uh, for being with us rohan now you say the uh, congress party Rohan has lost direction and is full of contradictions what are those contradictions in your opinion so vishnu if you see the way the communication department is handled for last 2 years from the gentleman i i would not like to name from the time he has been made the in charge of communication department there are contradiction on all the points you know whether it is about uh, not opposing the insult of sanatan obviously it is about the sentiment of the country you cannot ignore any insult done by your allies and you have to counter that if you are a national party congress is not a regional party you have to ensure your responsibilities and should have countered that all of us all the spokesperson strongly represented on this cause but we were not heard that is point number 1 point number 2 they have formed the alliance in name of the country 
and in the same alliance you have mr kejriwal whom the party has accused of being with khalistani terrorists whom the party has accused of corruption whom the party press no, press conferences have been organized accusing him in the excise scandal and then you have to protect him by organizing the rally don't you feel that is a contradiction i am talking about evm two elections are won by congress party through evm you are questioning evm yesterday mr sam pitroda he he told that the middle class will have to pay additional taxes and you are talking about the price rise you don't you feel that is the contradiction the industrialists you know the men the industrialists whom the people attack from delhi sitting here in aicc the same industrialists signs mou in rajasthan and telangana don't you feel that is a contradiction see we should you to understand we are the people who are facing people on ground we are people representing the party on media whatever feedback we get if that is not heard by the party and is left to one person who is completely leftist who has ensured the narrative of parties completely not heard of don't you feel that is painful see as a party soldier when till the time i was there in party for 15 years i have never questioned that on public forum whatever way we felt good bad yes it was our responsibility to ensure that party stand whether i like it or not i represent it but you know there is a limit to it you know beyond a point you cannot face people with the same narrative you are killing the party which was called the centrist party you have totally converted that party into leftist party you are supporting cpi which congress party has opposed for 60 years please understand that if congress party was in power for 60 years that is because of the ideology of nationalism and being center you but converted you drop- party as a leftist you are not in the center you are against you are going your policies are against rashtravad nationalism why why the situation of congress party is because of these decisions no so i understand but you know you use the word rohan and rohan, rohan, rohan one, one and a half years it has gone to the extreme level rohan one second but ideologically when did you you use that word just now ideologically when did you start to realize that you stood eye to eye with what the bjp stands for because all this time you've always stood entirely for the congress at what stage did you realize that you know you stood with them see i'll tell you uh, uh, ideologically the way this decline has started from the appointment of this gentleman as a communication in charge i have been in with the party for last 15 years I have represented party on various roles but it was never so bad you know we, we understand like if you re- remember famous 2017 campaign where mr rahul gandhi ensured in the minds of people are purely positive but after that 2018 rajasthan i was the media in charge we ensured that the victory of the party 2019 i was the national uh, after the elections i was made national chairman of social media for 3 years during the covid time we ensured that the narrative was not bad but after 2022 you you mark all the decisions where there are blunders by parties communication being in terms of setting narrative this is to- totally against the sentiment of the country you cannot have you know narrative which is totally against the country how can we face that on ground ro not attending the ram temple consecration the congress felt um, that this was a political event that the bjp was taking advantage of it uh, but you now say that you have a problem with them not going is that one of the reasons why you quit see i'll i'll tell you one thing vishnu see maybe parties at that level if they were thinking that it was a political event and all why can't congress party's leader go next day just stand in the queue and do the darshan why can't they do that don't you feel that was possible see it is about the sentiment when you are saying no you are sending strong message to the people that we, once you are saying that okay we respect the verdict of supreme court right on the other hand you are not going to the event then what message you are going going to give so you know you cannot have this kind of narrative the people of this country are very smart see you are raising the voice when something happens against particular community i'll give you an example of mr danish of up right something was spoken against him uh, rahul gandhi ji hugged him same time this another thing happened not no reaction so you cannot have this kind of approach you are a national party you should not forget that you are not a regional party you cannot take people's narrative for granted you have to be sensitive towards the people's call to you people yeah. expect a lot from opposition party and as a spokesperson we have to face that we are people who go on ground we get feedback of people we communicate it to party it has to be bottom top it cannot be top bottom the communication of the party if it is top bottom you are not touching the grounds you are against the public sentiment 
that is the whole issue. Rohan, I get it. One final question. Recently, another former Congress uh, spokesperson, Gaurav Vallabh, joined the BJP. Is your decision absolutely independent of his? Absolutely independent. See, I'll tell you, Vishnu, we, the Congress spokesperson, it's not about only Gaurav or me. There are all of them. When we talk off record, I'm telling you, this is the sentiment of each and every spokesperson. And Vishnu, this is not difficult to understand. As a citizen of the country, the people ask, this is the feedback we get from ground. It's not about me or it's not about Gaurav or it's not about anybody else. This is something which is written on the wall. Why can't they read it? This is the basic question. Something which is written on the wall, why can't they read it? And there is a limit to which, uh, Vishnu, we can defend it, right? We are also uh, people who believe in God. I am the pure Sanatani. Then obviously it feels bad. I am not telling today because I am joining BJP. This pain was there. But as a soldier of the party, I never represented in public forum. I mean, this pain is not of me. Maybe all the Congress spokesperson, maybe all Congress workers. I have maybe today I have left the party. I have 15 years of hard work. Party gave me opportunity. I gave my work with the full of the honesty. But maybe by going down, going out of it, at least I'm putting voice of people in, in public okay. forum. You cannot run party like this. You cannot ignore public sentiment. You cannot ignore the, the, the voice of the workers. This is what is going to happen if you are going to do that. There is no surprise why we are talking that the situation of Congress has happened. This is a grand old party where people have voted for you for 60 years and you are not understanding the sentiment of the ground. That is something strongly wrong. All right. Well, uh... You know, thanks very much, Rohan, uh, for joining us, expressing yourself over there. We did try and reach out to the Congress to react to, uh, to Rohan, but they've chosen not to. Good luck with your next political innings, Rohan. Thanks very much for being with us on the program tonight. Next up, we have two years to save the world. That's a dire warning by the UN climate chief, who says we still have a chance to make greenhouse gas emissions tumble. Simon Steele's dire warning in London is this. He says, I'll be candid, blame shifting is not a strategy. Listen in to what he said. Some of you may think the title of today's event is overly dramatic, melodramatic even. So let me start by explaining why the next two years are so essential in saving the planet. First, we know the stakes. You've heard me talk about um, time and time again the shattering heat um, and massive damage that climate change is causing to our economies and how there is no room for half measures. Let's take all of that as a given. Second, we are at the start of a race which will determine the biggest winners in a new clean energy economy. Well, joining us now, Dr. Aruna Vaghosh. Uh, we're also joined by uh, Abhilash Mohanty, both climate uh, experts. Thank you both very much for being with us. Dr. Ghosh, let me come to you first. Um, what's really made headlines from the UN um, you know, climate change expert chief over there is that two-year period, that we have to start fixing things in two years or it could be catastrophic. Why the, the number of two years? Uh, why is that imperative? Vishnu, uh, we are breaching uh, every month at least one percentage point or more of the remaining global carbon space. So within 100 months, the remaining global carbon space that keeps us within 1.5 C is gonna get breached. But what we are I seeing already is the kind of extreme weather events that are occurring. In India, three quarters of our districts and our hotspots are extreme climate events. Uh, we see that 11% uh, uh, of our tehsils, the sub-district administration, are now seeing a reduction in their precipitation. These are all signs that the climate crisis is very much upon us. Why the next two years? It's because we've got to peak the emissions and start bending the curve down, similar to the pandemic. You can't let the emissions keep going up. You need to peak it, plateau it, and then pull the curve down. And that's why it is now a, the, the acuteness of the crisis is coming up against the chronic nature of the climate challenge that we all face. Abhinash, where exactly are we from a global standpoint? Because this is a global story in terms of capping emissions. It, I mean, it just seems unrealistic to expect this to take place in the next two years, let, let alone let alone it actually coming down. Abhinash, can you hear me? 
Sorry, Vishnu, I don't think I can hear you. All right, we'll come back to him in a moment. Would you like to take that, uh, Dr. Ghosh? Yes, I mean, we've already, in a way, breached uh, the 1.5C uh, target. And so what we are now looking at is perhaps 1.6 Celsius above uh, <clears throat> pre-industrial levels. So when we look at these global average averages, we forget that in, sub, in tropical regions such as India, the actual increases in average surface, average surface temperatures are even higher. Uh, if you combine heat combined with humidity, say our coastal cities, there we are seeing four or five degrees above normal. So this will have an impact on human health. It'll have an impact on agricultural productivity. It'll have an impact on the, on the integrity of our infrastructure. So this is why it is so critical. Now, the question is, is, is it possible to start pulling the curve down? We've got to connect the global climate action to local action. And one way to do this is actually combining action on clean air with action on climate change. Sure. Yesterday, Simon Steele made the statement. Today, the Our Common Air Commission has argued that combining clean air action with climate action, with public health, with the economy, actually delivers more than 30 times the return on investment compared to each dollar invested. Yeah. So how do we get the World Bank, which is going to meet for its uh, spring meetings next, uh, next week, to start thinking about investing in clean energy infrastructure, clean transportation infrastructure, clean air investments, that then yield the climate benefits. The citizens will then begin to see the, the return on that investment and the change in their lifestyles much sooner than getting to net zero. That's the connection we need to make between the local action, local delivery, and the global change that we all seek. Uh, Avinash, just a couple of days back, there was this very important verdict in the Supreme Court which said that we have a right uh, to, to clean air uh, and we have a right against climate change as well. Uh, how important um, is it that we start talking about clean air and climate change in the same breath? Good evening, Vishnu. And uh, so, first of all, we have a right to the climate information. And the climate information in the current stage is, is more of a debate that goes with the elite uh, class, uh, more with the researchers, practitioners, scientists, policymakers at a very high level. We haven't been able to uh, kind of uh, translate the climate information, the jargon, uh, graphs, maps, or the IPCC uh, warnings into a citizen-friendly language. And that's where the problem is. And uh, the problem lies not just with the data or the information, the enough data and information, but what it needs is uh, converting it into a palatable format. Now, for example, if there is a 40 degree temperature outside, then whether my family um, the family's health budget is going to improve or increase substantially, or am I is there going to be a dent in my wallet, or how exactly am I going to respond to it? Until unless we make it into that Delhi or common language. Uh, friendly, I think the gap is always going to be there. We will be always coming up with these deadlines. But what it is more important is to make it a uh, make it make this into uh, where you can make people more and more participatory. Because the action, as uh, uh, the fellow panelists just highlighted, that the action lies at the local level. And in order to make that action successful at a local level, uh, what is more important is is to take it forward in terms of making citizens aware of how bad it is. And at the same time, while it is very bad, how they can prepare themselves at citizen level, at individual sure. level, at community level, and more importantly, at, at uh, the larger policy landscape level. Yeah. Dr. Ghosh, the fact that um, unfortunately neither clean air or, um, uh, uh, or climate change is an election issue. I mean, it might be casually mentioned by some political leaders here and there. Is that not a central feeling that uh, you don't win votes on the basis of um, not talking about, uh, you know, clean air or climate change? And unless it becomes a political agenda, it's essentially at one level a lost cause. Vishnu, I think we have to start thinking about the environmental dimension uh, from an economic perspective. Uh, air pollution, of course, is a liability, but clean air is also an economic asset. This is what the Our Common Air Commission is saying. So when we see that in emerging economies, air pollution 
increase results in reduction in foreign direct investment. When we see that you have lost mandates in terms of the workforce, then it has a direct economic impact. Ground level ozone has a direct economic impact in terms of agricultural productivity. So I think these issues will become a political agenda when, number one, we stop a blame game and focus on the solutions. Number two, when we see the economic dimension and not just the environment dimension. And number three, when we get the political leaders and the policymakers uh, to see the solutions that are possible, because just blaming them is also not enough. And that's why a coalition of multilateral development banks, national financial institutions, policymakers, political leaders that are focused on solving the problem can very quickly start yielding or, or accruing the political benefits as well. Because your productivity goes up, your agriculture productivity goes up, your construction industry starts booming again, your transportation sector starts transforming, your energy sector starts transforming. These are hard economic outcomes on, in a positive way sure. that an agenda that combines climate and clean air can deliver. Uh, Abhinash, and I think this is important for uh, our audience, how is climate change already upon us in India? Through specific examples, can you explain to us how it's already here and affecting lives? Uh, if, we, if we look at uh, how climate change has spanned or how uh, it's going to impact, then, uh, as you rightly said, climate change is upon India. Um, with uh, At least at a district level, uh, the climate change is impacting and more than three quarters of Indian districts are extreme event hotspots. But what is more important is the, the overall risk landscape is also changing. That is, traditional flood prone areas are becoming drought prone. Uh, but at the same time, in terms of heat wave, we are currently working in terms of understanding or developing the heat wave index at a sub district level. And uh, some of the preliminary findings are uh, uh, that's, that suggests that um, the heat wave is going to be a larger problem for uh, many of the uh, districts in India. In, in, in fact, at a sub-district level, this is going to be impact, is going to impact more. Now, if uh, heat wave or the extreme events are already impacting us, and there were studies where um, almost in a frequency of every five days, we faced one or the other kind of extreme event across India. Um, and that's where a one is to five is a big number. I mean, it, it might not be affecting because of the larger... Um, I mean, might not be affecting us always, but someone somewhere is always getting impacted. That's number one. Number two is because it is getting impacted, our supply chains are getting disrupted. More importantly, if we are looking at heat wave as a larger problem or a heat stress as a larger problem, then uh, while the net zero uh, targets have been put out, uh, are there enough power to light our fans? Um, no, no, absolutely, and these are all critical uh, issues, and it's and not just where the transition. Yeah, you know, I mean, it, it's it's all around us. Whether it is um, cyclones now with greater intensity in the oceans, whether it is a greater melt in the in the glaciers in the Himalayas, droughts in some areas, floods in other areas, it's all linked. I'm only interrupting because I'm out of time, but thank you once again as we on NDTV continue to highlight this issue over and over again. We will take a short break up after that. Um, you know, we'll be following our reporters. On the election trail, many reports all across the country. Uh, you want to watch this? There's a lot of political action happening. Do take a look. Some people say the metaverse will only be virtual. One day, this lecture hall will be made of coal. And driverless cars would be trapped in intersections. But even in this maze of the future, you can't wish away health. It's time to become more resilient. Ten years of Banega Swast India, we have grown and achieved so many milestones. And now I have a plan to beat the urgency, to stop breathing with difficulty, to relieve getting choked with inactivity. Energize our government, our environment, our society, and ourselves. Everyone, everywhere, every day.
बनेगा स्वस्थ इंडिया वन वर्ल्ड हाइजीन हल्ला बल्ला और सबसे शानदार कवरेज सिर्फ एनडी टीवी पर वैसे टेलीस्कोप से याद आया डिड यू नो द जेम्स वेब स्पेस टेलीस्कोप ये एक टेलीस्कोप तो है एट द सेम टाइम इट आल्सो एक्ट्स लाइक अ टाइम मशीन आपको लग रहा होगा टेलीस्कोप टाइम मशीन का आपस में लिंक क्या है फ्रेंड्स लिंक इज क्वाइट इंटरेस्टिंग बिकॉज आपको पता है लाइट ट्रेवल्स एट अ सर्टेन स्पीड यू नो वॉट द स्पीड ऑफ लाइट रफली थ्री लैख किलोमीटर्स पर सेकेंड अप्रोक्सीमेटली मतलब सनलाइट जब सूरज से निकल के अर्थ तक पहुंचती है इट टेक्स अप्रोक्सीमेटली एट मिनट्स फॉर दैट नाउ दस जेम्स वेब स्पेस टेलीस्कोप जो कि हमको चीजें दिखाता है दूर दूर के डिस्टेंट स्टार्स एंड गैलेक्सीज ये जो हमको इमेजेस दिखाता है दीज आर नॉट रियल टाइम बिकॉज लाइट कमिंग फ्रॉम दीज फार अवे गैलेक्सीज इनको काफी टाइम लगता है उस टेलीस्कोप तक पहुंचने में सो असेंशली वॉट वी आर सींग इज डेटा फ्रॉम बिलियंस ऑफ ईयर्स अगो मतलब ये रोज जेम्स वेब स्पेस टेलीस्कोप है ये हमको दिखा सकता है बहुत बिगनिंग वाली इमेजेस या डिटेल्स ऑफ ऑल दीज गैलेक्सीज इन स्टार्स सो जस्ट थिंक अबाउट इट Well, what we thought we'd do on left, right, and centre this evening is also focus on very exclusive reports from the political battleground. Several constituencies and leaders across the country. Our election journey has, in fact, reached the New Delhi Lok Sabha constituency. NDTV's Vedant Agarwal has this ground report from New Delhi. for the heart of the national capital the strategically important new delhi constituency has seen tall words like atal bihari vajpayee lal krishna advani and ajay makan contest from it it is the oldest seat in new delhi it houses the power corridors of india a victory in new delhi means a key to the seat of the world's largest democracy the throne of power the core of our republic the trust of indian democracy this iconic boulevard has seen it all defining mandates alliances rising to power governments falling and prime ministers running the country from here the center of new delhi one of the capital's seven constituencies new delhi is home to over 14 lakh voters including high profile electors like the president the prime minister judges and senior leaders who form one of india's most educated electorates it was in the late 1970s when the janta party was on the rise that atal bihari vajpayee wrested the all important seat from the congress soon after the emergency his closest confidant and india's former deputy prime minister lk advani contested from new delhi soon after in 1989 during the peak of the ram mandir movement from ajay makan in the early 2000s to minakshi lekhi holding the fort for the bjp in the last decade it has been a direct contest between the bjp and the congress until delhi's aam aadmi entered the fray Despite Kejriwal's back-to-back -back electoral victories in the state and local polls, his party has yet to dent the BJP's prospects in the Lok Sabha. This time, it's a battle between lawyers. The Congress and the Aam Aadmi Party are in alliance in Delhi, and New Delhi is being contested by the Aam Aadmi Party. From the AAP is the man who fought for the Anna Andolan in the courts, Supreme Court lawyer, 
and a sitting MLA from New Delhi's Malviya Nagar, Somnath Bharti. The task is cut out for the party heavyweight to defend his boss in prison and broom up his party's tattered image in the run-up to the polls. This time the election has a different colour altogether. The way the election took place in 19 and 14, this time the reasons, the purpose, the focus is entirely different. The way BJP crushed opposition, the way they took away the rights of Delhi government, the, the way they tried to demolish the democratic uh, fabric of the nation, all will be addressed in this election. So people of Delhi want accountability from central government. All these members of parliament of BJP in last 10 years, they did not say a word. When rights of people of Delhi were being snatched by central government, they did not say a word. BJP understands Ajit Pawar, whom Honorable Prime Minister himself accused of 70,000 crores loot. He is in BJP. So BJP has a new washing machine. Yeah. So now he is pure. Chagan Bujbal, who was jailed and remained in jail for one year on charges of corruption, he joined BJP. Now he is pure. You know, uh, Suventi Adhikari, Himanisha Sarma, a number of people. So new washing machine in the market, BJP, which is to purify people, people do see kon kaam karta hai, kon naamdar hai, kon kaamdar hai. In a radical political move, the BJP has unseated six of its seven contentious sitting MPs from Delhi. From hate speech accused Parvesh Varma and Ramesh Biduri to the controversial MP Gautam Gambhir, the BJP's big Delhi leaders have all been dropped. From New Delhi, the BJP has fielded a fresh face. BJP veteran Sushma Swaraj's daughter, 40-year-old Bansuri Swaraj. A political debutante, Bansuri Swaraj is a lawyer like both her parents, boasting of an illustrious legal career. There is no question of legacy. I can tell you that the people of Delhi have unwavering faith in Modi ki guarantee. Whether it was abrogation of Article 370, whether it was construction of a grand uh, Ram temple in Ayodhya ji, whether it was bringing 33% reservation in favor of women in both Vidhan Sabha and Parliament uh, by passing of the uh, Nari Shakti Vandan Adhiniyam. These are all promises which were enunciated in our manifesto and they have been absolutely fulfilled. These are union elections yes. uh, and therefore I think the voter also, the perspective is, is broader. We're talking about women-led development of a Vixit Bharat. So of course my vision resonates with his. The fact that most of the sitting BJP MPs were uh, removed, uh, how do you look at that? Do, do people here you see were sort of disillusioned by, uh, by the MPs of your party, uh, your predecessors? No, not at all. Not at all. हमारी पार्टी में टिकट कटते नहीं हैं, टिकट मिलते हैं, और हमारे यहाँ पद नहीं होते, दायित्व होते हैं। Delhi has nearly one and a half lakh first-time voters, and among them are thousands of young students in one of the country's biggest coaching hubs in New Delhi's Rajendra Nagar. In election season, this nerve centre of UPSC aspirants is bustling with politics. अगर हम कंट्रीवाइड बात करेंगे, तो इसमें नो डाउट जो प्राइम मिनिस्टर कैंडिडेट होते हैं, क्योंकि ये लोकसभा का इलेक्शन है, उन्हीं के नाम पे वोटिंग होती है। लेकिन अगर आप मेरे विव की बात करेंगे, तो आप अपने कंस्टिट्यूएंसी और प्लस जो आपके जो भी प्रॉब्लम्स हैं, रिगार्डिंग कंस्टिट्यूएंस जो जैसे महाराष्ट्र में लीडर होगे, राजस्थान में लीडर होगे, मतलब ये कुछ ट्रांसपेरेंसी यार एक लीडर की कुछ अकाउंटेबिलिटी नहीं बची है, वो एक इलेक्शन में इधर, एक इलेक्शन में उधर, आजकल जैसे कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन बॉडी की जितना वो ग्रीमा गिरती जा रही है, जैसे वो एक सोसाइटी क क्योंकि अगर आज देखो आज के टाइम में अगर कोई अपनी कोई बात रखना चाहता है अगर कोई प्रोटेस्टर है या कोई और भी है अगर वो अपनी बात रखता है तो उसे एज एंटी नेशनल घोषित कर दिया जाता है उसी टाइम वो मेनली पार्लियामेंट में जो हो रहा है पार्लियामेंट की प्रोसीडिंग अगर हम भी देखते हैं तो पार्लियामेंट की प्रोसीडिंग में अगर उसका वो देखें कि कितनी एफिशिएंसी है, वो एफिशिएंसी आई नहीं रही है। I feel cleanliness is the first thing they should think about. I feel the streets are not very clean. All these dogs here, it's very scary. The cost of living is very high. 
since i am from uh, tamil nadu i see the cost of living is very high almost double from deadly pollution to toxic landfills and the sanitation mess even as delhi grapples with these long standing issues it is left without a chief minister The arrest of Chief Minister Arvind Kejriwal ahead of the big general elections has left the Aam Aadmi Party without its star campaigner and biggest face. The contest for the coveted New Delhi seat is a prestige battle both for the Aam Aadmi Party as well as the BJP. Many political pundits say that the BJP which has unseated 6 of its 7 sitting MPs here in Delhi is nervous of the Aam Aadmi Party which has defeated the BJP both in state elections as well as municipal polls. but these are national elections can the big message of brand modi national security and vishwa guru trump local issues like sanitation and air pollution that is a big question in new delhi with camera person kanan patra vedant for ntv well on to assam where all eyes are on the prestigious seat of jorhat where the congress deputy leader in the lok sabha gorov gogoi is contesting against the sitting bjp mp topun gogoi it's a prestige battle for both of them Gorov Gogoi faces the challenge of maintaining his winning streak from a new seat where the BJP has a strong presence to present himself as the face of the Congress in national politics. <laughs> It's a battle between two Gogois in Jorhat, Gaurav and Topon. Once a Congress bastion, now a BJP stronghold since 2014. The constituency is a prestige battle for both sides. The Ahum factor is also key to the contest. 41 years old Gaurav Gogoi starts his day early, reaching out to voters of Jorhat. Gaurav has ancestral roots in Jorhat and his father late Tarun Gogoi Assam's three-time chief minister had represented Jorhat in Lok Sabha twice in the 70s Before he returned to the state politics Gaurav says his fight for Jorhat is beyond his family legacy I have not worked in Jorhat for the last 10 years I was in a in a neighboring district uh, far from uh, Jorhat with the response that we are seeing from all sections of society and the way the BJP have also responded it seems as if even the BJP were not prepared uh, for me to contest from this seat and this campaign is not about an individual this campaign is not about a specific p- political party this campaign is about the people i am fighting for the right of tea garden workers who don't get a sufficient living wage and and we are fighting for the idea of democracy because people in assam especially in jorhat they have opposed the citizenship amendment act but they don't have the space to exercise their right to protest Gogo is trying to reach out to the far flung areas and to the villages and tea gardens holding more than a dozen meeting every day trying to meet the voters the challenge for him is that not only this is a new constituency but several congress leaders from this area have left the congress and switched over to the bjp cut to the campaign on the other side BJP has fielded the sitting MP Tapan Gogoi, a former student leader in Assam and a former Assam minister. Tapan faces a challenge of another kind. He is campaigning in a wheelchair after he fractured his leg, but Tapan is sure he will overcome this temporary handicap. Oh, 19 April आने दीजिए, 19 April तो सुनाव होगा, सब लोगों ने BJP को भोट देगा, और फोर्थ जून आने दीजिए. तो उस, उस दिन हम बात करेंगे तो हम लोग जो बोला है अभी हम जो बोला है उसी सही होगा डेली हम 10 12 13 ऐसे मीटिंग हम चुनाव का मीटिंग हम लोग कर रहा हूँ अभी भी मेरा मीटिंग है चले कोई प्रॉब्लम नहीं है तो हम जीतेंगे 100 परसेंट बीजेपी चीफ मिनिस्टर हिमंत विश्व शर्मा हैज थ्रोन हिज वेट बिहाइंड टॉपॉन सेवरल ऑफ इज टॉप मिनिस्टर्स एंड द पार्टी स्टेट लीडरशिप हैव बिन स्टेशन देयर द क्वेश्चन इज विल बीजेपी रिटेन जोर हार we are looking forward a bright future uh, so we will go with the government who gave us this facilities and who provided us with all the sources for our development like uh, during this uh, 
government rule. We got this uh, employment opportunities. The Ahom community and the tea garden workers make up the majority of the voters in Jorhat. Both Congresses Gaurav Gogoi and BJP Stapan Gogoi are from the Ahom community. Seen as a youth icon, Gaurav is busy crisscrossing this vast constituency to win over the youth. As the sitting MP, Topon is on home turf, while Gaurav Gogoi has a family legacy to bank. Topon is also backed by the might of the BJP Jagannath in Assam under Himanta Bishwa Sharma. To dub your heart a clash of the titans may be an exaggeration, but it promises to be a keenly fought contest. With camera person Sanjay Chakravarti in Jorhat, Ratnadeep Chaudhary for NDTV. The battle for the city of Nawabs will play out in the Lok Sabha elections. Lucknow has been won by the BJP for three decades. In the forthcoming elections, it will witness a contest between Rajnath Singh and the Samajwadi Party's Ravidas Mehrotra. My colleague Tanishk has this report. In the heart of Lucknow, capital of Uttar Pradesh, India's most populous state with a massive 80 Lok Sabha seats, Naushad, one of the last Gulabo Sitabo puppeteers, a traditional but dying art form that tells the story of the vibrant old Lucknow says he fondly remembers performances at late BJP stalwart Lalji Tandon's Lucknow home and at the homes of other prominent Lucknow-based politicians. While Noshad's Gulabo Sitabo might not have many takers now, but he fondly remembers his performance at the late Atal Vihari Vajwai's birth anniversary. The stalwart who became the first BJP MP from Lucknow in 1991 and won it five consecutive times. The peak of the Ram Temple movement in the late 80s and the early 90s coincided with electoral gains for the BJP in many parts of the country. The BJP won Lucknow for the first time in the 1991 Lok Sabha election, with Atal Bihari Vajpayee being chosen as the MP. The city chose former Prime Minister Vajpayee as their MP for five straight terms. And the BJP has not lost Lucknow in over three decades now. From 1991, the BJP has been winning the Lucknow seat every single time. Atal Bihari Vajpayee, Lal Jitandan, and now the BJP has fielded their sitting member of parliament, Rajnath Singh, the defense minister. Rajnath Singh won the 2014 election with a margin of 2,72,000 votes. In 2019, that margin rose to over 3 lakh votes. Rajnath Ji's third term is the third term, and this time he won the third term of 5,000,000 votes. I think that the first term is not the first term of the government. So, Ravidas Mehrotra will fight until the end. It's not a guarantee for the people and for the people. Despite being formidable forces in the state, the Samajwadi Party and the BSP have never been able to win the Lucknow seat. In 2019, the SP and BSP were an alliance. But then still, Rajnath Singh managed to defeat the alliance by over 3.5 lakh votes. This time, while the BSP has decided to contest solo, the SP and the Congress are in alliance and it is Ravidas Merotra of the Samajwadi Party who will be fighting against Defence Minister Rajnath Singh. The main challenger to Rajnath Singh in this election is this man, Samajwadi Party MLA from the Lucknow Central seat, Ravidas Mehrotra, a political veteran from the city who first became MLA in 1989 and a former minister under the Akhilesh Yadav government. The Bharati Janta Party is the leader of उनको लखनऊ की जनता से उनके कस से कोई मतलब नहीं हम लोग लगातार जनता के बीच में रहते हैं चुनाव के दौरान भी जनता से मिलने का काम कर रहे हैं विद ओवर 24 लाख पीपल द अर्बन पॉपुलेशन इन लखनऊ इज अराउंड 65 परसेंट 
There are around 70% Hindus and more than 20% Muslims living in Lucknow. But most of these people come to this iconic Sharma tea stall for their daily chai and samosa. महंगाई बेरोजगारी सारी व्यवस्था है सरकार मोदी सरकार द्वारा है इंक्रीज इन मॉडर्निटी लखनऊ पर एलिगेंस ऑफ मुगल एरा not just food architecture but also the artwork but what do artisans of lucknow that gave lucknow the its identity think about the upcoming elections lucknow's traditional zari zardozi industry has for long served as a means of livelihood to many in the city but artisans like hyder ali who has been working for two decades said fading away despite government claims of support In politics there is a very old saying that the road to Delhi passes by a Lucknow. In this crucial election of alliances there is a special attention on those who are going solo. The BSP has put their candidate in Lucknow as well, Sarwar Malik. Now with the BSP entering the poll battle who will it actually benefit? The NDA bloc or the India bloc or can BSP take the Lucknow seat? The people will reveal their choices on 4th of June. With camera person Virendra Kumar Saini, Tanish Punjabi for NDTV. The contest in Coimbatore is keenly watched as the DMK and the AIA DMK are engaged in a three-way battle with the BJP state president Anna Malai. NDTV's Veera Raghav speaks to all three candidates and the people of Coimbatore for this special report. <laughs> Is Tamil Nadu BJP President K Anamalai the one who will finally get the party to breach Dravidian electoral politics, or is the focus on him just a hype? That's the Coimbatore question in 2024. Definitely brings a curiosity to the Bharatiya Janata Party's campaign, a personality, flavor, and a local character to it. But is that enough to breach the Dravidian fortress? Especially as the two major parties, the AIA DMK and DMK, are fighting hard to hold their ground. That's the big question. Does he have enough in a three-way fight, even in a place like Coimbatore? <laughs> He has worked hard. He's backed by the Prime Minister's Tamil Nadu push and the party infrastructure, but it's still a formidable challenge. The breaking of the BJP AIA DMK alliance has made this a three-way fight. Is Anna Malai nervous? Has he been hyped too much? Are you worried that there is too much expectation on you? Expectation is always good, sir. Uh, expectation is always good, and uh, for Tamil Nadu BJP, I always believe it is never, never. This is the time for the party to grow. You miss this opportunity, you might not be sure when you will get the opportunity again next because there is a leadership wake up, and there is Modi ji at the top, and there is ten years of stable government, and there is misrule in the state. If the BJP is not capitalizing on this opportunity, what opportunity is going to come to you in a plate, sir? What is it that you would expect at the on on the fourth of June? Uh, what kind of numbers do you expect, both in terms of seat share as well as in terms of seats? What share? i'm being very open for the last many months we would touch 25% it will be historic people might not believe now but the, i'm we are reading the ground well the mood is very very positive we should touch 25% which is a very big number i, I agree but we will get there priya ganesh while much has been spoken about anna malai the iim lucknow alumnus ex police officer there's another iim alumnus in the race here and that's the aia dmk singai ramachandran and i am amdabad alumnus he was chosen by the late j jayalalitha to handle the party's it cell he's a first time contestant and is one of the many fresh faces fielded by the party in these polls you are saying he is the center of media attention i'm saying uh, we are the center of people's attention because we are in the ground we are with people and day by day we can see people are giving overwhelming response to us from the time the party was started from 1972 
every election if you look at it aadmk is the only party which will give opportunity to youngsters that's how it has been the track record the seasoned former mayor of coimbatore ganapati rajkumar agrees with his aiadmk rival that the battle is between the two dravidian parties he's the dmk's candidate and has been backed by the party's might in what is seen as a prestige battle Kanapati shifted over from the AI DMK to the DMK a few years ago. We are not at all worried. They are very strong in the social media, but otherwise we are very strong party structure-wise. And the welfare schemes of the Tamil Nadu Chief Minister has reached the root level. Core issue is GST. The hero of this election is GST because of GST. Uh, what to say? Uh, once the Manchester of South India, that was uh, Coimbatore, was called. is slowly crippling Coimbatore is certainly a prestige battle and that's because the BJP has put its state president here as the candidate well it's perhaps the one seat where the BJP has shown some vote shares in the last two elections and the challenge is before the DMK a prestige battle to show that it's in pole position as far as Coimbatore and Western Tamil Nadu is concerned as well the results here would be the most keenly watched in this Tamil Nadu Lok Sabha 2024 polls irrespective of the final result the coimbatore contest is in focus and given the hype around this electoral battle the stakes are also perhaps huge for the ex ips officer leading the bjp's dravidian charge in coimbatore vira raghav for indi tv constituency profile bengaluru south the big question can the congress dead the bjp bastion the bjp mp tejasvi surya is contesting from here a very high profile leader he faces off against somya and emily the daughter of a congress minister when it comes to a bjp bastion among bengaluru's lok sabha constituency it is bengaluru south which has been dominated by the lotus symbol since 1991 will karnataka congress minister's daughter soumya reddy emerge as the lone woman candidate to wrest this constituency from the bjp soumya reddy is the daughter of karnataka's senior minister ramalinga reddy whose party the congress enjoys clout in 3 of 8 assembly segments in the lok sabha constituency but in the national election it's an uphill battle for the congress the party last won the seat over 3 decades ago in 1989 This constituency was formed in 1977. Since then, the BJP has won eight times and the Congress won just once. Senior BJP leader Anand Kumar won six consecutive terms in this constituency. The BJP's Tejasvi Surya took over in 2019. I just want to say one thing. I I am a true blue Kannadiga. I am a true blue Bangalorean. Women, especially young people, um, even senior citizens, are coming and blessing, telling me that we have seen you as an MLA. We really want you speaking in the parliament on her behalf. Soumya Reddy started her career as an activist and entered politics as the MLA of the Jayanagar seat in 2018. This is a first contest in the national election. I'm at the famous Jayanagar complex. One must remember that the Jayanagar constituency did see Soumya Reddy as the MLA in 2018. However, in 2023, destiny did not favor her even after she demanded recounting of votes. The matter may be subjudice but then this time Soumya Reddy is hoping that there would be a turnaround in the wheel of fortune as far as the Lok Sabha constituency is concerned. To win Soumya will have to upstage current BJP MP Tejasvi Surya a lawyer by profession who emerged not just as one of the youngest candidates but also among its most controversial. 
The list of controversies include the recent alleged hate speech at Bengaluru's Nagarat Pet that prompted the cops to register an FIR. Madam, I have always tried to speak with conviction. Sometimes a few sentences, a few words that I have spoken may have created a stir, but I have always done it believing that it is the right thing to do at that time. Tejasvi Surya believes that PM Modi's guarantees will help him win a second term, while Samya Reddy believes her connect with women will be the X factor. Congress has done a lot of good things, uh, you know, with the state point of view also. It has given freebies. Uh, even her father is also a minister. These experience will add to the people. Modi ji, jitne ka. Yeah. kya rai hai Tejasvi Surya ke upar? Acha opinion hai. Acha admi hai wo. Kya aisa lagta hai? Nahi, wo kambi acha kar rahe na usle. Wo acha admi hai. is considered a powerhouse when it comes to Karnataka's political landscape. While one is riding on the Modi magic, the other is resting on her father's pride. With camera persons Kumar and Gobind, Prati Paraman in Bengaluru South for NDTV. In the contest for Virudunagar, the Congress's incumbent Manikam Tagore is facing the actor uh, Radhika and the DMDK founder Vijay Kant's son Vijay Prabhakar, NDTV's Veera Raghav meets them all. Popular actor and a powerful name in television production, Radhika is the BJP's face for the Virudhunagar Lok Sabha seat. Her husband Sharat Kumar is one of Tamil cinema's top stars and a former Rajya Sabha MP. And together, their aim is to wrestle out the Virudhunagar seat. But this man, the incumbent Congress MP, Manikam Tagore, who's backed by the formidable DMK Congress Left Alliance with other smaller parties. Radhika and Sharat Kumar are the star and local political appeal for the BJP in a state which has had an eternal bond between film stars and politics. You will be very surprised. I think this is going to throw up a lot of surprises. When I uh, entered the political fray, in the sense, to get involved in politics in 1996. The same reaction we feel now, that people definitely want to change and the change is going to be for the BJP. <laughs> Grassroot political equations and caste arithmetic like anywhere else play a decisive role in a constituency like Virudhunagar. The two Dravidian parties with their tested alliances have been masters at that grassroot management and breaking through is a formidable challenge for a third force. The Congress is riding on DMK power in Tamil Nadu and a carefully nurtured alliance of parties which have consistently sided with the DMK after the demise of AIA DMK Supremo J. Jayalalitha. Manikam Tagore's biggest strength is that alliance that brings with it the grassroots arithmetic to get past the post. He won the seat in 2009 with a 40% vote share as a DMK ally, but came fourth with just 3% vote in 2014 when the Congress and DMK fought separately in one of their worst elections. The AI DMK won the seat in that election, but in 2019, Tagore was back on poll as a DMK ally with a 43% vote. This history just reiterates the importance of the Congress-DMK alliance, especially for the former. After 4th of July, June, they will all be there, shops will be closed and we will not, they will not have, we will have the 40 MPs of the India Alliance together in the parliament and we will all stand together as India Alliance. The bigger threat to him, according to Tagore, is this man, Vijay Prabhakar, son of DMDK founder and late actor Vijay Kant. These parts are a DMDK region of influence and Vijay is banking on a sympathy factor as his campaign is about keeping his father's legacy alive. The alliance with the AIA DMK is a formidable one and he's threatening to have a sting in the tail. We have a quite uh, good uh, vote bank here and even ADMK has a good quite vote bank here. So according to our tactics, uh, I think uh, we are stronger to compare to those two. And to be honest, the competition will be between uh, Mr. Manikam Thakur and myself, I think, yeah. 
The battle for Virudhunagar is one for survival of the DMDK, one to hold on to seats to keep the numbers to remain a relevant opposition nationally for the Congress and one that could mean a march into new territory for the BJP. All three together make Virudhunagar as interesting a contest as any. In Virudhunagar, Vida Raghav for NDTV. Well, it's time now for us to take this short break. NDTV wins big at Enba. With 43 awards, NDTV reigns supreme. Sanjay Pugalia takes home the award for Editor-in-Chief of the Year. Santosh Kumar wins Managing Editor of the Year. Vishnu Som, Maria Shakil, and Sumit Avasti take home the top honours for the Anchors of the Year. BSI, Hamlo, and We the People all take home awards. And NDTV 24-7 takes home News Channel of the Year award. NDTV stands for trust. The biggest carnival of democracy, India's general election. Prime Minister Modi makes a formidable bid for a hat-trick. The opposition is trying to mount a united challenge. And the southern parties are standing their ground. As battle lines are drawn, Join us on an exciting journey on the road to 2024. Indian elections, a festival like no other. And NDTV covers elections like no other. When India votes, you can count on us. We are here at Chief Justice of India, Justice D.Y. Chandrachur Chamber. First time in the history will show how Chief Justice of India, Justice D.Y. Chandrachur, worked in his chamber and how it looked like. This is NDTV. And you're watching NDTV 24-7. Hello, Moto. Amid heat wave warning, Prime Minister Modi chairs meet, PM's heat wave preparation meeting, amid IMD's heat wave warning in several states between April and June. After CBI's arrest, Kavita moves plea. K. Kavita seeks details of CBI's application in court. CBI is likely to seek Kavita's custody on Friday. Six children killed a school bus overturns in Haryana. Driver was reportedly drunk and speeding. School bus driver, principal and school secretary arrested. Battle Royale in Rajasthan as Prime Minister Modi and Rahul Gandhi hold rallies in the state. Prime Minister, Prime Minister Modi targets Congress over corruption. Rahul Gandhi counters accuses BJP of diversionary tactics. Defence Minister's emotional barb at Congress says that he did not get parole for his own mother's funeral during emergency. Says that Congress alleges that alleges the government of dictatorship, Congress must look within. And Eid celebrations across the country, Bollywood's Khan celebrate Eid along with their fans. Amid the heat wave warning issued by the Med Department, Prime Minister Modi held a high-level meeting. He reviewed preparedness for the period between April to June as the temperature is above normal in several parts of the country and the Med Department has also issued a warning. Prime Minister also reviewed preparedness of the health sector. According to the Med Department, temperature ranging between 40 to 42 degrees is being reported in several parts of Western Rajasthan, Gujarat and Tamil Nadu. For more on this, I'm joined by my colleague Vasudha. Vasudha, what are the details we have of this meeting? 
Tanima, well, uh, this is going to be a hotter than usual summer, and so the Prime Minister held a meeting today. It's an important meeting, and in this meeting, uh, IMD officials were present, and also PK Mishra, the Principal Secretary in the, to the Government of India, and also, uh, you know, Home Secretary Ajay Bhalla was there, and uh, advised in, in, in the... Um, uh, you know, Amit Khari was there. So, uh, very important people there. And uh, remember that the Health Ministry and the NDMA uh, have already issued uh, advisories with regard to what needs to be done to sort of ensure that there is adequate provisions of ORS and, uh, uh, you know, um, and that the hospitals are sort of equipped to handle these heat wave cases. Is also, uh, you know, uh, looking at uh, addressing the problems of forest fires and also elections are coinciding at this time. So many people will be out, not just campaigning, but also voting. The IMD department, like you rightly mentioned, has already issued heat wave condition warning for the part of India and as days proceed you know the similar conditions would also be witnessed in western part of India that's something that IMT has already said so this meeting was to ensure that the advisories of NDMA and health ministry are put in the logistics are sort of like you know uh, put in order and the prime minister we are told also took uh, you know took took stock of uh, you know uh, the situation in hospital hospitals for the prepar preparedness of uh, not just the hospitals but also health professionals and uh, also you know polling centers so ndma officials and also health ministry officials were present at this meeting right uh, vasudha thank you so much for joining us with that update now, hours after news coming in of CBI arresting BRS leader K. Kavita in the Delhi liquor policy case, Kavita has reportedly moved a plea seeking details of a plea filed by CBI in court over her arrest. Remember, K. Kavita is already in Tihar jail after ED arrested her in the same case. And just a few days back, CBI had questioned her in the excise policy case while she was in Tihar. CBI is, in fact, likely to seek her custody tomorrow. For more on this, let me go across to my colleague Uma Sudhir. Uma, so we can see a petition versus petition kind of scenario in court tomorrow as uh, CBI is likely to ask for her custody, but Kavita has already uh, moved a plea. See, Kavita has moved the Rouse Avenue court seeking that the registry should place on record either the application or the order for her arrest by the CBI. And, uh, you know, the counsel for Kavita, Nitesh Rana, who appeared virtually, and also the advocate, they have, uh, in fact, uh, they went to the duty judge, Manoj Kumar, and he said that it's a court holiday, and he has not got any uh, anything on record as of now, and therefore he has placed the application for hearing tomorrow in the morning. Like you said, the CBI has also moved a custody plea that is likely to come up in the uh, special court tomorrow itself. What I must point out is that today being a holiday, the judge said he has no record with him and he has no knowledge of the case itself. And what has happened is that uh, the CBI sources are telling us that after, in, after the permission to interrogate her, they had questioned her on April 6th. And counsel for Kavita, in fact, said in court that even uh, that, for that even against that, they had moved the court and that is to come up on April 26th. What their argument is that because she is in judicial custody and in Tihar jail, the court permission would be required for her arrest by the uh, CBI. And uh, that this has not been placed on record. And that's why they want the registry to place on record both the application or the uh, order that she is being arrested, that that should be put uh, in the purview of the court and should be available to the counsel for uh, Kavita as well. What we are being told right. is that her husband, Anil Kumar, has been informed about Kavita's arrest by the CBI while she is in the judicial custody uh, in Tihar jail. So tomorrow, right. both these applications will come up. One, Kavita seeking that everything should be put on record uh, right. so that her counsel has access to it. And uh, second, the CBI seeking custody of Kavita. Umar Sudhir, they're reporting these details. Now, Defence Minister Rajnath Singh has hit back at the Congress for calling BJP leaders dictators. He, in fact, reminded the Congress of the emergency era. In fact, in an interview, Rajnath Singh said that he could not even attend his mother's last rites after she died due to brain hemorrhage because he was denied parole at that time. Brain hemorrhage was done. So, I was hospital for 27 days. But I couldn't come to the hospital. I didn't give up parole. I didn't give up parole. मैंने अपना बाल वगैरह जो भी सिर का बनवाना था सब जेल में ही बनवाया था वो लोग हम लोगों के ऊपर तानाशाही का आरोप लगाते हैं 
Shifting focus now and campaigning is picking up pace as we inch closer to the first phase of general elections scheduled next week. And the heat was on in Rajasthan as the biggest faces from BJP and Congress, Prime Minister Modi and Congress MP Rahul Gandhi campaigned in the state. Prime Minister once again took a dig at Congress targeting them on corruption. Rahul Gandhi hit back, called it BJP's diversionary tactic. Temperatures on the rise in Rajasthan. With elections just a week away, it is Operation Desert Storm as the Congress and BJP double up on the campaign trail. The Prime Minister in Dholpur Karoli touching an emotive issue, drinking water that strikes a chord but is especially significant for Eastern Rajasthan that has been waiting for the Eastern Rajasthan Canal. Project for years that will supply water to 13 districts. Rajasthan mein pani ke sankar ko bada banane wali congress hi hai. केंद्र सरकार ने हर घर पानी पहुंचाने के लिए जल जीवन मिशन शुरू किया उसमें भी कांग्रेस ने भ्रष्टाचार किया आने वाले समय में राजस्थान के घर घर पानी पहुंचेगा ये मोदी की गारंटी है The Prime Minister will again hit the desert trail on Saturday campaigning in Barmer on the west and Dosa in the east Rahul Gandhi, who was also in Philadelphia, spoke about the Congress's outreach to farmers and women voters. ये वायदा, ये वायदा नरेंद्र मोदी ने अग्निवीर बनाकर ये वायदा तोड़ा है, और ये अग्निवीर स्कीम जो है, भाई और बहनों, ये आर्मी को नहीं चाहिए थी। ये आर्मी ने नहीं कहा कि हमें अग्निवीर चाहिए। ये नरेंद्र मोदी जी ने पीएम ऑफिस से अग्निवीर योजना लागू की है जैसे ही हमारी सरकार आएगी अग्निवीर योजना को हम रद्द कर देंगे राजस्थान इज इन फॉर अ लार्जली बाइपोलर कॉन्टेस्ट एंड द बीजेपी इज होपिंग टू स्कोर 25 आउट ऑफ 25 फॉर द टाइम इवन एज द कांग्रेस होप्स फॉर अ चेंज टू ओपन इट्स अकाउंट इन राजस्थान इन लोकसभा 2024 विद हर्षा कुमारी सिंह Bureau Report, NDTV. News from the South now and we turn our focus to constituency of Virudhanagar where BJP is hoping to draw on the star power of actor turned politician Radhika to take on Congress veteran and incumbent MP Manikam Tagore. Popular actor and a powerful name in television production, Radhika is the BJP's face for the Virudhanagar Lok Sabha seat. Her husband Sharat Kumar is one of Tamil cinema's top stars and a former Rajya Sabha MP. And together, their aim is to wrestle out the Virudhanagar seat. But this man, the incumbent Congress MP, Manikam Tagore, who's backed by the formidable DMK Congress left alliance with other smaller parties. Radhika and Sharat Kumar are the star and local political appeal for the BJP in a state which has had an eternal bond between film stars and politics. You will be very surprised. I think this is going to throw up a lot of surprises. When I uh, entered the political fray, in the sense, to get involved in politics is to 1996. The same reaction we feel now that people definitely want a change and the change is going to be for the BJP. <laughs> Grassroot political equations and caste arithmetic like anywhere else play a decisive role in a constituency like Virudhanagar. The two Dravidian parties with their tested alliances have been masters at that grassroot management and breaking through is a formidable challenge for a third force. The Congress is riding on DMK power in Tamar Nadu and a carefully nurtured alliance of parties which have consistently sided with the DMK after the demise of AIA DMK Supremo J. Jayalalitha. Manikam Tagore's biggest strength is that alliance that brings with it the grassroots arithmetic to get past the post. He won the seat in 2009 with a 40% vote share as a DMK ally but came fourth with just 3% vote in 2014 when the Congress and DMK fought separately in one of their worst elections. The AI DMK won the seat in that election. But in 2019, Tagore was back 
on poll as a DMK ally with a 43% vote. This history just reiterates the importance of the Congress-DMK alliance, especially for the former. After 4th of July, June, they will all be there, shops will be closed and we will not, they will not have, we will have the 40 MPs of the India Alliance together in the parliament and we will all stand together as India Alliance. The bigger threat to him, according to Tagore, is this man, Vijay Prabhakar, son of DMDK founder and late actor Vijay Kant. These parts are a DMDK region of influence and Vijay is banking on a sympathy factor as his campaign is about keeping his father's legacy alive. The alliance with the AIA DMK is a formidable one and he is threatening to have a sting in the tail. We have a quite uh, good uh, vote bank here and even ADMK has a good quite vote bank here. So according to our tactics, uh, I think uh, we are stronger to compare to those two. And to be honest, the competition will be between uh, Mr. Manikam Thakur and myself, I think, yeah. The battle for Virudhanagar is one for survival of the DMDK. One to hold on to seats, to keep the numbers to remain a relevant opposition nationally for the Congress. And one that could mean a march into new territory for the BJP. All three together make Virudhanagar as interesting a contest as any. In Virudhanagar, Leader Raghav for NDTV. Now, in a move to ensure 100% voter turnout, the Election Commission in West Tripura Parliamentary Constituency has launched a pioneering initiative, Home Voting, where voting facilities reach the voters' doorstep for disabled and blind voters, apart from elderly people. The Election Commission introduced home voting facilities, enabling elderly voters aged 85 years and above as well as people with disabilities, those registered for the facilities, to cast their ballot from the convenience of their homes. Many have voted after years. Welcoming the initiative, voters commend the election administration and officers for facilitating their fundamental right to vote from the comfort of their homes. Meanwhile, Samarth and NDTV's initiative in partnership with Hyundai, which is launched as a movement to create a change in mindset and spark societal change to create an opportunity for more inclusive and accessible world for people with disabilities. In Guwahati, Ratandeep Chaudhary for NDTV. We'll slip into a short break at this point. Don't go anywhere. Can you give us, a few, like, say, a three of your strongest takeaways of not to do's or to do's? Because it's a map you have to parenting. You have to, it's a slow process. But the three things one has to get, one can keep in mind even today in this very stress, pressure-driven world, goal-driven world for our kids. Well, I think the main takeaway is that parents need to connect with their children, understand who their children are, and understand that every goal or every solution out there will not be tailor-made for your child. You have to attune to each child's essence and connect to who to that connect to who that child is. The second takeaway is connect before you correct. First try to understand what's going on within the child. Their behavior is only on the surface, but underneath the behavior is a need that the child has, that we have to help the child discover and solve. And number three is every reaction to your child is more about you than it is about your child. So if you want to really do this as consciously as possible, you have to examine your own reactions and understand where they are coming from. And, and number four, the traditional ways of disciplining our children only create more harm. The main concern is this constant hunger for approval and significance 
from the outside world. Uh, Dr. Shafali, I had the chance to hear you on Super Soul Sunday talking to Oprah Winfrey. This is, um, uh, she loves your work and the world gets to hear more about it through your public speaking and through all of this um, recognition that the work and your ethos is getting. Tell me about how you came to create this map of parenting and your journey that leads you to where you are today. So I'm a clinical psychologist by training and in my practice, I began to notice, you know, that the same themes of childhood pain were repeating themselves across clients, across generations, across sessions. And the part was in the parent-child relationship. And I know how loving parents are. I know how well-intentioned. I'm a parent. But I also know that we can be really blind to our own ways of being because we look at our children as our possessions, as our puppets, as our property. And a lot of harm gets done from parent to child. And I began doing it to my own child. When I began to see myself do it, Welcome back. Now, six children died and dozens more were injured after a school bus overturned near a village in Haryana's Mahindragar. Police have arrested the school bus driver, the principal and the school secretary. The bus driver was allegedly drunk and speeding. This tragic in incident has once again thrown the spotlight on rules followed while selecting staff in school buses. Grief, anger and despair at 13-year-old Vansha's home in Haryana's Mahindragar. Vansha's grieving parents, who lost their only son in a tragic bus accident in the village, feel they have nothing to live for. His grandfather, who sent him off to school this morning, is still in shock. Vansh is among the six young students killed by a drunk driver who rammed a private school bus into a tree seriously injuring over 20 students on board. Not only was the driver drunk, but the school bus was not fit to ferry students. The driver abandoned the dying and injured children and fled the spot. This was a bus that was ferrying over 20 students uh, to a school, a private school here in Kanina. And the back portion of the bus rammed into a tree. And just looking at the bus, you can imagine the extent of the tragedy. The, the insides of, of the bus here, absolutely tragic and absolutely devastating because all that is left, you know, here, uh, these pieces of glass scattered on the floor. This was, this was a very tree that the bus rammed into during the accident. And in fact, the remains of the bus scattered all around here, you know, the water bottles of uh, kids uh, who, who, who were injured, who lost their lives here. In fact, uh, you know, shoes also lying here, school shoes. This is a GL public school, one of the few private schools in the district which was locked up soon after the incident with the principal, a school trust secretary and the bus driver arrested by the police. But there are many unanswered questions. Why was the school open on a government holiday? Why were there no checks on the vehicles carrying students to school? How was an irresponsible driver allowed to ferry the children? Yes, the most important thing is that today is a government holiday. 
और स्कूल चल क्यों रहा है फिर लापरवाही ये है कि सुबह बच्चों को जो बंदा लेने जा रहा है मैं नहीं कहती कि आज नवरात्रे भी हैं और उसके बावजूद जो बच्चे को सुबह बसेस लेने जाती हैं वो अपने पॉइंट से लगभग पांच साढ़े पांच निकलती हैं तो इस ड्राइवर ने जैसा बताया जा रहा है कि शराब पी हुई थी तो इसने कितने बजे पी और पीने के बाद ही पचास जिंदगियां एक बस में बैठी हुई थी पचास घरों के बच्चे थे इनके The children who died have turned into statistics already but for the families of Vansh, Ricky, Anshu, Yuvraj, Akshu and Satyam and the others who have been scarred for life this fateful day can never be forgotten. He was just 13 years old. He had his whole life ahead of him. Dreams, aspirations that have all been shattered. Who takes accountability for the tragic death of these six innocent children in mahendragarh with camera person zavier thomas vedant for indi tv international news now and oj simpson the nfl hall of fame star whose 1995 acquittal in the so called trial of the century for the brutal murders of his ex wife and a male friend gripped the world has died he was 76 oj simpson was battling cancer His popularity grew with post NFL career as an actor and an ad pitchman where his appearances made him one of the most recognizable black faces in the country. However, fame turned to infamy after the savage murders of his ex-wife Nicole Brown Simpson and her friend Ron Goldman in a suburb of Los Angeles. His acquittal in October 1995 after a 9-month trial was greeted with disbelief by many Americans who had followed every twist and turn in the arguments during the trial. Now Tesla chief and billionaire Elon Musk has confirmed that he's com coming to India soon. Taking to X, Elon Musk said that he's looking forward to meeting Prime Minister Narendra Modi in India. Sakshi Bajaj takes us through details on the why the visit could be significant. Tesla CEO Elon Musk on X declared that he's looking forward to visiting India and meeting Prime Minister Modi. Now as per initial reports this visit is likely as soon as this month end really and as per experts and reports Musk may announce his India investment plans and even decide to open a factory in India. Now remember this development comes nearly a year after Tesla indicated their desire to build a factory in India. Of course experts believe this visit is really significant as far as two things are concerned one from the economic standpoint really where the focus will be on job creation the boost in electric vehicle manufacturing in India and the other from the environment front as well remember Tesla is known for accelerating transition to sustainable energy and increasingly the focus to meeting climate goals is essential for all nations and with that it's a wrap on the show keep watching NDT TV Hello Moto Motorola India's best 5G smartphone brand celebrations from across the country two of bollywood's biggest stars shahrukh khan and salman khan were seen celebrating the occasion with their fans This show isn't just about news from the southern states. It's one that looks at the rest of India and the world from a diverse South India point of view because NDTV has always taken the southern view seriously. The Southern View with Veera Raghav.
only on NDTV 24-7. We are here at Chief Justice of India, Justice Divai Chandrachur Chamber. First time in the history will show how Chief Justice of India, Justice Divai Chandrachur, worked in his chamber and how it looked like. शानदार कवरेज सिर्फ एनडी टीवी पर talking with very little being said too many voices but hardly any being heard you turn to a show that puts you front and center a show that headlines the stories of the people by the people for the people the biggest carnival of democracy India's general election. Prime Minister Modi makes a formidable bid for a hat trick. The opposition is trying to mount a united challenge. And the southern parties are standing their ground. As battle lines are drawn. Join us on an exciting journey on the road to 2024. Indian elections, a festival like no other. And NDTV covers elections like no other. When India votes, you can count on us. gentlemen you're watching NDTV and this is India Decides. Rajasthan saw rallies by big guns today. Prime Minister Narendra Modi who was in Karoli Dholpur made a big announcement that the exam mafia of Rajasthan will soon be behind bars and that it is the opposition party the Congress party that let this industry thrive. Dholpur a town bordering Madhya Pradesh, Uttar Pradesh and Rajasthan is known for the family that former Chief Minister of Rajasthan Vasuntra Raji was wedded to. Karoli is known for its spiritual and religious importance. Speaking here, the Prime Minister accused the Congress party of betraying the aspirations of youth and also farmers. Mr. Modi was born to work and not to relax, that's what he said. Just a few miles away, Congress leader Rahul Gandhi too held rallies in Bikaner and Jodhpur. Now, both are reserved constituencies and Jodhpur is a tr thriving trade centre, the second most important city in Rajasthan also with a military base. Here, Rahul Gandhi said the Agnivir scheme should be scrapped and that Lok Sabha 2020 was going to be an election of the backward people, Dalits, tribals and poor general class. Now, in the desert state of Rajasthan that has voted overwhelmingly for the BJP in the last two Lok Sabha elections, will the Congress party's focus on unemployment and representation strike a chord with voters? Will the BJP get the delicate balancing act of uh, Jat, Gurjar, Rajput, Dalit outreach right and let the Modi factor um, do the magic. That's what we will try and understand tonight. But first, this report. Temperatures on the rise in Rajasthan. With elections just a week away, it is Operation Desert Storm as the Congress and BJP double up on the campaign trail. The Prime Minister in Dholpur Karoli touching an emotive issue 
drinking water that strikes a chord but is especially significant for eastern Rajasthan that has been waiting for the eastern Rajasthan canal. Project for years that will supply water to 13 districts. Rajasthan mein pani ke sankar ko bada banane wali congress hi hai. Kendra sarkar ne har ghar pani pohunchane ke liye jal jivan mission shuru kiya. Usbe bhi कांग्रेस ने भ्रष्टाचार किया आने वाले समय में राजस्थान के घर घर पानी पहुंचेगा ये मोदी की गारंटी है